August 3rd, 9.47 a.m., District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about play games and today we're going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. I've been wanting to do this Let's Play for a while because this is probably one of my favorite series of all time and I'm just really excited to play this for you guys. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the game. Right here we're playing as Phoenix and he says, boy am I nervous. And then this is Mia Fey, who's basically our mentor. And she's here to watch us do our first case. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your clients as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yeah. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out in any way I can. I just really want to help him. This is always like a bit weird how like he reinforces how much he really wants to help him. And here's our client. My life, everything, it's all over. Isn't that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death, despair, oh. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. It sounds like he wants to die. Great observation, Mia. <laughs> um, yeah. And so this is Larry Butts, who's, uh, he's certainly a caricature. I mean, like, I won't try to, like, give my opinions too much throughout this because I want you to watch this and form your own opinion on characters and stuff like that, but... I'm not the biggest fan of him, and I don't think too many else, too many other people are either. Nick. He calls us Nick as like a nickname. <laughs> Get it, nickname. But because our name is Phoenix, so he took like the Nick part of Phoenix. Hey, Larry. I'm so guilty. Tell him I'm guilty. I usually give this guy like a surfer dude voice. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm i finished. Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? So yeah, he's just dramatic like this. Hmm. The person who were responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school is saying, when something smells, it's usually the Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He's a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. So yeah, all of the uh, trials begin at 10 a.m. I think in, like, one of the later games, they changed it to 9.30 for no reason. But yeah, also, since I'm going to be talking and reading a lot, I have a glass of water with me right here. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. So yeah, here's Winston Payne, which is a pun. Most of the characters in Ace Attorney, their names are puns. So this is Winston Payne, which is a pun on Winst in pain. The um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem, Mr. Wright. This is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Th thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Y yes, Your Honor. Gulp. Hands shaking. Eyesight. Fading. You might need to get that checked out, man. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. 
The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Whew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait. Uh-oh. No, no way, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? That is kind of weird, like... Uh... Oh, the victim. Of course I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel migraine coming on. I would too, honestly. Look, the defendant's name is listed in the court record. Just touch the court record button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. So we go ahead and check the court record here. Cindy Stone, age 22, the victim in this case. So now we know the name of the victim. Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, please tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... And if we check the autopsy report, cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma, or in other words, hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor, because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne, I wonder if I should give this guy a lisp. I'll give him like a very subtle one. Yes, Your Honor? That's not subtle, but... As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. And so, as the trial goes on, more and more evidence will be put into your court record, and you can always check the court record to see what it says. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Touch the court record button to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. Um... Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything... unfortunate. Well, as you'll learn later in the series, Larry saying something unfortunate is inevitable. Ahem. Mr. Butt, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Watch it, buddy! We were great together. We were like Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls. Or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butt, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. He had just returned overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies, all of it, lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. Interesting note is that in the Japanese version, it was red. I don't know if there's some kind of like cultural thing behind that, or if it was just a random change. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears he had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? <laughs> yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! <laughs> we can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want her to answer- I want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Let's go ahead and stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question... Ugh, that question is irrelevant to this case. Oof. Wince. Because he's winced in pain. 
Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog. I'm gonna die, I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. It's very dramatic. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused made of it clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. I think if you answer either of those, then you basically get to the same spot. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of their murder, did you not? I changed up his lisp all of a sudden. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Listen, I'm not a lawyer, but don't say that in, in a court of law. What do I do? Uh, let's have him answer honestly this time. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, y yeah, yeah, I was there, I went. Crud. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so like, I didn't see her. Our first objection of the series your honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Man, the uh, peanut gallery just keeps talking. <laughs> order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sot to the stand. Get it? Because he's the witness, so his name is Frank Sot. And if you saw the opening cutscene from earlier, yeah, he's the killer. They always tell you who it is at the very beginning of the first case. But as we go later on, they, they'll they stop telling you and you have to figure it out on your own. And so, uh, I told you who it was just there. But um, as we go on into later cases, I, I won't say that. Just in case this is anyone's first experience with Ace Attorney. I just want it to be spoiler free and don't spoil stuff in the comments. Mr. Shaw, you sell a newspaper subscription, is this correct? That had a lot of S's that time. Oh, oh, yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sot, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witnesses account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 o'clock p.m. The man who ran with her was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? At the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Shaw used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout added to the court record, and we'll go ahead and see that in a second. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, er, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? Okay, here's another thing. I'll get to it in a little bit. I'll go ahead and read this. All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key, it's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. 
there's bound to be a contradiction in there somewhere. I said that as if she was going to say somewhere, but then the sentence ended abru abruptly. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. <laughs> Touch the court record button and point out contradictions in the testimony. So it's time for our first cross-examination. And <laughs> it looks like before this, Phoenix didn't even know what a cross-examination was. What are the qualifications for passing the bar in this world because like and it's not just like a phoenix being adult thing like most of the time whenever we go into like whenever whenever he plays different lawyers later in the series they'll also be confused about cross-examinations and stuff like that which is really weird so if we go ahead and go over to this right here uh it says i remember the time exactly it was one o'clock p.m However, if we go ahead and check out our court record, it says that Cindy Stone died at 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. You found the body at 1 o'clock p.m.? You're sure? Yes, it was 1 o'clock p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at sometime after 4 p.m. There's nobody to... Er, no body to find at 1 o'clock p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh, that. Oh, uh... This is trivial, but witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sot, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 o'clock p.m.? I, uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember something just now. Or I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? And so the witness is like, hey, I remember something. And then they give another testimony. You see, when I heard... When I, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right, you know what to do. I've got this one. So, the contradiction's a pretty easy one to spot in this one. I think you can basically present this on any statement. But right here he'll say there was a voice coming, there was a voice saying the time it was probably coming from the television. However, however, if you remember, if you remember last time, I can't speak today apparently. We got a record saying that during the time of the murder, all electricity was out, even the cordless phones weren't working. So... Objection. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery, and this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. I, well... The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sod? No, I I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Wait, I remember now. Mr. Sod, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sod. Let's hear your testimony. Once more, please. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. 
So this one is another one where it's quite easy to point out. Also, the uh, cross-examination music is different. And so during cross-examinations, there are two types of cross-examination music. There's one where it's just normal cross-examining, and then once you're getting super close to finally figuring out the truth, then a, a more intense version plays. So this one is also a pretty easy one. Right here it says, yeah, the murder weapon the killer used it to hit the victim. However, the weapon was a statue, not a clock. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was the statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? You with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sot. Hey, I I saw it there, okay? It's that's a clock. Your Honor, if I may Yes, Mr. Payne. I should what is stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Mm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove it I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sot, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, that, that day, I never. Look, I, the clock, I heard, no, I mean, I saw, saw. Jesus. So yeah, that's what's known as an Ace Attorney Breakdown, where basically whenever you get very close to cornering the murderer, they basically start freaking out, and it's usually quite a scene. Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? whole case is writing on this. I better think it through carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sot heard was definitely this clock, a fact which is clear if you simply... Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 825. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard that clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow, precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sot heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sot, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha! <laughs> you forgot one thing! Uh-oh. What's he talking about? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. 
I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict this witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sott. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. Uh, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sot. Mia, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock running three hours slow? Figure out the reason you'll have your proof. Right? Right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Wait. Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidences to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! <laughs> Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see the evidence that proves why the clock was running three hours slow. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Slot? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Order, order, I say. And that ends our first case. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client. He, uh, he was arrested and he's been taken away, your honor. Very well. Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor. I have to say I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. And with that, the court is adjourned. So yeah, that's our first case. It turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sot let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sot grabbed the nearest blunt object he he could find. And so yeah, that's our first case. I think I've said that like three times already. But yeah, I during those segments where the music is really like, it's super excited and like, I don't want to interrupt any of that. I just want to keep it like flowing at a steady pace. Just so you know, I don't interrupt your viewing experience. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen the trial end on such a satisfying note. Never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, I met. imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? 
Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no, I mean bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But... But my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Phoenix was probably gonna say something really bad, but this game is rated T for teen, so... <laughs> Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this. Ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My tree! Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh hey! H here take this! It's a present! A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that- Actually, I made the this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. R really You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick! Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you just want to cry? Mary. Are you so sure? I excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Well, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? H huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? <laughs> Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? It was the murder weapon. This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. But you probably just need a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink to a toast to innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah. Part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me. Unless you count the clock he gave me a... I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep.
That is probably the saddest death in the entire series, and one of the darkest, because, like, Phoenix goes into detail about how she was still warm, and then eventually she became cold. Chief, it's hard seeing her like this, but if there are any clues here, she was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. The thinker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. Hmm. There are some glass shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of glass light of the glass light stand lying broken in the back of the room. Nothing else that seems like a clue here. Hmm? A piece of paper. Must have fallen from Mia's hand. What could it be? And so yeah, you examine a bunch of stuff, and then more stuff will pop up. A word is written in blood on the scrap of paper. Maya, did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store dated yesterday. So we got the receipt and it says Maya, which was the name in that phone call we heard earlier. I think that's enough snooping around for now. I'd better call the police and find out what that girl was doing here. Right, I'd better call the police. Hmm? That's funny. A few of the screws on the receiver are missing. Looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Police? Please, come quick! What was that? Someone screaming from outside the window? She's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. I'll be honest, that terrified me as a kid. Let's go to the Fay and Cola offices. That girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right there on the sofa. Uh-oh, I hope she didn't run on me. Yipes! Don't scare me like that. Um, excuse me, but who are you? It's okay, I work here. Maya. Maya Fay. Maya... Fay? Maya? So Mia was writing this girl's name. Maybe I should so show her the receipt? I never thought there'd be a use for evidence like this outside the courtroom. A large painting, I guess you'd call this modern art. I, on the other hand, called a mistake. <laughs> uh, uh, she seems to be in shock. I don't want to disturb her, but I have to know. Um, excuse me? Can you tell me what happened? I came in. The room was dark. And sis. Sis. So she was already dead. So, you're the chief's sister. I'm her younger sister. And you were here visiting? This late at night? Yes, she said she wanted me to keep some evidence for her. Evidence? Yes, it was that clock. It was the thinker. Anyways, we want to go ahead and present the receipt to her. Before Mia died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. That's my name! Why? Why would she write my name? Please, just calm down. Why would Sis write my name? Uh-oh, now I've done it. The police! Sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze, police! Alright, I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, see? Gumshoe? What an odd name. We received a report from the building across the way, see? Got a person say they saw Moida. It must have been that woman I saw. I'll, I'll go ahead and have to turn my voice down when it comes to these parts. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving one inch, K. Okay? Great. Just great. Maya. Wait, she wouldn't have... Nah. 
Wow! Excuse me. Eek. This word Maya here mean anything to you? Um, that, that, that's mining. Oh! <laughs> okay, my voice can't, like, keep doing that stuff. The victim here drew this here note in her own blood, see? With a dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. C killer? I'm not. Case closed. You're coming down to the precinct, ma'am. What? I can't grow go as gravelly as I want it to. Not gravelly, but... Mia's younger sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out till the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. September 6th, 9.07 a.m., detention center visitor's room. Wow, they have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Oh, it's you, the lawyer. G good morning. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um, are you going to be my attorney? Well, that's just what I wanted to talk to you about. I'd better give it to her straight. It's up to you. Up to me? Yes, I don't think this is something I should decide. After all, you're the one in trouble here. They're never going to believe me, are they? Even you, when you found me in the office, you looked at me like I had done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no, I, I never thought. It's okay, I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. Ha! Huh. So he crashed and burned? He's a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is... experience. Huh. Sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who to go to if I ever get in trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. That's what she said. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to trouble you. No, it's okay, it's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit and watch when I think of the person who did this to Mia. I know. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? What's with that outfit? Oh, this? This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. A acolytes? Like people in religious training? What is it you do? Oh, it's nothing strange, really. I'm a spirit medium. In training. A spirit medium? I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. So you're an acolyte, a uh, medium in training. That's right. Fey family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. Wait a second, you said the Fey family? So Mia was into this stuff too? Of course. She left the mountain to follow her career, she said. Her powers were first class, too. I... I had no idea. Hmm. Wait. What? So, you're a real honest-to-goodness spirit medium with ESP and all that? Yes. In training. Well, can't you contact me a spirit, then? We can just ask her who killed her. I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. Hmm. I thought that would be too easy. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Yes, let's see. That morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. Evidence? Yes, that clock shaped like the thinker. The one Larry made. How could that have been evidence in the case? Um, right, she said something about that. I remember. Do you want to hear it in her own voice? Her own voice? Yes. I'm pretty sure our conversation is on my cell phone. You recorded it? Yeah, I forgot how to delete those things. So, you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone? Let's hear it. Right. Oh, I just remembered. That detective took my cell phone. Sorry. Oh, right. Of course. 
Next time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. Maya's memo added to the court record. Um, huh? Something the matter? Um, I was wondering, could I ask you a favor? This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave me this a long time ago. She said if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. And, well, I'm in trouble. Do you think you could go ask him to represent me? Hmm. Sure, why not? I'll go ask. Thank you so much. I have no one else to turn to. Say, what about your parents? I, I see. Don't worry, leave it to me. Thank you. The trial's tomorrow at 10 o'clock. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. What if this guy refuses? They told me that if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. When will that happen? They're giving me until 4 o'clock this afternoon. And visiting hours are almost up. I'd better hurry. Right, I'll be back. Also, I think there's a slight glitch here where uh, it for some reason shows this bit of dialogue before it's supposed to happen. So I'll just skip that and come back to that later. We're just going to move to... We have Fay & Cole offices and Grossberg off law offices. Uh, we haven't seen Grossbergs yet, so let's go ahead and hang out over there. September 6th. Grossberg law offices. offices. Can't talk today, apparently. According to the receptionist, the big boss is out. She couldn't say when he'd be back. Must be hard to keep track of everything when you're a famous lawyer. Not to mention run an office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later. Anyway, since Grossberg's not here, let's go ahead and head over to the Fay & Co. Law Offices. That means I'll have to do Detective G Dick Gumshoe's voice again. September 6th, Fay & Co. Law Offices. The office is filled with police officers. They're all busily searching for clues. Hey, you there! This is a crime scene, pal. No trespassing. Um, sorry, don't I know you from somewhere? Wait, you're that butts guy, aren't you? No, no, Phoenix Wright. How could anyone mistake me for Larry? I guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That butts guy, he was a killer, and you're no killer, right? He was proven innocent. Um, right, and you were... We, we have a couple options here that we can choose from. Uh, I'll just go with Detective Gumshoe. Um, Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe? Right, at your service. Hang on, that's Detective Dick Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, get the name right. Don't go calling me Dick. Hey, Dick, get over here. Y yes, sir. Be right there. Um, ahem. <clears throat> You're a lawyer, right, pal? If you got business here, you'd better do it quick. Ooh, he thinks I'm his lawyer. Detective Gumshoe is probably one of the best characters ever. Mia's desk. Perfectly clean as always. The only thing it's missing is... Mia. That's sad. Also, speaking of sad, for some reason Phoenix always gets extremely poetic whenever he looks out the windows. The sky is blue, and so am I. There's that hotel right across the way. About Miss Faye, did you do an autopsy? Hmm? You want to know the results, eh? Now don't you look at me like that, pal. It's no use. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. Alright, alright, you can see the report, but that's all. We got that updated in the court record. Um, about Maya. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the trial. Sorry, pal, but this is one trial you aren't gonna win. Why do you say that? Zadie's put Prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. Pros- uh, yeah, Edgeworth. I'm sure you know what that means, you being a lawyer and all. Let's talk about Edgeworth. Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you do know him, don't you? I know him. He's a feared prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain, he doesn't feel remorse. He won't stop until he gets his guilty verdict. Ah, uh, don't talk about him that way. You make him barely sound human. Still, I'm afraid this pretty much decides the case. So Edgeworth is on this one. He hasn't lost a case since he became a prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 20. Of 
course, there are rumors of back alley deals and forged evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with an almost abnormal passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. We also gotta let's present the attorney's badge. Mm -hmm. What's that? Sorry, pal, but I got no info info for the likes of you. We also have Maya's memo. I was wondering, did you see Maya Faye's cell phone? Oh, that? I have that. Do you think you... Oh, oh, crud. Do you think you could give it back? Sure. I mean, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer. Uh-oh, he's on to me. Okay, I can't be straight with this guy. But what should I tell him? Something to matter. Oh, no. Um, that carrying strap on the cell phone. This? Hmm. It says, Steel Samurai, Warrior of Neo Tokyo. The Steel Samurai. That action hero on TV? Yeah, you see the strap is a collector's item. She was worried it might get lost if it went down to the precinct. That what she said? Um, yes. Okay, pal. I wrote down all the numbers she called anyway. Here you go. Seems he didn't notice the recorded conversation. So we got my face cell phone. And then we can check the court record if we want to see the conversation again. You all done, pal? Um, yes, thank you. I'll be heading out now. Oh, wait. One more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyway, you'd better not. No influencing the witness with your loyally ways, pal. Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. The witness? Yeah, Miss April May. I'm sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her. Well, you just told me her name. Miss May, huh? So you've sent her home already, then? Ah, uh, you're trying your loyally tricks on me now. She's not to go outside her room until the trial. So she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I, I should know better than to try to get a detective to leak information. You got that right, pal. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. Hey, what is it? Did you meet with the lawyer? Sorry, I haven't seen him yet. I see. Hmm. Better so. I better go see if I can find this elite lawyer she's talking about. Hey, uh, I got your cell phone. Oh, I, that's exactly what I said. Oh, say, can I listen to my sister's voice? Maya's eyes closed. She listened to every word with such intensity. Before long, tears began to roll down her cheeks. Thank you. This is a sad episode. Let's head over to... Grossberg's still not here, I think. So let's head on over to the Gatewater Hotel. September 6th. I keep switching between, between saying 6th and 6th. Gatewater Hotel, room 303. Oh god, her. Oh, hello there, handsome. I'll just do my normal voice. Um, hi. Smooth, right? Real smooth. You're the lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. He said, don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. Tee hee. You're really good in impressions. You should be a voice actor. Uh, remember to self, thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. It's all so exciting I can hardly contain myself. Well, let me go freshen up so I can look the part of the beautiful eyewitness. I pity the lawyer that has to cross-examine this one. And finally, it's time for Poetry with Phoenix. The late summer sunlight streams through the window. There's the fan co offices building, of course. You can see the inside of the room pretty clearly from here. I think it would be a little difficult to recognize a face from this distance, though. So, you, you gotta admit that, uh, like, the opening lines to whenever we examine the windows, that sounds like it would be, like, the start of a poem or, like, a novel or something like that. The late summer sunlight streams in through the window, even though this is technically fall. Anyways, what's this drawer all about? There's a screwdriver stuck in, stuck in this drawer. 
wonder what's inside. Let's take a look. Hey! Hey! What are you doing? No touching. I don't want to say that line. You really shouldn't pry around in other people's rooms now. You wouldn't want to make me upset, would you? Upset? I thought she was going to explode for a second there. I wonder what could be inside the drawer. So we could try to talk to her, but uh, she'll say nothing. What's inside this? What's inside this, I wonder? <coughs> Maybe later. It seems like Mr. Grossberg is out. Well, maybe I should wait for him to come back. <laughs> that wasn't the most over-the-top clearing of the throw I've ever heard. Aha! So, you're the one they say has been looking for me. Uh, yes, that's me. Looks even grander than I imagined. Hmm? That badge on your collar. Ah, so you're a lawyer, are you now? Y yes, well, yes. And what do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Please, proceed. Not busy? How come no one could get in touch with you? Hmm? Something the matter? You came to see the one and only Marvin Grossberg, did you not? Well, here I am, boy. What do you want? Out with it. Um, well, sir, actually, it's about Maya. Maya Faye. Ah, uh, yes. Maya Faye. Go on. Hmm? Why the strange reaction? Ah, cha cha. I'm really quite busy here, son. I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. No, that's quite impossible. Wait a second. How did you know the trial was tomorrow? Ahem. <clears throat> uh, anyway, I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent her. Sorry. End of story. Or discussion. What's going on here? He refused me before I even got a chance to ask him. What do I tell Maya? Also, we have one of the best theme songs in the game. Well, I want to talk about the painting, but let's talk about the refusal first. How can you just refuse like that? Please, tell me why you won't take the case. Mm, uh, ahem. Well, you see, it's just... I'm busy, you see. But the client is Mia Fey's sister. Mm, ahem. Mia trusted you. She knew her sister would be in good hands. Yes, yes, of course, I know that. However, I'm sorry, but I must refuse. Sorry, goodbye. Creep. Fine. I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll go look elsewhere. I think not. Huh? Did you say something? I think not, I said. W what do you mean? I'm terribly, so terribly sorry. But I'm afraid no lawyer worth their salt will take, take on this particular case. Terribly sorry, my boy. Why? I... I cannot say. I beg your pardon, but could you leave? Now? I have nothing more to discuss with you. What's going on here? If I was good at impressions, I would have done the voice for the king from... Zelda Faces of Evil, or whatever the CDI game is called. How did you know Mia Fey? She worked here. Long time ago. Quite the apprentice, that one. Learned my techniques in the blink of an eye. She left one day quite suddenly. She had a mission, you see. Uh, mission? You could see it in her eyes. She followed it with a burning passion. Never looked back, that one. His techniques include having a ginormous painting and a plant. <laughs> That's quite a painting. Aha, you noticed. It's my pride and joy. Impressive, isn't it? Well, isn't it? The color of the sky, the hue of the sea, the weave of the straw hat. It's worth at least three million. I have no intention of parting with it, of course. No, I won't sell it, not even to you. I wasn't interested. It's not for sale. I'm not buying. Jeez. This might be the first guy to recognize our attorney's badge. Very sorry, but I've got nothing to say regarding this matter. Never mind. September 6th, 3.42 p.m. Detention Center Visitor's Room. Hiya. Uh... Oh, you're back. Did you find the lawyer? Um, well, what do I tell her? Well, see, just be honest. I, I really don't think you should use that guy. 
He didn't seem healthy. He was all skin and bones. What really happened? You don't mean he refused to help? I see. I've been abandoned then. What about your family? I only had my sister. My father died when I was very young. And I don't know where my mother is. Don't know? So she could still be alive? The women in my family have been mediums for generations. They say ESP runs in our blood. About 15 years ago, our family was involved in an incident. There was a man and he... He... He ruined our mother's life. Ruined? After that, she disappeared. Several, several years after that, my sister announced she would become a lawyer and left the mountain. So you live by yourself? Yes, I've gotten used to it. Oh, also, I had to become independent or I would lose all my ESP. Feel bad for her, all by herself up on that mountain. So, who is this man who um, ruined your mother? About 15 years ago, there was an unusual murder case. It made quite a stir. Everyone was talking about it, apparently. The police were running out of leads, and they were getting desperate. Wait, they didn't use a spirit medium, did they? The police convinced my mother to try to contact the victim. Well, so, what happened? The case was solved. We thought. You thought? The man my mother helped the police capture was innocent. The police's consultation with the medium had all been carried out in secret, of course, but the man found out about it and leaked it to the press. He told all the papers that my mother was a fraud and the media jumped on it big time. She, my mother, became the laughing stock of the nation. I see. White. Excuse me? White? That was his name. My sister told me. White? Hmm. Just a little longer now before the state appointed lawyer comes, I guess. 4 p.m. Time's up. What should I do? Do I just leave her and go home? I've made up my mind. I'm going to defend you whether you want me to or not. Why? Well... No one is as sad as, any, as a person without any friends. I know. I've been there. A long time ago. Why did I become a lawyer in the first place? Because someone has to look out for people who have no one on their side. Maya, I won't abandon you. You can count on me. It's so kind of you. Well, let's fight this one and get you out of here. Right, thank you. Whew, she smiled at last. She looks like an entirely different person. One last question. You are innocent, right? Yes, and I trust you. So you trust me too, okay? It's a deal. So, what next? There's something that's been bugging me. Just what was inside that strange woman's drawer? It was when I tried to look into the drawer that she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Sorry, I know it must be hard. No, it's okay. All I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. I've kind of gotten used to it. Let's see, that morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. That's the thinker clock that Larry made practically qualifies as a serial murderer by now. So then, when did you arrive at the office? It was right around 9 o'clock. The lights were off and I could smell blood. Then I found her. My sister. Thanks, Maya. That's all I need to hear for now. Gatewater Hotel. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me, you are... Ah, I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment at your service, sir. Oh, right. I've just come up to deliver room service, sir. Um, do you know where Miss May might be? 
I believe our guest Miss May is currently using the uh, facilities. I have no need of anything. I'll be taking my leave. Please stay as long as you like. Enjoy. Yeah. Wait, no, hey. Why does it seem like every time I come here, I end up embarrassing myself? Wait, now's my chance to snoop around a bit. Ah, I almost forgot. Yeah, you came back quick. Might I ask you to inform Miss May that there is a message for her? Please tell her that Mr. White of Blue Corp phoned. Oh, right, sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp? Where have I heard that name? White. That was his name. My sister told me. White was the name of the guy who ruined me and Maya's mother. Could it be a coincidence? So let's go ahead and do one last thing. We're gonna examine this drawer. There's a screwdriver sticking out of the half-open drawer. Now's my chance to see what's inside. What do we have here? A uh, wiretap? Huh. What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? Wiretap added to the court record. There's definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would she have something like this in her hotel room? There's a store behind all this, I know it. Alright, I'll be using this bit of evidence tomorrow in the tomorrow's trial, that's for sure. For Maya's sake. I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait, I mean, you know what I mean. Oh, Bellboy, still there? Uh-oh, time to scram. I look forward to tangling you with, with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court! September 7th, 10 a.m., District Court Def or Courtroom Number 1. The court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I'd better not show any signs of weakness today or he'll be on top of me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. I wonder what kind of voice I should do for him because, like, his objection is British. So it's like, objection, but I can't do a British accent, so I wonder if I should just do, like, a very calm and serious voice, like, thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. You may call your first witness. The prosecution calls Chief Officer- Wait. Okay. I think they gave the judge's line to Edgeworth, because he was just like, You may call your first witness to the stand, and then he answered himself. Prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. So yeah, Gumshoe's back, which is great because he's the best character, or at least my favorite character. But it sucks because now I have to do his voice. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of the homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map to, of the office to explain. The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hands, sir. So yeah, this game was written in 2001, so it's got some stuff that hasn't aged well. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Now, detective. Y yes sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes sir, I had evidence she did it, sir. Hmm, detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Maya Fay's arrest. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the moment of the moita. Hmm, the very moment, you say. 
Very well, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. <laughs> I guess I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. All right, let's give this a try. Something the matter. No, Your Honor, I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Why? We had a witness account describing her. Hold on just one second. Y yeah If I heard that correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about the suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? Miss May isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't Pink, pal. Well, I guess she is Pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than a claims detective? Um, hmm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Gah. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There's something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. I'm trying to be a bit louder because when going through editing, my voice was very, very quiet, except for when I was doing, like, Detective Gumshoe's voice and stuff like that. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Before we begin the cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y your Honor? Why didn't you test about that final piece of evidence the first time? Ah, uh, I, I know. I'm real embarrassed. I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. Hard evidence. So the autopsy here actually states that death was instantaneous. However, Detective Gumshoe states that before she died, she wrote down the killer's name. So how could she die and then write down the killer's name? Objection. Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Mia Fey? That's really what you're saying. Well, what? This is one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course you wrote it! Who else could've? You have it backwards, detective. But backwards The victim is the only person who could've absolutely not written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to, blow f to, a, due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But! No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order, order. The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have any time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? When? It was the day after the murder. Prosecution's point being... That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object, but there was a, but there's a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? I'm a sham. Detective Gumshoe, are you calling me a fool because I believed your report? 
Uh huh? Me? I I'm not. Huh? Detective Gumshoe. I'm disappointed in you, handing him the wrong report like that. Eh, I, I'm sorry, your sir. You are at fault, Detective. This isn't going to look good on your evaluation next month. What? B what? Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. Well, your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Now I have to do her lines. As before, I won't be doing, like, a voice or anything like that. I'll just do my normal voice. And if I find any lines, like, too uncomfortable for me to say, then I'll just skip over them. Witness, your name, please. April May, at your service. Order. An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Ah, uh, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in the court. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was, like, in my hotel room. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel... And this hotel room is directly across from the Fane Cola office. Mm, that's right. I'm not saying that. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Witnesses account. It, it was like nine at night. I looked around. Ugh. It was like nine o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know, and then ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one with the one, the one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. I'm gonna pick up a bad habit of saying like a lot because that was kind of a bad habit I had already. And then this is going to bring it back. Then a woman with long hair, she kinda slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. Ugh. Huh. Well, Your Honor, I see it is remarkably solid testimony. I don't see it need to trouble the witness any- w Wait, Your Honor! Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Miafe's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well, her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination, if only because I have a feeling that Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that... Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? I yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me, because I'm clueless. About this, I mean. Okay, if you had really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her vis physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo is far from normal to me. 
However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say the, to that, Miss May? What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessarily necessary. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'm not saying that either. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. Witnesses account. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That, that clock. Um, the kind of statue clock. The thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Well, it certainly does startle me. And we'll get to that in a bit later. I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. The interesting thing, I, earlier I said the, test, the detail of her testimony startled me. And that's because she states that the thinker is a clock. And the interesting thing is, and if you watch the first case, this doesn't look like a clock at all. Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. I'm not saying that either. You just said that this statue of the thinker was a clock, but there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too, and he was found guilty of murder. Order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course, you will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Whew, that was close. If you stopped me there, the trial would be over. So, what happens now? But what happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That's... Because I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. So, you've been to the law offices of Fay & Co. N no, hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard from my hotel room. Hee <laughs> hee. Ugh. The law offices of Fate & Co, where the murder took place, are very close to the hotel. She could have easily heard the clock. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... Your Honor, members of the court... It is inconceivable that the, that the clock in question rang. That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly... Just have a look, as soon as you can. Oh. See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see, the clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. Well, Miss May? Quite the show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clock clockwork removed? It, 
if it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Ho ho, impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening, and now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves that when the clockwork was removed... Take a look at this. Mm, that's a very cute cell phone. Ooh, the girly phone. W wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. The defendant's cell phone. Th this wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it? Good detective, better remember he's up for evaluation soon. My heart goes out to you, Edgeworth. Not. Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Ah, I should probably tell you, the cock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. Your Honor, I think this recording makes it clear that the clockwork was already gone. And this was recorded in the morning before the witness even arrived at her hotel. M -m 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 well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know what that weapon was a clock? Well... Well, isn't it obvious? I saw the clock before. Um, what store is that again? I go to so many. Whoops, I forgot. So the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? The witness claimed she had seen it before, but this, is di this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible! Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time we went shopping for a better excuse. Oh, excuse is not on sale today? Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. <sighs> oh? Oh, 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 Silly me. D did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. It's scary. Certainly. <laughs> Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. No, not the attorney's badge. The wiretap. Have a look at this. Th 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 that uh. I found this in Miss May's room. 
Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim Miss Mia Fey's phone, were you not? Ooh. Ooh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have one thing to prove. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. Proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again? What's in it this time? What's it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May. You used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... Objection! Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May... Shut up, all of you! What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You... you lawyer! It, it's no fair! All of you g g g ganging up on me like that! Oh, so I'm... Is that it? Is that it? That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippity tapping ir irrelevant? Gah, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of speech, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Ha! Huh, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she's good. Ah. Uh. Can't be serious, no way. Way, I say, way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Oomph. Okay, so the killing happened around 9 o'clock at night, right? Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. R room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. And if you don't drink it quick, the ice melts, and then you just have... Regular cold coffee? Uh, ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. So, where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Fey, commit murder. No, they're going to just let her walk away. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Uh, um, well, come on, think of something. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious there, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunken quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? 
because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. Therefore, you must accept the verdict of guilty from Miss Maya Fay. That is my condition. What? I better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Alright, I've got nothing to lose. Except for, well, everything. Understood, I accept your condition. Hmph. <sighs> Fool. You fell right into my trap. Uh oh. Um, um, wait. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons from the middle of my work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. The tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Gitwata Hotel, in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after 8 o'clock in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 o'clock on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at the precisely the requested time, of course, and I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, our guest, Miss May herself. This is going to be hard because I sort of already give Edgeworth a semi-British accent. I see the defense may begin its cross-examination. Right, I'm ready. I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, my will be finished. I delivered the iced coffee to our guest Miss May herself. You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir, as in so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the when I brought the room service, sir, she she the guest, sir, favored me with an with a uh, um an embrasse, sir. Embrasse? Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir. But not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is... is that it? Tsk tsk. Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you shall end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Oh, oh wait! Please wait! Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question. That's all. Okay. This is really it. Now's my last chance. What do I ask him about? I'll ask him about the room service. Sir, T tell me again about the uh, room service. Uh, again, sir? At exactly nine o'clock, I had delivered room service to Miss May in room 303. The guest had requested iced coffee. Eighteen dollars was, was the charge, as I recall. I see. Eighteen dollars? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Y yes, well, iced coffee for two, you know. 
and we don't skimp on the ice, sir. What did he say? What did you say? Ah, oh, uh, rather, quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you, uh, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, yes, quite. Indeed. It was the, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention it if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Y you fool. I've done it. I've won. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Mm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In this new light, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. You agree, Mr. Edgeworth? But who? Who is this other person? Simple. It was the man who checked in with Miss May. Your Honor, as has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone, yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, what a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it were too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. Upstart. Amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and the defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. That is all today for the trial of my affair. Hey, that rhymed. Court is adjourned. So yeah, we just saw Edgeworth's uh, obstruction of justice evidence. What is it when? What is it called when you like hide evidence? Concealment of evidence. That's the word I was looking for. September 7th, 2.24 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Also, I love the term objectionable. Mr. Wright, you are amazing in there. Really? I think I might be your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool, too. Huh? That face of his with his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sent shivers up my spine. Hmm. If you say so. So what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Well, no. I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May, he's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? Heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work with everyone. Or everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow. I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that got left on the record. So yeah, if we look at it, the only part that was left was the victim dodged an attack then ran to the right, but she was caught and struck. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong to that detention center, and it's up to me to get her free. Hey, that rhymed. Anyway, September 7th, 3.11pm, Detention Center Visitor's Room. 
Well, hello. I didn't expect to see anyone visit me in such a dank place as this. It's really quite moving. Nah, you stinking lawyer. I hope you die. Have you come to laugh? Yes, laugh at the fallen Miss May. No, not really. There's something I wanted to ask. Unfortunately, there's nothing I want to be asked. Haven't you done enough questioning, you spiky head? Here we go again. Please, you're scaring the security guard. So, what is it you wish to ask of me then, hmm? For starters, how did you get to be so totally whacked? That man. About the man who stayed in your hotel room. Can you tell me about him? Where is he? Come on. No way, Jose. Hmm. Maybe if I had something to get her to talk. The wiretap. Why did you place a wiretap on Mia's phone? Ah, uh, when you say it like that, it sounds so cold. So criminal. Um, tapping people's phones is a crime, Miss May. Oh, and I suppose you learned that in lawyer school, hmm? Creep. This woman is impossible to talk to. Your attitude, yeah. Say, why are you so... angry? I mean, you don't look like a bad person. Oh, that does it! Bottom-feeding, scum-sucking lawyer! Bottom? I can't tell, does she have a thing against lawyers? Or just against me? Anyways, let's go ahead and go over to Grossberg's law offices, because as you can see here, uh, something appears to be missing. September 7th, Grossberg Law Offices. Huh, looks like Grossberg is out today. Again. Maybe he's avoiding me for some reason. So we have two things that are new here. First of all, this. Wait a second, wasn't there a giant painting hanging on that wall? Yeah, yeah, it was a painting of... Fisherman, maybe? Wasn't it? It wasn't a very memorable painting, anyhow. Also, we have these things over here. What's this? Old photos? There are two lying here. Something's been written on the pencil in pencil on the backs. DL6 Incident Exhibit A, DL6 Incident Exhibit B. Let's take a look at these. I'm sure I've seen this person somewhere. Perhaps I'll borrow this photo. I'm sure no one will miss just one little photo. And it might be a valuable clue. I'll take it for now. So keep this person in mind later. We're gonna go ahead and uh, swap out the photo. A photo lies on the desk. Maybe I should switch it with the one I took. I think I'll swap them. So this guy might look very familiar. You again? Can't you take a hint and stay gone? Hey, the only reason I'm back here is because you won't talk to me. Oh, so it's my fault now? You don't ha just have a spiky- you don't just have spiky hair, you also have a spiky heart. That does it. When I sh when this case is done, I'm shaving my head. <laughs> Go ahead and present the photo of the guy. Have a look at this. Look, I've said several times, I'm not telling you- Where did you- Aha! A reaction! This is him, isn't it? What? Who? When? Why? It is him. This is the man who stayed in your hotel room the night of the murder. N no! No, that's not right! Nice try, Miss Cooperative. D do you have proof it was him? Hmm? Y yeah, proof. Show me proof. I'm so close. So, we don't have proof that it was him, but there is one person who does know that this is the guy who stayed with her. September 7th, Gatewater Hotel, room 303. Ah, welcome, sir. Quite the performance today, if I dare say so myself. Oh, uh, um, thanks. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that. No, no, not at all, sir. Your efforts today can only help the Gatewater's rep, as they say. Huh? Rep? Yes, our reputation will swell as the hotel where the murderer used the wiretap. We can charge a premium for this room, of course. It will be great for business, sir. Whoa, whoa, Miss May hasn't been charged with murder. I, too, will become famous. The bellboy who brought the murderer iced coffee. Why do I feel like we're both stuck in the same bad dream? 
So you, you are our honored guest. Please let me know if there is anything I can bring you. Miss May. About Miss May. Oh, her? Huh? Sir, not to post, but I knew the moment I saw her. She'd do it, I said. Do what? I'm starting to think the most of su suspicious person here is this guy. I wanted to ask you about the man who's with Miss May. Ah, yes. He struck me as a real lady killer, if you'll pardon the expression. I knew it from the moment I saw him, sir. He and I are of the same ilk. We both carry the scent of danger. There we are in total agreement, Mr. Psycho Bellboy. If you had a photo of that man, I'm quite sure I could identify him. If only we had that. We'll get to that in a little bit. Could you tell me about this hotel? Absolutely, and on that subject, I have an excellent idea, sir. Currently, this hotel is known as the Gatewater. I propose that we add a subtitle. A subtitle? The Gatewater Hotel. Murder Manor. Well, what do you think? Um, sounds great. Whatever floats your tea set. Take a look at this photo. That's him, detective. Um, I'm the lawyer. Oh, I know that. I just wanted to say detective once. You know how it is. No, no I don't. Without a doubt, that is the man who checked in with Miss April May. How about I write an affidavit swearing that's him? An affidavit? This guy's way too excited about this. I'll have him write it. Well, sure, why not? Yes! I've always wanted to write an affidavit, sir. From henceforth, I will be known as the bellboy who swore the affidavit. Just hurry up and write it. Not even Miss May can play dumb to this. Could you have a look at this? What's that? The bellboy's affidavit. He told us everything he saw. He told us about the man he checked in with. He told us who he was. Now I'm getting somewhere. Rule number one of Ace Attorney, always push harder, or press harder, or whatever the phrasing is. This is it, all or nothing. Time to do a little bluff. No use playing dumb, if indeed that is an act. If you don't talk, I'm taking this photo to the press. What? Even though he should be a witness to the murder, this man is in hiding. I'm sure the press would have a field day with his reputation. Ooh, fine, I'll talk. You, you win, lawyer. Yes, man, that felt good. It's great to be alive. You're pumping your fists in the air. <coughs> now, tell me about the man you were with. That man, he's my boss. Red White, the president of the information gathering conglomerate, Blue Corp. Red White? Information gathering? Well, I suppose you could call him a detective agency. Huh. This is the man... So this is the man that you were with on the night of the murder. I'm... I'm scared to talk. I don't want to end up like her. It's okay. I'll just ask Mr. White himself. Can you tell me where Blue Corp is located? Mr. Red White. At last. Finally, a lead on this guy. If April May couldn't have done it, that leaves him. Time to take action. Discarded the bellboy's aff affidavit. September 7th, Blue Corp, Incorpor Blue Corp Incorporated. CEO's office. What's with the surreal decor? Welcome, please furnish me with the title of your personage. What the? Your name, what's your name? I was just inquirably asking the title that you go by. Uh, right. Phoenix Wright. Inquirably? Mr. Wright, is it? Right, I see. Splendiferous. Perhaps I have intimidated you with my giantesque vocabulary. What's this guy's problem? I'm Red White, CEO of Blue Corp. You know, corporate expansion official? My business dealings bring me into contact with the elite of the elite. So I'm afraid I'm not used to conversing with the wordly challenge. What a fruitcake! I'm gonna use that from now on. Huh, let me guess. You are an attorney fresh out of law school, are you not? That's the only explanation for why you would come to meet me like this. What does he mean by that? No matter. So, what business does a mighty lawyer have with a man such as myself? 
Yikes, this guy's arrogance meter is off the scale. Let's do some examining. Uh, explain this, please. Haven't I seen this somewhere? Is this a replica? Ridiculosity. I have no interest in anything but originals. That right there is a bona fide original, worth five million, I'm sure. Hmm. Also, another thing that I like. Let's present the photo to him. About this picture. Gorgeous, that's a picture of me. Ah, I see it was taken in the prime of my youth, about ten years ago at a guess. The hotel bellboy says he saw the man on the night of the murder. On closer inspection, he does look a lot like me, but I'm afraid this is someone else. Nope, it's definitely not me. Far too young. <laughs> Miss May. Miss May is an employee of Blue Corp, is she not? Correct! She was my secretariat. What a shock it was to f hear what she has done. What she has done? You mean the wiretap? Indeed! She is, she is paid to answer phones. Tapping them is not in her job description. She does gather information for us as a part of her duties. But I assure you, we do not condone illegal methods. It is ineffable that she would do this. Sounds like he's trying to turn Miss May into a scapegoat. On the night of the murder, were you, were you in April May's hotel room? Who can say? I seldom pay attention to mundane details such as time and place. My motto is, don't worry, be happy. Still, Mr. White. The hotel bellboy has stated on the record that he does remember you very clearly. No matter, the bellboy can say what he pleases. I still won't talk to you. If you want me to speak, put me on the witness stand. Although I doubt you'd be capable of doing that. Uh, he raises a good question, actually. Why didn't the prosecution call him as a witness? He should have seen the same thing as April May. Oh ho ho! The police, the courts. To me, they are mere toys. Playthings for my amusement. What kind of company is Blue Corp, anyway? Ah, excellent question. We buy and sell various kinds of information. We are a company of the future. You might say, we are the future. Sell information? In just 10 years, I've built this business up into the grand office you see now. Ah, in case you were wondering, Blue Corp was named after the color blue. I, Red White of Blue Corp, as founder and CEO, named it so. And why, you ask? Because I like the color blue, of course. Fantabulistic, is it not? So, it's actually kind of impressive because he's how old? 39, so at the age of 29, he was able to build his own company. It's kind of impressive. That painting. Uh, there's something that's been bothering me. Yes, what might that be? That big painting on the wall over there. I've seen it before. No, I've actually seen that painting before. Oh, just yesterday, actually. Your point being? My point is simple, or rather, my question is simple. Why is that painting hanging on your wall? Mr. Wrong, was it? Right. It appears you do not fully under- you do not fully grasp your position here. I ask again, who are you? Um, huh? A lawyer? No, my feeble friend, a mere lawyer. Worth nothing, zilch, zippo, nada. Just like that sorry excuse, excuse for an attorney, Grody Burger. What? Ugh. Oof. Ah. Uh, uh, he punched me. Well, Mr. Lawyer, what will you do, eh? Charge me with assault? Charge away, I welcome it. For it is you who will be found guilty. What? In my exposition, the police, the courts, they all do my bidding. So you say. I wonder, is that kind of control really possible? I don't expect you to understand. It is a world beyond your compensation. You came here from Grody Burgers, I presume? Mr. Grossberg's, yes. Then you must ask him, why is it that the painting is of his things here? Perhaps then he will tell you. Perhaps he will explain how a man can live life purely for personal profit. 
Go now, skedaddle. There is nothing more to discuss. Huh? I don't think he's noticed me standing here. Maybe I should clear my throat? Ahem! Jumping Jehoshaphats! Oh, you. What's wrong? You look so pensive, like an old man at the end of his days. Hmm? I'm not senile yet. I was just thinking about this whole mess. Something's really bothering him, that much is clear. Today's trial. So, you came to see the trial? Yes, yes I did. Something was bothering me all night, all last night, you see. I couldn't get a wink of sleep. Really? What was that? Well, you see, it's just Mia's sister. Poor girl. My boy, I owe you my thanks, truly. I don't know what I would have done if, if things had gone poorly for the girl. I asked before, but why did you refuse her request for defense? I think I have a right to know. Right, Mr. Right? No, no, I'm sorry. It's just, I need more time to think about it, my boy. He does seem troubled about something. I'm starting to have a feeling I might know what it is. So, I paid Blue Corp a visit. Oh, oh, I see. Mr. Grossberg, I have to admit, something has been bothering me. Oh, what is it? Well, out with it, my boy. You see, it's just... That big painting. <laughs> Mr. Grossberg, sir, there was a giant painting hanging right there the other day, was there not? The one you said you had no intention of parting with? Well, I saw it. Today. It was in the CEO's office at Blue Corp, Red White's office. So, you noticed. I suppose I should have guessed you would. It is a large painting. Mr. Grossberg, I know you and Mr. White are connected somehow. C connected you say? Yes, I know, and I know what it is. Your lovers. He's blackmailing you. Mr. White is something on you, doesn't he? Blackmail? I think that painting is fairly gaudy proof. Very well. This may be the chance I've been waiting for. Maybe it's time to get this off my chest so I can finally rest easy again. After all, you were Mia's understudy. Perhaps it was fate. What's he talking about? Red White is a man who makes his living through intimidation. Blue Corp is a company that, that excels in finding people's weaknesses, I'm afraid. I've been paying them for 15 years now. 15 years? All because of the DL6 incident, you may have guessed. The name on the back of those photographs. As you suspected, I could not stand in defense of Maya because of this. Might would have destroyed me if I did. So that's the connection. It is hard for me to tell you this, my boy. But arresting Red White will be nigh on impossible. Impossible? Why? He has information on everyone. It gives him an iron grip. He owns judges, attorneys, prosecutors, police, and politicians. What? They are bound and able to do harm to themselves and therefore to him. Don't look at me like that. What you see is nothing more than the weight of many years. What is the DL6 incident? DL6 is nothing more than the sorting code the police gave the case. It was 15 years ago now. I received a request from a medium. A spirit medium. A medium? Her name was Misty Fay. Fay? Indeed, she was Mia's mother. She had been investigating the murder at the bequest of the police. And she failed. As a result, the police called her a fraud. This is what Maya was talking about the other day. I did all I could for her, and in the end cleared her of wrongdoing. The murder case, however, remains unsolved to this day. That case is the DL6 incident. Well, why are you blackmailed over this, Mr. Grossberg? The DL6 incident was top secret at the time. It made sense. The police didn't want people to know that they were using a medium. They couldn't let people know, but one person found out. I... I told him. You told White? He offered me riches. It is an embarrassment to me now. Because I talked, the police were mocked far and wide. In secret, they began looking for the one who sold them out. Of course, White heard all about it, and he came to me. 
Only this time the offer was blackmail. I see. White controls love this country as he sees fit. Yet if you would still challenge him. Have a close look at Mia's office. Mia's office? She followed his every move for years. She may have recorded something of what she found. So yeah, the DL6 incident seems to be pretty important to this case. So basically, just to recap, 15 years ago, uh, uh, a long time ago, uh, Maya's father passed away, and a couple years later, in 2001, uh, Maya's mom, Misty Faye, uh, did an investigation, a spirit channeling for the DL6 incident. And it turns out that she was incorrect somehow. And so she left, leaving Mia and Maya. Meanwhile, Grossberg told Red White that the police had used the spirit medium. And he, Red White told everyone. And then once the police started looking for the guy who sold them out, Red White said, hey, I'll sell you out. I'll sell you out for selling them out unless you start paying me. And so the for the fast for the past fifteen years, uh, he's been paying him off. It's funny. Looking at this room, it seems so normal. Hard to imagine a murder took place here. Mr. Grossberg said there would be clues. Maybe I should have another look. So yeah, if there's any place to look for clues, it'd be this shelf over here. All the cases the chief ever worked on are filed here. They're in alphabetical order. Let's take a look. Which file should I look at? File A to I. Let's see if there's a record in this file that catches my eye. A, B, F. Misty Faye. That's me and Maya's mother. Hmm. Should I take a look? I have tarnished the Faye name, leaving only these words. My mother vanished. I've tarnished the Faye name, leaving only these words. My mother vanished. I was determined to find the one, the ones who had made my mother blame herself in this way. Using the ESP that runs in my family, I held an audience with the dead. Finally, the names of two men surfaced. One was Marvin Grossberg, a lawyer who sold my mother's information for riches. The other was the man who sold the, that information to the press. This parasite who makes his fortune on threats and coercion. His name is... Hmm. The record stops there. So Mia knew Grossberg. Let's check the files again. All the cases the chief ever worked on are filed here. They're in alphabetical order. Let's take a look. Which file should I look at? J to S. Let's see. J through S. Nothing much in here. Maybe I'll just skim some of, some of it? Huh. <sighs> Well, no harm in flipping through a bit, I guess. The biggest parts here at the end in S. Su ugh, suicide? That you don't say ew when you hear about suicide. That's that's depressing. Here's a collection of suicide reports. There's politicians, policemen. There's writing on most of these in pencil. White? This is Mia's handwriting. Wait, I get it. Mia thought he was involved in these suicides. White drove them all to... I can use these newspaper clippings. Huh. Let's find the most disturbing one. Shall I check Mia's files once more? Which file to check? Let's just do the last one to be safe. T... U... I know! W! White! The entire W section is missing. Was it taken? So yeah, it seems like Mr. White, while he was in here, decided to take a huge chunk of files. Let's head back to Grossberg's real quick. I found this in Mia's files, so she was investigating Red White, as I expected. Well, if you wanted to challenge him, you could present this in court. Not a bad idea. Let's go ahead and present it to him first. 
Well, aren't you persistent? Sorry, but there's something I have to ask you. Mr. Lawyer, I really hate having to repeat myself, but it seems the message has not yet penetrated your thick skull. Stop bothering me. If you try my patience further, I fear a nasty accident may occur. Do I make myself clear? Transparent. This is the only clue that Mia left me. I'd better make this one count. Mr. White, see this? It's an article describing the suicide of a politician. He was embezzling secret government funds. Then, one day, word got leaked to the press. The very next day, he took his own life. And this concerns me how? I found this article in Mia's office. Miss Mia. She had a file fought. She had a file filled with articles like this. Every one of them was labeled with, labeled with a single word. White. Mr. White, I know what you did to this politician. You were blackmailing him. Blackmail? Not just him, either. You were threatening and coercing hundreds of others. You were involved in all of these suicide cases that we investigated. This company is built on blackmail. I'm right, aren't I? What a bizarre accusation. Mr. Wrong, what is it that you should be doing now? Investigating me? No, no, no. I think not. You should be searching for the one who killed Miss Mia. Secretary's office. Hello? Mr. Wrong will be leaving now. Yes, sir. I'll send someone right away. Wait a second. Mr. White. You are absolutely right. I should be looking for the killer now. And actually, I've done better. I've found him. He's sitting right in front of me. Just what are you insinuating? Mia was on to you. She was keeping tabs. For this reason, you had April May tapping her phone. Then, Mia was murdered. All the documents about you suddenly mysteriously disappeared. So the culprit would be... Even a child could work it out, Mr. White. You did it. Secretary's office. We won't be needing an escort for Mr. Wrong. Instead, please connect me to the public prosecutor's office. Of course, sir. One moment, please. White? That you? What are you doing calling me at a time like this? Hello, Chief Prosecutor. I've changed my mind. I want to testify tomorrow. What's this about? The Mia Fey case. I witnessed the murder, you see. And thus, as a very important witness, I would like to testify. What? Why now? I thought you said you didn't want to go to court. Quiet, dude. I told you I changed my mind, didn't I? Oh, and one other thing. Send the police over here right away. The man is standing right in front of me. He looks dazed, but could be violent. What? What man? Are you even listening? The, the executioner, that hatchet man, the liquidator, the killer, man. What? Mr. White, this isn't another one of those. Chief Prosecutor, I do not believe you are in a position to freely offer your opinion to me, correct? I'm telling you to send the police, now. Did I not tell you, Mr. Wrong? You are a mere lawyer, as was Miss Mia. How dare you? I'll point the finger at you, and you will be tried as Miss Mia's killer. The case is as good as settled. No lawyer of any worth will defend you. I have friends in the local lawyers association, you see. You'll be given a lawyer so stupendously inept that they make even you look competent. I... I feel faint. Detective Gumshoe, reporting, sir! Ah, butts! Harry butts! Right, actually. Phoenix Wright. My friend's name is Larry. Oh, right. Sorry, pal. Butts was that murderer, right? Detective Gumshoe, I present to you the man who killed Ms. Mia Fey. What? Take this despicable human being into custody. Farewell, Mr. Wrong. I can't believe it's only been a day since the first trial. 
My trial begins tomorrow. White's going to set a trap for me, and the prosecution will be in on it, of course. Edgeworth included. An attorney was assigned to me by state yesterday. I refused. I had an idea. Right. Mr. Wright. Oh, Maya. Great, they let you out of detention. Just now, yes. It's all thanks to you. <sighs> now I'm afraid we've switched places. What? You mean, you... I explained what had happened to Maya. I don't believe it. How many people does a man need to destroy before he's satisfied? My mother? My sister? And now you! This has gone too far. Mr. Wright, please tell me, is there anything I can do? Um, well... Well, you could cheer for me in court. Cheer for you? You mean, like a cheerleader? Huh? Uh, yeah, like that. Alright, leave it to me. Huh? I'd better go get a uniform and some pom-poms. Wait, 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 wait. What, what, what? I'm kidding, it was a joke. No way! No, really. I was kidding. But thanks. It's good to know you're on my side. There really isn't anything you can do for me anyway. But, but I can't just sit here and do nothing. I've got to give that man a piece of my mind. Just a piece? Okay. Then come to the court tomorrow. Okay, I'll be there. I'll show them a thing or two. It's the beginning of a new century. Yet with crime, it's the same old story. In fact, it's gotten worse. Lengthy court proceedings are no longer realistic. Beginning a few years ago, a limit of three days was put on initial court trials. Almost all finished in a day, most with a guilty verdict. I never thought I would end up in the defendant's chair for myself. Tomorrow, the true culprit will appear as a witness. This is it. It's me or him. September 9th, 9.52 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Well, I guess this is it. Yeah. One way or another, this case gets decided today. Ah! Phoenix! Look! Prosecutor Edgeworth. I received a call from the Public Prosecutor's Office yesterday. He told me that whatever Mr. White says today, it will be the absolute truth. No matter how you try to attack his testimony, if I raise an objection, I have, a, I have it on good faith that the judge will listen to me. What, does White have the judge in his pocket too? So, you're saying I'm going to be guilty. End of story? I will do anything to get my verdict, Mr. White. Anything. Why? Why? How can you torment an innocent person like this? Innocent? How can we know that? The guilty will always lie to avoid being found out. There's no way to tell who is guilty and who is innocent. All that I can do is hope to get every defendant declared guilty. So I make that my policy. Edgeworth, you've changed. Hmm? Phoenix, you know him? Don't expect any special treatment, Phoenix, right? F Phoenix? Well, court will be opening for session soon. What? But wait, your defense attorney isn't even here yet. He is not. I'll be defending myself. What? Okay, let's do this. September 9th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number one. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, are you sure you're up to doing this? Yes, Your Honor. I will be defending myself. Understood. Very well. Mr. Edworth, your opening statement, please. As the details of the event are, quite, are already quite clear to the court, today we will hear the testimony of another witness to the defendant's crime. I see. The prosecution may call its witness. That went far too smoothly. Why didn't the judge ask Edgeworth why his witness didn't testify before? It's like... It's like he already knows why. Hmm. If anyone's going to raise an objection about this, I suppose it's me. Mr. Edgeworth, you owe an explanation to the court. 
Why didn't this witness testify in the trial against Miss Maya Fay? Hmph. I'm ever so sorry. Mr. White is a busy man, and besides, at the time I thought that Miss May's opinion was all that would be needed. Again, my sincerest apologies to the court. Excellent, Mr. Edgeworth. I appreciate your demeanor. Great. He gets to show off and I get nowhere. I would like to call Mr. Red White to the stand. Please state your full name. You wish to know the title of my personage? Uh, your name? Yes, that is what I said. Oh dear, do my locutions confuse? Name. These two are great together. My name is Red White, but my friends call me Blanco Nino. I am the CEO, to use a more com or to use a more common term, the president of Blue Corp. Did you know the victim, Miss Mia Fey? That would be a negatory. No, I did not. You were at the Gatewater Hotel the night of the murder. Correct. And you witnessed the murder from there. Ahem. Why tell you what you already know? Very well, Mr. Wright, you may be er, Mr. White, you may begin your testimony. If I can't rip this guy's testimony apart, I'm done for. Why do I always feel like it's the end of the world and I'm the last man standing? Ho oh ho! I hope you have made your peace with God, Mr. Lawyer. Let him have it, Phoenix. So yeah, Maya's over here. Witnesses account. Let's see, it was about 9 o'clock, I believe. I was quietly perusifying, uh, that's reading to you, some papers by the window. Then I heard a bedlam coming from outside. Surprised, I turned to look at the building across the way. It was then that I saw him, a spiky-haired man attacking a woman with long hair. Needless to say, that man was none other than you, Mr. Lawyer. I called Miss May over at once. She too was flabbergasted, of course. The victim, she she ran away, but you gave chase. Finally, there was a terrible faction. Then it was all over. Hmm. If things occurred as you testify, that I'm afraid the defendant is guilty. Very well, defendant. Er, I mean, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. The victim, she, she ran away, but you gave chase. Can you be a little more detailed about that? I think it's worth knowing exactly what happened. Of course, comprende, I understand. The victim was attacked by you and ran to the left. You gave chase and struck her down. Are you sure? As you know, I am always absolutely perfect. Perhaps you could change your testimony to reflect this new detail. The victim ran to the left and you gave chase. Are you sure about that? How many times must I say it? I am as a absolutely perfect. End of story. How many times must I hear that? I was just about to say, the thing here is that uh, the new statement Victim ran to the left. If we go ahead and check this thing over here, May testimony, the one thing that she testified that, that that was the truth is that the victim dodged an attack then ran to the right, but he says that they ran to the left. Objection. Wait right there. Mr. White, you've dug your own grave. What is this? You said the victim ran to the left. But that directly contradicts Miss May's testimony. She clearly stated that the victim ran right. Oh ho ho, it's simple. You must have misheard her. I think not. Look at the floor plans. The killer was here, and the victim here. If the victim ran to the left as you claim she did, she would have been running directly away from the door. She would have been running into a dead end. Don't you find that odd? Very strange. I did see her run to the left. I did. Phoenix, look at his face. I don't think he's lying about this one. True. 
Maybe he really did see the victim run left. So he did witness the killing? Wait a second. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. May says right, and Mr. White says left. Can you explain this contradiction to the court? Both witnesses are telling the truth, for once. Ha, huh, I doubt it. Er, uh, rather, that does not clear up the contradiction. There's one scenario in which that... There's one scenario that would explain their conflicting accounts. What? Obviously, the witness was not viewing the crime from the hotel. Mr. Wright, what do you mean? Yes, what do you mean he was not viewing the crime from the hotel? If he was not in the hotel, where could he have been? In the law offices of Fay and Co., of course. More specifically, he was standing here. Show the court where the Mr. White was standing. This is where he was. Look, when the victim ran for the door, if he was watching from this point, to him it would appear that she ran to the left. Please, this is no time for jokes and ill taste. That is where the killer was standing. Order, I will have order. Anyone disturbing the order of this courtroom will be held in contempt. Mr. Wright, what are you suggesting? Rapscallion. The postulations of the defense are a distortion of the truth, Your Honor. Indeed, they do seem a bit far-fetched. Ho ho ho! You provide us with so much entertainment, Mr. Lawyer. What now? He's laughing? The hilarity of the moment made me remember something. It appears I have been unclear, and for this I apologize. Mr. Your Honor, might I be allowed to testify once more? Very well, let's hear your revised testimony. Good luck, you can't fix a bo broken testimony, buddy. Miss May's testimony was correct, as was mine. When you assaulted the girl, she first ran to the left, and then you hit her savagely. That is what I saw. Next, with the last of her strength, she ran to the right. You chased her and delivered the final blow. That is what Miss May saw. You see? You hit her twice. Don't you remember, Mr. Lawyer? Ugh. The voice is starting to, like, actually, like, take effect on my throat. <laughs> hmm, that doesn't, that does seem to make sense. Will you be cross-examining the witness's testimony? You bet I will! I mean, yes, Your Honor. Ms. May's testimony was correct as was- Okay, so the, t the contradiction here was- It's a bit of a subtle one. He says, See, you hit her twice. So if we check the autopsy report, Died from a blow by a blunt object. Not died from multiple blows. Just a blow. Mr. White, the victim died from a single blow. What do you have to say to that? Uh, up. Now's my chance to hit him where it counts. Mr. White, wasn't it you who told this court you were absolutely perfect? Mm. I will refrain from using this phrase from now on. Your Honor, if you could ask the witness for a new testimony. The witness ob is obviously confused, Your Honor. I would like to request a 10 minute break. Y yes, yes, quite. The witness is confused because he's lying. I emphatically request that there be no break, Your Honor. Very well. If the witness would care to revise his testimony. Crowd's on my side. No slipping out of this one now, White. Mr. White? Okay. Um, well, see, I looked at the other window when I heard that thing fall. Then the next moment I saw Miss Mia run to the left. The killer, you, attacked her, but she dodged. 
Um, and then she turned and ran for the door. Then you did her in with a single blow. Whap. Hmm. The whap indeed. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Mr. Your Honor, my stomach, you see, it is hurting. Deal with it. This is almost over. You heard that thing fall? What exactly was that thing? Huh? Oh, oh, that? Um, the glass light stand. Right, the one that had fallen over at the sea. Phoenix! Doesn't something about that strike you as odd? Yeah, very odd. Yeah, that is odd. I'll press further. Mr. White. Huh? W what? You're saying you saw that glass light stand? Y yes. Then change your testimony to reflect that. S sorry, my bad. The witness will revise his testimony. Okay, okay, of course. So, he sa says right here, uh, light stand was lying on the floor when I looked. But if we look at this, the light stand wasn't lying on the floor like in one piece. It was shattered into glass pieces. So how would he know what it was? Objection. Mr. White. It was impossible for you to have seen the light stand. What? The stand broke into pieces when it fell. Just by seeing the broken pieces, you would have no idea it was a light stand. So tell me, exactly when was it that you saw the stand? Answer the question. It isn't it obvious I saw the stand before it fell over? So you saw the stand before the victim was attacked then? C correct That would be no problemo, right? Huh. There's a big problemo, or, I mean, problem here. What problem is this? Mr. White, let me make sure I have this straight. You saw the glass light stand through the window from the hotel before the incident occurred. Correct, that is so. It's conclusive, definitive, undeniable, unimpeachable. No, it's impossible. You couldn't have seen the stand. What? Why couldn't he? You have proof? I sure do, Your Honor person in the hotel could not have seen the stand before it fell over, because the floor plans clearly show his line of view, and where the glass light stand was, is not in that line of view. Look at this. These are the floor plans of the scene of the murder, yes? Correct, your honor. Now, look. If you were to look through the window at the office, this is the area you would be able to see. Here. Well, note that the stand is not within the visible area. Well, Mr. White? What do you have to say to that? Uh, uh, ridiculousity. Mr. White, if you were in the Gatewater Hotel as you claim, you could not have seen the stand before it fell over. In fact, you wouldn't have been able to see it after it fell either. There's no way you could have recognized the broken shards as a glass light stand. So, when did you see the stand, Mr. White? It must have been the moment that it fell, and the only place you could have seen that from is inside the Fame Co. Lofts. In other words, you were at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. Mr. White? Mr. White. You did it, didn't you? Mr. Your Honor. I, I, Miss Mia. <sighs> Looks like we're about to get our verdict. That's far enough, Phoenix Wright. What? Ugh, I forgot about Edward. Mr. White. I think the time has come. Shouldn't you confess your crime now, hmm? What? I said you should confess your crime. Ergo, confess that you placed the wiretap. 
the wiretap. Order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, explain to the court what you mean by this. Distinguished members of the court, Mr. White is slightly confused. Allow me to explain. I really don't like the way this is headed. As you know, Mr. White is the CEO of Blue Corp. He ordered his secretary, Miss April, made a tap the law offices of Miss Faye. What does that have to do? Your Honor, the question is, when was the wiretap put in the office, and by who? No, you wouldn't. Mr. White, in order to place the wiretap, you entered the Miss Faye's offices. Am I correct? C correct You are most correct, Miles. Give me a break. Yes, in order to place the wiretap, I breached the Finkel offices. That is when I saw that accursed light stand. Now I'm confused. Please explain to the court what all this means, Mr. Edgeworth. Gladly, Your Honor. Mr. Phoenix Wright has made his position quite clear. He has determined that Mr. White knew the glass stand was in the office. He, he has shown that there was only one time Mr. White could have seen the stand. The very moment of the murder. Thus, Mr. Wright would like to have would like you to believe Mr. White was the murderer. I see. However, it is a fact that Mr. White had been to that office well before the murder took place. He went to the pl he went to place the wiretap. He could have seen the glass light stand then. Ergo, Mr. Wright's theories were revealed for the baseless conjecture it is. Mr. White, you will testify to the court about this wiretap. Ahem, leave it to me. I... I feel faint. The wiretapping. It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. I had entered the Finkel Law Offices. Of course, I had done so to place the wiretap. That is when I saw this glass light stand. Hmm. So you saw the stand before the night of the incident, and this is how you were able to identify what had fallen over. By the sound? Correct! That is right! I see. Very well. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine. Gah! What am I supposed to do now? Good luck, Phoenix. That is when I saw this glass light stand. Why did you notice something as innocuous as a light stand? The light stand was made entirely out of glass. It was quite stylish, so I guess it made a lasting impression on me. Such a predacious thing deserves attention, does it not? That is all. Damn it, there's nothing for me to press him on. Oh well, maybe he's rattled enough that I can bluff something out of him. Uh oh, don't tell me I've run out of ammo. I'm afraid that that's as far as you go, Mr. Wright. The time has come for you to admit your defeat. You fought, honorably. No more. I can't take this anymore. Mr. Wright, are you giving up? Y yes, Your Honor. Phoenix. Phoenix, over here. I know that voice. Mia? Never give up, Phoenix. M Mia! Where... Where am I? The waiting lobby? What happened? Oh, right. I lost the trial. I was hallucinating. Ah, you're finally awake. Gah! Hey, Phoenix. Gah? That's no way to greet an old friend. Phoenix, I want you to look at me. Y you're... Maya? Didn't you know the Fae Woman of strong psychic powers? When you accepted your defeat in court, it appears that was enough to shock, enough of a shock to awaken Maya's true powers. So, 
Maya is channeling you, Mia? That's right. I am Maya, but I am also Mia. Now, I want you to listen to me, Phoenix. Maya never gave up, and you can't either. That's what I came here to tell you. But, but... We don't have much time, Phoenix. Now listen. You've already won. Huh? You have that receipt in the court record, right? Um... Oh, yeah, the one you wrote Maya on? Phoenix, White wrote that, not me. So... So what do I do with it? Look at the front of the receipt. The... front? Regular receipt. Looks like it's from a famous department store. One thousand dollars. Wow, big spender. Item... Glass light stand. Date of purchase, September 4th. September 4th! That's right, Phoenix. I bought that stand the day before I was killed. Whoa! Now, what did Mr. White say in his testimony? It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. He said he saw the stand the week before the murder. There you go. I think the court is about to reconvene. Go do it, Phoenix. You know you're innocent. Now you just have to prove it. Right. September 9th, 1.16 p.m. District Court, courtroom number one. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. Is the defendant, rather, are you all right, Mr. Wright? Yes, sorry, Your Honor. I'm fine now. Then let's start where we left off. Your Honor, there is nothing to go back to cross-examination of Mr. White is finished. All that is required now is for you to pass judgment on the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Uh. Your Honor, please give me one more chance. I promise you this is the last time I'll ask you. Hmm. But as Mr. Edgeworth has noted, the trial is more or less finished. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have an op opinion on this matter? I say, give a... Let us give Mr. Phoenix Wright his last chance. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. So now we know exactly what to do. Beginning of September, the week before the murder. Objection! Look closely at this. See the word Maya written in blood? Wah! You're grasping. I think not. Look at the other side of the receipt. The other side? Your Honor, would you tell the court what is written on the other side of that receipt? Hmm. Well, the last light stand, and the date of purchase. Why, that's the day before the murder. You see, Mr. White, when you allegedly entered the Fane Co. offices at the beginning of September, the stand could not have been there. Well, Mr. White, can't get out of this one, can you? No, it's impossible. Uh-oh, he's losing it. Well, Your Honor, I understand there must be quite a bit of pressure on you. But I think you'll agree you can't judge me guilty under these circumstances. Very well. Then, that is all for the trial of... Not so fast, Phoenix Wright. Eh? What? No way he can worm his way out of this one. Oh wait, I forgot. It's Edward. There is a certain thread of logic to the defendant's claims. However, there is no concrete proof that Phoenix Wright is innocent. Ego, I would like to request one more day before Phoenix Wright is granted his freedom. I need time to make one more inquiry into this matter. Hmm. Another inquiry? This isn't going to be another one of those updated autopsy reports. This guy just keeps making up evidence as he pleases. This is bad. Mr. White's guilt is obvious. There is no need to prolong this trial any further. Hmm. Well, Mr. Edgeworth... 
If anyone is going to call Mr. White to trial, it would be me, the prosecution. I need a date to ascertain whether your claims have any basis in factual evidence. Hmm. I see. Objection denied. What? The completion of the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright will be postponed until tomorrow. No, there's no telling what will happen if I can't end this now. Edgeworth is sure to come up with, or just make up something. And after Mia showed up to help me and all. Mr. Your Honor, may I go home? Of course, thank you for your time. Gah. The witness will stay. Mia. Phoenix, read this note out loud. Mia, what's this? Your Honor, if I may. You're quite persistent today, Mr. Wright. You bet I am. My life is writing on this one. I have something I would like to read to the court. The memo Mia had given me was a list of names. Many of them sounded strangely familiar. People in finance, famous celebrities. That's when it happened. Stop! Desist! Halt! P please stop! Make him stop! How? How did you get that list? Mr. White. Admit your guilt right here, right now, or else this list will be released to the press. Case closed, Your Honor. Well, I see no reason to continue this trial, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You've done it again. That was quite a spirited defense. Yes, Your Honor. I guess you could say that. If only you knew how spirited it was. Hmm. Well, this court finds the defense. Ahem, rather, the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Not guilty. That is all. The court is adjourned. September 9th, 2.24 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. Well, I never thought I'd be saying this again, but congratulations, you're lucky I was born a fag. I'm lucky I had both you and Maya on my side. I'm glad you made it. Thank you, Phoenix. You rest a lot to help me, and Maya. I won't forget it as long as I live. As long as you live? My time here's running out. Huh? Maya's powers are still weak. I can't stay here that long. What? No, there's still there's still so much to say. Don't worry. I'm sure we'll meet again. Ch chief <laughs> I'm not the chief anymore. Phoenix, can you come to the office tonight, say nine o'clock? The office? I'll see you later. Chief, Mia. September 9th, 9.02 p.m. Fan Co. Offices. Being here, it's hard not to think about that night. You came. Mia. I was kind of worried you might not. Huh? Of course I came. Well then, I'm pretty hungry. How about a burger? M Mia? Why? <laughs> you should see the look on your face. Mia! What are you talking about? It's me, Maya. Maya? What, did I look like I, my sister? Look like you were her. Hmm, I might be able to use that. Oh, Phoenix, go to the store and buy me lunch, would you? Um, Maya, why are you here? Because of this. See, Mia wrote me a letter. Take care of Phoenix for me. Take care of... Huh? She means the office. This office. Someone has to help with the new Wright & Co. offices, right? And who better but me, Maya Fay, reporting for duty. Wait, no, on second thought, let's make this casual. Yo, Nick, Maya here, ready to get down to business. You don't mind me calling you Nick, do you? 
It's a great name. Mia said that's what your friend Larry calls you. Nick. You know what a desk means? We're partners. You know, when I think about it, it's, it is Maya's fault I'm here now. But if it wasn't for her, I'd probably be in jail. Right in co law offices. Got a good ring to it. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. Good luck, Phoenix. I'll always be here, watching. Right, okay, Nick, let's do it. Huh? Do what? Burgers, dummy, burgers. There's a great burger joint just down the street. Come on, time's a-wasting. Uh, okay, wait up. October 14th, 5.31 p.m. Wright & Co. Law Offices. That rocked! See you in hell, evil magistrate! Whoa, stop waving that broom around. Oh, Nick, I didn't know you were here. Of course I'm here. What was that surreal show you were watching? What? Nick, you mean you don't know the Steel Samurai? He's only the most popular TV hero for young people. Young? Like, how young? Um, ten years old? What the heck are you doing getting all excited? Hey, I'm only seventeen. That's seventeen, see? I'm a teen. Not like you, Nick. Hey, don't talk to me like I'm your grandpa or something. I'm only twenty-four myself. Come watch it with me. He's really cool, and it's really popular. When they asked grade school kids what they wanted to be, Steel Samurai was number one. I really worry about kids these days. Gramps. Well, the Steel Samurai's over. Guess it's time to close up the office. I guess. Wish we had some clients. A month has passed since my trial. Mia's murder was the talk of the town for some time. But no one paid any attention to the Wright & Co. law offices. How am I going to pay the rent this month? It'll be okay. I'm sure some big client is just around the corner. Oomph. October 16th, 8.14 a.m., Phoenix Wright's bedroom. Hello? This is Phoenix. Nick! Maya? What? It's still early. It's the Steel Samurai! The Steel Samurai got arrested! Huh? You mean the guy on the show? Yes, they're saying the Steel Samurai killed a villain. Um, isn't that what he's supposed to do? Yeah, on TV. Yeah, on TV. No, I mean he actually did it, in real life. He skewered a villain with his samurai spear. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Just come to the office quick, please, Nick. October 16th, 9.22 a.m., Wright & Co. Law Offices. Maya's here, watching now, television. Morning. The actor Will Powers was arrested yesterday. Powers plays the lead role in the popular kids' show The Steel Samurai, Warrior of Neo Old Tokyo. He was arrested on suspicion of murder. The victim was Jack Hammer, who plays the villain known as the Evil Magistrate. His body was found still inside the Evil Magistrate costume. The samurai spear was also found stuck through the body. Police believe this was the murder weapon, and are investigating further. This has to be a joke. No, 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 it's a nightmare. The Steel Samurai is over. The world is over. Yes, right in coal offices. <laughs> what? Nick! It's the Steel Samurai. What? 
Yes. Yes, of course. We'll be right there. Let's go, Nick. Go? Go where? They have the Steel Samurai down in detention. So what? So I've decided this will be our first case. October 16th, Detention Center Visitor's Room. What's wrong, Maya? It's him, in the flesh. Um, is that guy really him? What do you mean, that guy? Of course it's him. Will Powers, our client. That's him. Um, maybe I shouldn't be saying this. But he definitely did it. Murder. At least once. Maybe twice. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you saying? Um, y yes? Something wrong? N no, no. This is getting off to a great start. I know, I know. You're disappointed, aren't you? D disappointed? Oh, no, no. No, it's okay. This is the real me. When I got the part of the Steel Samurai with that mask, I decided I would never show my face in public until the job was over. It's the kids, you know. I didn't want to wreck their dreams. Oh. I guess it didn't matter. So much for dreams. I wonder what they think of the Steel Samurai now. <laughs> Nick! What? He's a good guy. I mean, he's good. Yeah. He didn't do it. What happened? Maybe you could start by telling us what happened. E yes of course. It seems like it was only yesterday. Actually, it was only yesterday. The cast had come down to Global Studios for a run through. We went through a few action sequences at 10 o'clock that morning. There was a rehearsal scheduled for 5 o'clock in the afternoon. But when 5 o'clock came around, and the staff gathered at the studio, the evil magistrate was found lying in a crumpled heap near the set. They took off his mask and discovered that it was Jack Hammer, dead. He had, ex he had been expertly skewed with the samurai spear. The samurai spear? Yes, it's a long spear that I, that the steel samurai uses as a weapon. Maybe you could explain to me just what the steel samurai is. Nick, how could you say such a thing? I I'm sorry, sir. I apologize for my part. He's new to this and a bit out of touch with the world. Hey, who's new to this? No, it's alright, really. Steel Samurai is the lead character in a popular kid's show. He walks the streets of Neo-Old Tokyo, fighting battle after battle against the evil magistrate and his minions. Of course, he never really defeats the evil magistrate. Although, I guess he did defeat him this time. <laughs> I'm not gonna do the crying thing. You old Tokyo, who comes up with these names? Now, where were you on the day of the murder? Well, that morning I came to... I think it, it's supposed to say came to the studios? At 9 o'clock, we worked through some action sequences until noon. Rehearsal was to begin at 5 o'clock, but I was a little tired. So after lunch, I took a nap in my dressing room. When I woke up, it was fi after 5 o'clock. I was late for the rehearsal. I hurried to the studio and found everyone looking shocked. They arrested me on the spot and brought me here. So you were sleeping the entire afternoon of the murder? Some action hero. What will the kids think? <laughs> I think I should probably check out the scene of the murder. Right. Global Studios. I'll draw you a map. Wow, Nick, let's go! I'm willing to bet 10 bucks she asks for autographs. Oh god, I know what character I have to voice, and I don't know if I want to voice them. I can't do an old lady voice. Wow, so this is where they make the Steel Samurai show. Awesome, aren't you excited? Hey, you there! You want in, you gotta go through me! Uh, oh, sorry. We're, we're, um, lawyers. Oh yeah, well that's great. I'm security. It's my job to make sure you gawkers like you stay out. Ugh. Gawkers. Gawkers. Sightseers. Tourists. I know the type. You heard about the incident and came to snoop around. Um... 
Nick? Will I grow up to be like her? Please say no. I don't know, it's possible. Hey! Who's someone you're being spoken to? Youths today! So yeah, I can't do an old lady voice, so that's the best you're gonna get. So, what do you do here at the studios? At Global Studios, we make children's dreams come true. In fact, in my younger days... No, you were a star? Only a little twinkle between the stars here, I'm afraid, dearie. Oh, wow. This place has really gone downhill, you know. But ten years ago, now that was a studio of dreams. Hammer was a big star back then, too, he was. Hammer? The victim, dummy. The evil magistrate. He's been reduced to playing villain roles now. Not exactly the best material to work with. Can you tell me about Mr. Will Powers? He's not a bad kid, but don't be fooled by his mask. You wouldn't want him on the silver screen without it, believe me. Well, old ladies watching would lose their lunch. That's probably why he thought the Steel Samurai was his big chance. No one thought he was capable of doing what he did to bar Jack Hammer. We don't know for certain that Will Powers is guilty. Powers? Of course he's guilty. How do I know? I know everything. That's my job. What kind of person was Jack Hammer? What kind of person? Oh, if only you knew. Jack Hammer would live on in many arts as the ultimate action hero. It was simply dashing in the Dynamite Samurai series. Should I have heard about that? <laughs> but there was an accident during filming five years ago. He got an unlucky break after that. Reduced to playing the villain role on a children's program. What's more, I heard they were paying him peanuts. It's enough to make you cry. Why are you so certain Mr. Powers is the killer? I was standing right here yesterday, I was. I was here from 1 o'clock in the afternoon to 5 o'clock when they found the body. Now, the studio where the murder took place was, th was to the left here. So if you want to go to the studio, you have to pass by me. Only one person went by here between 1 o'clock and 2.30 when the murder took place. And that person was Mr. Powers? Yes, I saw him. Mr. Powers says he was sleeping in his dressing room. Oh, I'm sure he would say that. He's no fool. But he was the only one that walked by. He's the killer. You can bet your biscuits on it. Isn't it about time for you to be heading home? There's nothing to see here. Move along. Um, actually, we're here at Mr. Power's request. I thought you were suspicious looking. Show me a letter of request. And maybe I'll just let you in. This lady here thinks she owns the place, obviously. Gotta go back to the detention center and talk to Mr. Powers. Hello, how's the studio? They all think I did it, don't they? N no, not at all. Isn't that right, Nick? Right, not at all. At worst, you're a suspect. <laughs> so, your alibi. Mr. Powers, you aren't hiding anything from me, are you? What? No, I'd, I'd never do that. Just now you said that you were sleeping in your dressing room after lunch. Yes, like a baby. But the security lady said she saw you that day. She says she saw you heading toward the scene of the crime. What? That's not possible. I... I really don't know what to say. I was sleeping, I promise. Mr. Powers, if you want me to help you, you have to tell me the truth. I'm new to this lawyer business and I need every advantage I could get. Uh, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I swear to you, on my mom's grave, I was sleeping. Maybe the security lady only thought she saw me? What did she see? It doesn't seem to be lying. Speaking of the security lady... About the security guard at the main gate to the studio. Oh, the security lady? She's terrible. She called me suspicious looking. Yes, actually, she said the same thing to me before. Take off that mask, I believe her words were. She sucks up to all the big wigs at the studio. But let her see you stumble once, and she'll never let up on you. Eh, she's got some real nerve. You think you could write up a letter formally requesting my representation? Uh, of course. 
I just hope this will get me past the security lady. There's not much to say in these parts because this is sort of just going back and forth and talking to people. Powers letter. Ma'am, I have a look at this. It's a letter of request from Mr. Powers. Hmm? Yes, yes, I recognize the bold childish scrawl. Gave Powers request to the security lady. To think you would entrust his fate to youths of such an unreliable appearance. Really? Really. Anyway, you may pass, but only left from here, towards the studios. No going to the right, that's the employee area. No one allowed inside. No one allowed inside, pal. Or my instructions. The good detective told me himself. Hey, hey Nick. Huh? There were maps in the security guard station. Hey, not bad. Those are 50 cents a piece, thank you. Well, time to go, Nick. Fifty cents! So yeah, we know who's about to come up now, and it's not going to be any easier on my voice. October 16th, Studio One entrance. Hey! Aren't you that Moira from the other day? Ah! It's that confused detective! Hey, pal, you know Prosecutor Edgeworth is all upset, and it's your fault. I saw him sipping tea and staring gloomily out the window. Um, so? Hey, if he's depressed, it's all your fault for doing sloppy detective work. Um, detective? I think you heard his feelings. Oh, no, I'm... I'm sorry. Well, I think his feelings are easily hurt. You're right, pal. It's all my fault. I can blame other people all I want, but I know the truth in my heart. Hey, hey, don't take it so hard. There's always the next case. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Hey, what exactly are you two doing here? Um, well, we're on this case too, pal. Huh? Hey, you can't just go around saying pal like that. That's my endearing character trait. I'd say he's a character, all right. So yeah, Detective Gumshoe's here. Investigation. So, how is your investigation going, Detective? Well, it's... Hey, I can't tell you that, pal. Nick, maybe you need to be a little more indirect with your questions. Right, so, Detective, mind if I take a look at what you've got? What I got? The autopsy report. The latest version, if you please. Hmm, right, right. Sorry about what happened last time, pal. Reason for arrest. Why was Mr. Powers arrested? Simple, pal! The murderer took the murder took place right over there in Studio One. Now the victim entered Studio One at approximately 1 o'clock PM. Right at that time there's no other one other than the victim in the studio. According to the autopsy report, the time of death was 2.30 p.m. Only one person went to the studio between 1 o'clock and 2.30. And that person was none other than Will Powers. No one else, pal. If you think I'm lying, ask the security lady at the main gate. Nick, if that's true, anyone would think that Powers did it with that kind of evidence. Thanks for cheering me up, Maya. About the security lady. Oh, sw that sweet old lady. What a drama. Huh? Uh, are we talking about the same person? When I showed her my badge, she gave me donut and a, a donut that's coffee. Remember what Powers said. She's a sucker for authority. She even gave me a piece of valuable evidence. What? Decisive evidence. What kind of evidence? Well, that, uh, photo. Photo of the steel samurai heading toward the scene of the crime. What? Who took that? See the camera up on the gate, pal? The gate? You mean the one with the welcome sign? Yeah, whenever someone walks by, that camera automatically snaps a photo of them. Oh no! Nick, he has evidence. We're finished. Funny. For someone with hard proof, he doesn't look too happy. What's wrong, pal? You seem down. Don't look so happy when you say that. Oh ho 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 ho! Um, 
you would like to ask the employees here some questions. Sure thing, pal. Go wherever you like. Of course, you're not going to find any clues I haven't already found. Ha ha ha! I'm glad someone around here seems to be enjoying themselves. Nick, let's go. We've got a free pass to the place. Now's our chance to check things out. Detective, see this? This is my attorney's badge. Uh-huh. Don't you think it's a little sad when you have to explain what your badge means, pal? Real men show their PD badge, and that's that. I'll admit the design of my badge leaves a lot to be desired. Maybe it should be a big L for lawyer. I'm not so sure about that. Hey, there's a camera here. That's the security camera. It takes photos of people going to the studio. All you have to do is look at the data and you can see who went there. There's a number plate on the camera. ST1307. That must be the camera ID number. Nick, look! That security lady's in the guard station stuffing her face with donuts. I guess all cops like their donuts. Yeah, and they're soft enough she doesn't need teeth to chew them. Hey, you! Well, are you satisfied? Power are you satisfied Powers is guilty yet? Erk. She had to make my life harder by giving that photo to Detective Gumshoe. Why didn't you tell us about the security photo, ma'am? Hmm? Oh, that? I just thought it would be more thrilling to take talk with the detective himself. I'm going with a bit of a high-pitched and gravelly voice. And so now when I think of that, I'm going to start thinking of Toad like, Oh, hello! These things are important, you know! Oh god, the Audacity file is out of control now. Oh, just to the left over here is the game with the camera, with the camera that took the photo! <coughs> I'm never doing that again. It's my job. Uh, it's my job to check the photos every day, you see? Ah, uh, automatic camera. About the security camera. Oh yes, the camera. It's automatic! Now I'm just gonna, I, I'm trying to go back to the voice I did before, but it's automatic. You can tell when someone walks through that gate, you see? Then it snaps a photo. Apparently, it records the time when it takes a picture, too. But I don't bother myself with those details. I just view all the photos on the computer over in the s security guard station. I can't do the voice again, so I'll just do to like a weird toad voice. I check them every day before going home, I do. Now I kind of sound like Marge Simpson. Oh, me. Uh, reason for suspicion. This guard station is in a central position. I think I got it. No matter where you go here, you pass by my station first. Now, poor Hammer, he went to the studio just before one. The murder happened right around 2.30, you see. The only one I seen go through here between 1 and 2.30 was Powers himself. And the security camera got a good look of him, too. If he's not the one that did it, I don't know who is. Maybe it was you? Yeah! <laughs> Good one, Sonny! He thinks I was joking. And finally, Mr. Hammer. Was the victim, Mr. Hammer, a popular actor? Oh, he was the biggest star in the studio. Was? Past tense? Yeah, because he's dead. <laughs> oh, yes, he was great as the bearded samurai. That too, yes. He's shown the brightest back in the day. Making a star like him play the evil magistrate? It's a disgrace, I tell you. Hammer took it pretty hard, and who can blame him? October 16th, Global Studios Employee Area. Nick! This is where they do all the behind-the-scenes stuff. Hey, look, there's Powers' dressing room. No one's here this soon after the murder, I guess. Let's take a look around. The remains of yesterday's lunch are scattered around. Everyone was probably too shocked to clean up. There's a T-bone steak on one of the plates, or T-bone on the, one of the plates minus the steak. Mmm, T-bone steak. That would have hit the spot. You just had a burger. Yeah, but I have a second stomach just for steaks. What? The dressing room. October 16th, Global Studios dressing room. Powers his dressing room, so this is where he was sleeping. Or at least, this is where he claims he was sleeping. 
No one actually saw him take a nap here, did they? Right, and there's a picture of him near the crime scene. I hope he's telling the truth, for his sake. There's a bunch of snacks on the table. They must have given these to the employees. Some tea and cookies. Nick, I'm hungry. You just had a burger. Yeah, but I have a separate stomach for sweets. How many stomachs does this girl have? We got this bag over here. Hmm? This must be Powers' bag. Hey, don't open that. Look! An employee card key. That must be Powers'. It says Studio One. Let's take it, Nick. Borrow. You mean borrow. Card key added to the court record. So, a bit of a weird thing is you have to actually examine the door first before you can go inside. This is the studio where they found Jack Hammer's body. Let's go in and check it out, Nick. I wonder if this card key we borrowed from the dressing room with Studio One on it will open Studio One. It opened. <laughs> All right, we're in. She's way too happy for someone visiting a crime scene. October 16th, Studio One. What is it? You're real quiet all of a sudden. Doesn't it give you the shivers, Nick? That white tape, it's so... so real! Well, the evil magistrate did die here, and the steel samurai killed him. The murder weapon was the samurai spear. Sounds pretty real to me. <laughs> Look, a ladder! That's a step ladder. So, what's the difference? You need to stop judging things based on narrow-minded cultural assumptions, Nick. R right sorry. This girl is out there. Wow, look at that camera. That must cost a ton. Yeah, so don't touch it. Whoa, it's heavier than I thought. Hey you, no touching that. Ah, um, sorry, my partner here is kind of, you know. You know? I know, I don't know. Um, who are you? Who me? I'm an assistant here. I'll just give her a basic lisp. I help with props and stuff. Moving them around, ordering new ones, etc. We're lawyers representing Mr. Will Powers. Oh, you're WP's people. WP? WP? Oh, Will Powers. WP, I get it. I don't envy you guys one bit. But do what you can for WP, okay? He'd never hurt a fly. He has to be innocent. Don't worry, leave it to us. The day of the crime. Could you tell me anything about the day of the murder? Yeah, I was in Studio One. I was in the studio the whole day. I was the only fifth then on staff that day, you see. Only one assistant? Yes, well, the studios aren't doing so well right now. And yesterday was the one more. was the only rehearsal for one of our action sequences. I see. Neat. In the morning, we went through the action sequences in the employee area. WP and Whammer were there, along with everyone else. The, em the employee area? That's where Powers' dressing room is, right? Yeah, that's the place. I'm kind of turning into that old lady from Monsters, Inc. I forget what her name is. It's like Roz or something like that. After evening, lunch there, Mr. Hammer went to the studio on. And then he found WP going to his dressing room. But I didn't see either of them after that. And then Will Powers. Did you know that Mr. Powers was sleeping in his room? No, I wouldn't go in there unless I had to murder the message for him. I mean, it's his private. What kind of a girl do you think I am? What kind? No, I'm sure you're a fine girl. I'm sorry. So much for getting confirmation of Powers' alibi. What do we do, Nick? We haven't found anything. If WP was the only one who came to the studio, then he has to be the killer. They even have a photograph. Hmm. Um, sorry, but I, I know you're busy. Not really. Actually, there's something bothering me. Aha! That's what I'm talking about. A clue! A lead! Well, I don't know about that. But that day, this afternoon, I sent someone who was here. He sensed? Yeah, I'm Spider-Man. <laughs> several times. 
some other studio employees, maybe? No, I don't think so. The only thing we have scheduled was an action scene run through. I was the only assistant here that day. I have a feeling it was someone from outside. R really? But wait, if someone had come in here, wouldn't that security lady have noticed them? Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, I don't have any better information than that. No, thanks, that helps us a lot. Anything helps. Let's go put that security lady on the spot. October 16th, Global Studios, Main Gate. Oi, you're still here? Really? You look as though you've seen a ghost. Assistance Claim. What? I saw that suspicious look on your face. I wanted to ask you again about yesterday. You came here at 1 o'clock p.m., correct? The estimated time of De Hammer's death was 2.30. Are you sure that Powers was the only one to go through here between those times? Sure as can be. But we have a witness who thinks there was someone from outside here that day. What? Are you absolutely sure you were here watching the whole time? Ma'am? Who was it? Who told you that? Who dares question me? Eek. Alright, you better tell me quick, you spiky-haired cretin. Someone's been complaining about the work I do, eh? Uh, um, we were just talking to the assistant in Studio One. Arr, she's not even a full-time employee. She left. Well, Nick, this is our chance to do what we can without her looking over our shoulders. Let's go ahead and examine this thing right here. The computer that runs the studio security cameras. Nick, maybe we can see that photo of Powers with this computer. Yeah, maybe. Should I try the computer? Let's go ahead and try it. Might as well. Okay, let's give it a try. You know how to work these things, Nick? Looks like it just have to enter a few numbers. Let's see, first I need the date of the murder. Looks like the camera turned on at 1 o'clock p.m. that day. 1 o'clock. That was when the security lady arrived at the guard station. Please enter a number of the security camera. So if you remember last time we checked the camera, I think it was last time or the episode before that, we checked out the camera and it gave us the number ST1307. There, entered. Hey, it printed out the data for that day. Let's see what we got. Huh? How is this a picture of Will Powers? Oh, he's the one who always wears that suit. I guess that's why the security lady thought it was him. I don't imagine that a detective was very happy with his photo as evidence. Hmm? Something's printed on the back. Huh? October 15th, 2 o'clock p.m. Photo number 2. What does that mean? Maybe there's more photo data from the other day. Nope, that's the only one in the computer. Hey, hey, Nick, can we use this photo as evidence for the trial? Yeah. We'll put that security lady in, in her place with this. Right, we'll put her in her place. Hey, that's what I said. Anyway, let's show her this photo and see what she says. Wait, let's not. Why not? It's never a good idea to reveal your hand to the enemy too soon. Nick, you're craftier than I gave you credit for. Why, you could be the next evil magistrate. Hey, why do I have to be the villain? Relax, it was just a joke. So, are we done for today? I think this photo is what we need for the trial. Still, it'd be better if we had some idea of who the real killer was. Maybe it really is that security lady? October 18th, 10 o'clock a.m. District Court Courtroom Number 4. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Will Powers. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. The prosecution shall show the court that at 2.30 p.m. on October 15th, 
The defendant, Mr. Will Powers, killed fellow actor Jack Hammer at Studio One of Global Studios. It is impossible for anyone else to have committed this heinous crime. The evidence presented during the trial will all point to this fact. Hmm, I see. Very well, I would like to move on to your testimony. Mr. Redworth, the prosecution may call its first witness. First, I would like to call a familiar face, Detective Gumshoe, to the stand. Detective, if you would briefly describe this case to the court. Yes, sir. I'll explain with the guide map here. To understand this case, it's important to grasp the layout of the studio, see? This here is the employee area. The actors did a run-through of their action scenes during the morning here. This is the main gate to the studios. The security lady that works at the studios was here at 1 o'clock p.m. on that day. Past the security station, there is a gate, see? Past that are the studios. And here it is, Studio One. This is the scene of the Moida, where the body was found. Now, on the day of the Moida, October 15th, there were only three people here. The victim, Jack Hammer, the defendant, Will Bowers, and a young woman, the production assistant. All the production staff were in the employee area until noon. Then, after lunch, the victim, Jack Hammer, went to Studio One. Right after that, at 1 o'clock p.m., the studio lady got to the SCART station. Now jump ahead to later that day, 5 o'clock p.m., the production staff came to Studio One to perform a rehearsal. Needless to say, the rehearsal was canceled. The time of death was 2.30 p.m. The samurai spear found it lodged in the victim's chest was the murder weapon. That's the case in brief. Anyone like to hear it again? Hmm, should I listen to the whole thing again? I don't need to listen to it again, If you, and if you want to listen to it again, you could just back up the video. Uh, skip it. I think I could probably remember that. Though the murder weapon was a spear. How medieval. Samurai Spear added to the court record. Your Honor, this case is quite simple if you ask one question. That question is, what did the security lady at the guard station see? Understood. Let's call the security officer to the stand, so we don't even get to cross-examine Gumshoe this time. Will the witness declare her name? Hmm? My, aren't you a handsome fellow? I'm afraid I'm a bit flustered. Y your name, please. Oh, dearie, no need for you to be so embarrassed. Just call me Grandma. Your name, please. James Edgeworth has a bit of trouble getting his witnesses to say their names. I remember there was one video on YouTube which was like Edgeworth struggles to get witnesses to say their names for X amount of minutes. It was great. Uh, don't watch that video if you don't want to be spoiled on stuff though. Wendy, old bag, dearie. <laughs> Objection. I object to the witness's talk talkativeness. Objection sustained. The witness will refrain from rambling on the stand. I was just getting to the good part, dearie. Perhaps we could get to the testimony. Now, the witness was stationed at the main gate on the day of the murder, correct? Yes, see, I was. I don't even know if yes, see is a thing. Like, is that a phrase? And to get to the scene of the murder, someone would have to pass by you. You know your stuff, dearie. You may begin your testimony. She sure is one hell of an old bag. Witnesses account. On the day of the murder, I arrived at the guard station at 1 o'clock p.m. Poor old Hammer and the rest have been doing a run through there since morning. I will. I had some errands to run that morning. Anyway, it was 1 o'clock when I got to the guard station. I was at the main gate from then until 5. Now the murder happened at 2.30 p.m., right? Interesting to me, because a certain man walked by the walked by me at 2 p.m. It was Powers. It was that man right there, and he was heading towards the studio. I still don't got that voice down. You saw the defendant, then. Hmm. Very well. Let's begin the cross-examination. Mr. Wright? 
Yes, Your Honor. This is where you go ahead and present the power. You present powers as photo. Let me get this straight, old bag. Or, Miss Old Bag. You've been saying since yesterday that you saw Mr. Powers, correct? But you talk about this, the man in this photo, aren't you? Just a moment, Mr. Wright. Let me see that photo. What is this exactly? None other than the Steel Samurai Defender of Neo Old Tokyo. Miss Old Bag, is this the Mr. Powers that you saw? Of course! Didn't your mama teach you any sense, Sonny? Anyone can plainly see that's Powers, right? Uh, um, yeah. Um, well, I wonder. True, Mr. Powers does play the role of the Steel Samurai. But that doesn't mean Mr. Powers is the Steel Samurai. I, I know that. I wasn't born yesterday. No one in this court is accusing you of that, Miss... Uh, witness. He's having trouble calling your old bag, apparently. However, do you not have proof that the person in this photo is Mr. Will Powers, do you? Umph, nosy old man. Of course I have proof. What? Huh? Even Edgeworth is surprised? The prosecution would like to ask the old... The witness. Please make n known all the information in your possession ahead of time. How was I to know everyone would be so nosy? You should be ashamed, all of you. Anyway, I showed that photo to the young detective. He told me, D This isn't any good as evidence, Pearl. He didn't even give it a second look. Wow, old windbag has left even Edgeworth speechless. She's good. Let's hear about your proof then. Let's go ahead and get into her second testimony, the man in the photo. I never say anything I don't mean, mind you. That morning during the run-through of the action scene, I saw Powers trip and fall. He broke one of the props. It was a big mess. Apparently, he sprained his ankle pretty bad. Now, look at that picture. You can see he's dragging his legs. See? Clear as day. That's how I knew it was Powers. Happy? Hmm. So, he had sprained his ankle? Very well. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. She's got to be hiding something. I'll press her until she squeals. You broke one of the props. It was a big mess. He broke a prop? Sure did. His own samurai spear. Samurai spear? The murder weapon? Luckily, I was there with my duct tape to fix it. It strikes me as a significant detail. I better write this down in the court record. Samurai Spear updated in the court record. Apparently, he sprained his ankle pretty bad. Was Mr. Powers' ankle badly sprained? Not so bad that he couldn't walk around. He went to his dressing room to rest up after lunch. Thus the nap. Anyway, I saw him dragging his foot when he walked. Dragging his foot. Okay. I think we've heard enough. Haven't we, Your Honor? Well, there is one thing that bothers me. Which is? Where was the Steel Samurai costume now? Um, hmm. Actually, well, we couldn't find it. We're looking, though. Hmm. Anyway, that's not important. The, the witness did see the Steel Samurai, yes? And it is clear that the person in the Steel Samurai suit was Mr. Will Powers. Hmm. I suppose that's right. Are you sure you're sure, Your Honor? Hold it right there! We keep talking possibilities, but we have to agree that this photo shows the Steel Samurai. Nowhere in this photo can we see Mr. Will Powers. Hmm. The defense has a point. I also wonder if someone else not caught on camera could have killed Mr. Hammer. We have to consider that possibility also. Then allow me to remove that doubt from your mind, Your Honor. With, will the witness continue her testimony, please? No need to ask twice. Witness's account continued. The time of Warhammer's death was 2.30pm, true? The only person I saw go to the studios before then was Will Powers. No one else went there. If they had, I would have seen them. 
Hmm. So, if no one else went to the studio, then it would have to be the Steel Samurai who did it. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. So, the solution to this one is we want to go over to... If they had, I would have seen them. And that would make sense other than the fact that if we look at this one, the over by the timestamp it says photo 2, meaning that someone passed by before uh, quote unquote powers did. Hold on! Look at this photograph one more time. This photo was taken by the camera at the gate for the studios, correct? Yes sirree, sonny! So whenever anyone passes by here it automatically takes a picture. And here I thought you didn't know your head from a hole in the ground. Right. Anyway, it's also true that the computer in the guard station records all security camera data. Ooh, you know, if you wanted to work at the studio, we might have an opening. That very computer printed out this photo. Note that on the back of the photo are printed the words October 15th, 2 o'clock p.m., photo number 2. Even I know that means it was taken at 2 p.m. on October the 15th. Really, Sonny. Actually, I knew that too. The issue here is the bit at the end where it says photo number 2. Photo number two? The computer only held data for one photo on that day. Don't you think that's odd? Shouldn't this photo be photo number one if it really was the only photo? Order, order. Please tell the court what you mean by this, Mr. Wright. Actually, that's what I want to ask the witness. The evidence shows that not one, but two people went to the studio that day. Yet there's only data for one of the photos. Who could have erased the data for the other photo? Only someone with access. The security lady herself. Eh? You watch your mouth, whippersnapper. The only person I saw that day was Will Powers. But the camera on the gate fired twice. That means two people went by. Um, well, yes. That's what it would seem to mean. Can the witness explain this to the court? Um, ahem. <clears throat> I don't understand these newfangled computer things. Uh, um, edgy boy, help! Huh? B believe me, I want to, but I don't know what this means either. Oomph! Some help you are! You're a whippersnapper too. Whippersnapper? Something the matter, Miss Old Bag? Ah, that's right! I, I just remembered something. Let me guess. Someone else passed by the gate. Someone other than the Steel Samurai. Uh, well, yes, I suppose you could put it that way. <sighs> I see. Your testimony, please. The other person. Every day after I finish my guard duties, I have one other important job to do. I go through the photos recorded on the security computer and check them. I throw out any photos that aren't suspicious looking, you see. Come to think of it now, I remember throwing out one photo that day. Miss Oldbag, this is the first I've heard of this. Well, of course, honey. I've only just remembered it. Right. Mr. Wright, please begin the cross-examination. Well, I'd say this was a turn for the unexpected, but I kind of expected this. Yeah, everyone's just done with Miss Oldbag at this point. Come to think of it, now I remember throwing out one photo that day. Well, who in the heck was in that photo you erased? Humph! A fanboy! Fanboy? Steel Samurai fanboys. Real freaks, if you ask me. They get information about the rehearsals from gosh knows where. They're always hanging about. One was there that day. Wait a second. Didn't you just say no one else could get in? I locked the main gate so no one could get in. Those were your words. Well, if you must know, there's a drain that goes into the employee area. The grate has been loose for a while. It leads outside, and well, that's where they come in. They come in through the drain? I told you they were freaks. Oh, and... And? They're kids. Children. Whippersnappers. K kids So on the photo that you erased... It was a boy, probably second or third grade. 
What? Order, order. Let me get this straight. You saw two people pass by on the gate by the gate on their way to the studios that day. One was the steel samurai dragging his leg. The other was a boy who looked to be about second or third grade. Oh yes, well we see his type of there every day. Can't stop him. Can't catch him. A boy in second or third grade? Hmm. I assume it would be hard, if not impossible, for a young boy to wield the samurai spear. Impossible, I think. It's quite heavy. Right, as I said, I didn't pay much mind. That's why I erased the data. Um, Nick, what's going on? I mean, the boy was there. That makes him a suspect. Yeah, and they're all—they're already trying to unsuspect him. I'd like to take a five-minute recess. I want the defense and the prosecution to consider this new information. And no forgetting vital information this time. October 18th, 11.08 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Mr. W.P.? Yes. Tell me straight, were you really in your dressing room? Didn't go to the studio? I didn't go to the studio. I was sleeping, honest. So who was the Steel Samurai in that security photo? Uh, how should I know? The Steel Samurai costume was off in the corner of the dressing room. Anyone could have walked in and taken it, really. What? You should take better care of that stuff. I couldn't imagine anyone would want to steal a Steel Samurai costume. So, where does this leave me? Doesn't look good. You're the only likely suspect right now. Nick, what are we gonna do? First, we play for more time. We'll start targeting someone else that could could have conceivably done this. Right. And it'll take them so long to shoot us down that we can get another day. Right. But if we pick the wrong person, we might lose on the spot. You don't sound very optimistic. I'm not optimistic, optimistic at all, actually. Hey, Nick. It's time. Okay. Let's go. <sighs> what does that mean? Please don't sigh like that. court will now reconvene for the trial of Mr. Will Powers. Mr. Edgeworth, will you present the prosecution's thoughts on this matter? The prosecution's thoughts are simple. Nothing has changed. The other person who went to the studios was a boy of roughly 10 years of age. The photo we do have may not be hard evidence, but there is still no one else that could have committed this crime. I call for a verdict of guilty for the defendant, Mr. Will Powers. Hmm. Very well. Mr. Wright, your thoughts? The defense disagrees with the prosecution's claim. There is another person who could have committed this crime. Order. Interesting. Let us hear who you have in mind. However, be aware that this court does not look kindly on accusing the innocent. If you accuse someone who is obviously innocent, you will be penalized. Right. Great. As if the stakes weren't high enough. So, who is this person, other than Mr. Powers, that could have committed this murder? Well, obviously it can't be the grade school boy or the assistant girl, so the only person we have left to accuse is... It was the security lady, Wendy Oldbag. Who? The Steel Samurai is dragging his leg in this picture. That means whoever was in the suit knew about the morning's injury. Maybe because they had been watching the action scene run through. There was only one person other than Powers and Hammer who knew about the injury. The security lady, Wendy Oldbag. What? Whippersnapper! Order, order. Is this true, Oldbag? Oldbag? That's Miss Oldbag to you. Miss Oldbag was standing guard alone at the main gate. She was well, by herself. In other words, she has no alibi. She could have briefly left her post to steal the Steel Samurai costume then slipped into Studio One, the scene of the murder. Why would you go through the trouble of wearing the Steel Samurai costume? Simple, Your Honor. She knew the camera at the gate would, would take her picture. If she was in the costume, she could point the finger at Mr. Powers. I see. Excellent deductive reasoning, Mr. Wright. Oh yeah, right here, Sherlock Holmes number two, baby.
That's odd. Isn't this the part where Edgeworth pounces? Doesn't you usually jump in with an objection or some new damning evidence? Well, Mr. Edgeworth, does the prosecution have an opinion on this matter? The prosecution has no meaningful objections at this time. What? What's that supposed to mean? Oh, so y'all think I did it? Is that it? Edgy boy, don't just sit there. Do something. What's my move? Maybe now's my chance to take this the whole way? Rule number one of Ace Attorney. Always press further. Also, I like this give granny a break. <laughs> the very same reasoning that makes Mr. Powers a suspect in this case cannot, can be used to cast doubt on Miss Old Bag's actions on that day. But, but, but why would I do something so horrible to poor Hammer? You forget that Mr. Powers lacks a clear motive, too. Hmm, indeed. That did it. Now Windbag is one of the suspects. No hard feelings, I hope. Wait just a minute. What about the other person who went to the studio? The boy! The one whose photo I erased. He is only a grade schooler, though, as you said. Second or third grade, was it? Yeah, that doesn't matter. When I was that age, I could pin my old man at ten second stops. Hmm. Your thoughts, Mr. Wright? That boy is not the killer. What? How can you be so sure? Oh, is it be nice to your kids and meet your elders day? Whippersnapper! I have proof. P proof Indeed. And let's see this proof, Mr. Wright. You have proof that shows that the boy could not have committed this murder? Your Honor, the murder weapon was the samurai spear. That very spear is shown here in this photo. How could the boy have taken the spear? It's impossible. I see. Well, would the witness care to comment on this? Mm -hmm. The windbag. Speechless. This has got to be a first. Very well. This court will suspend proceedings on the current trial for this day. Mr. Redworth, please find out more about your witness, Miss Windy. What was her aim? Something old bag, Your Honor. And the prosecution will look further into this old bag before we continue. That is all. The court is adjourned. Oh, wait a second! I'm not going to just sit here while you run up, run off barking up the wrong tree! Me! I'm talking! Oh, great. Stop the presses. The windbag wants to talk. M Miss Oldbag, what's all this about? Have you omitted something from your testimony? Actually, if you must know, there's something I was told not to talk about. N not to talk about? By whom? Huh? You mean it wasn't Edgeworth who told him not to talk? Well, testify. My lips were sealed. Global Studios wanted me to keep quiet about something. There were some other people at the studios on the day of the murder. They said they had nothing to do with it, see? So they told me to just pretend they hadn't been on the studios that day. But if you're going to go accusing me, I'm not letting them get away scot-free. Miss Oldbag, this is crucial information. Why did you keep this from the court until now? Ain't you been listening? They told me to shut my trap, and I always do it when I'm told. No, this isn't a bad dream, Your Honor. Witness the power of the old bag. <laughs> Mr. Wright, your cross-examination. Oh, God, she sure is a handful. <laughs> There were some other people at the studios on that day of the murder. Who were these people? Well, the director and the producer, for starters. The director? We should have known something was fishy. How could they have done a run-through of their action scene without a director? Of course. Yes, well, I was surprised no one asked about it. So where were these people? The director was in the employee area all morning for the run-through. He joined the producer around lunchtime and they had a meeting after that. Where? Oh, in the Studio 2 trailer. Studio 2? There was a Studio 2? Well, if you look at the guide map, here it is. Go through the gate and all the way to the left. The path where the monkey's head was fallen over. Well, Mr. Wright, would you like to continue the cross-examination? I think I've already asked all my questions, but yeah, we'll go ahead and take a break here because 
the rest of the text doesn't really get us anywhere. Your Honor, we have learned that there were other others at the Global Studios on the day in question. The director and the producer and uh, some bigwigs were all present. Yet, as we stand here, they have not been questioned. I hold that it is impossible to declare a verdict on the defendant, Mr. Powers. Hmm. The court acknowledges the defense's point. The prosecution will gather more information about the witness, Miss Oldbag, and more information about these other people we have just been told of. Hmm. I understand, Your Honor. This ends the day's proceedings and the trial of Mr. Will Powers. That is all. The court is adjourned. October 18th, 104 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 3. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. I was right to ask you to defend me. Ah, really, it's nothing. Mm. Oh, or should I? We'll be, do we'll be going down to the studios to do some more investigation. We have to find out more about this director and the producer. They'll be turning up in the next trial as witnesses for certain. So now's my chance to get material for the cross-examination. So, Nick, have we figured out just who it was in that steel samurai costume? Could it really have been the, the old windbag? What do you think, Mr. Powers? Uh, I don't think it was her, really. Neither do I, Nick. Yeah, I know. I was just buying time back there. Someone had to be the bad guy for a bit to take the pressure off Mr. Powers. Poor old windbag. I kind of feel sorry for her. Well, she wasn't winning any points in there, with or without my accusation. Okay, let's get down to the studios. Right, we'll be back to visit you soon. Thanks. Thanks, guys. October 18th, Wright & Co. Law Offices. Whew, what a day. This is no time for relaxing, Nick. Say, you think WP's got a chance? I guess that really depends on the people we found out about in today's trial. The director and the producer? Yeah, them. Well, what are we doing here then? Let's get to the studios. October 18th, Detention Center Visitor's Room. Oh, Mr. Wright. Thank you for earlier. Not at all. We got lucky to tell the truth. You can say that again. Let's well, not. <laughs> so, WP, do you have any leads that might get us going in the right direction? Hmm. Sorry, but no. Be sure to tell us anything that comes to mind, no matter how small. We can't rely on getting lucky again tomorrow. Y y yes Anyways, the fanboy. Do, uh, fanboys sneak into the studios often? N not that I know of. That security lady is pretty strict with them. But in today's testimony, didn't she say that they were often hanging around? The kids really, really love the Steel Samurai. They sneak past when she's not looking, I guess. The director. Was the director present at the morning run-through? Yes, yes he was. He was directing how the Steel Samurai and the evil magistrate should move. Why didn't you tell us that before? Well, just the studio asked us to keep quiet. That has nothing to do with this. I hate to repeat myself, but Nick here is a newbie lawyer, fresh off the bar. When he loses, he's going to lose big. I... I see. <laughs> Whose side is she on? <laughs> you aren't hiding anything else from us, are you? No, I sure hope not. Have you... seen my attorney's badge? Excuse me. Thank you for showing me that. Whatever it is... I wish I could think of some way I could help you. S sorry. <laughs> so yeah, we've learned of some new people and October 18th, 2.16pm, Global Studios Main Gate. No one's here. Right, now that they have Miss Oldbag in custody, I guess they don't have everyone, anyone else to replace her. But, hey, in the guard station, look, she left her donuts. What? I wasn't going to eat them. October 18th, Global Studios Employee Area. Look, it's that assistant girl. Hey! Hi, WP's people, right? I heard about the trial. Great job, guys. Oh? Oh, don't mention it. 
And I turned and caught that security lady? Oh, oh, oh. Actually, he just called me. He told me to cover up that drain. You mean that one? Wow, what a mess. I, I know. I'm not so good with handiwork. Sure, my sister, right? Yeah, but you do work on the props and the backdrops, right? R right. Yes, lots of times they end up looking worse than they did before I fixed them. Oh, oh, well, I'm sure these things happen. Nothing to worry yourself about. You're right, I won't. Personally, I think she should worry at least a little bit more. Um, if you'll excuse me, I have to go to the garden station. I'm supposed to fill in for Miss Oldbag. Right, see you later then. Good luck with your investigation. And we're immediately going to destroy the drain cover. <laughs> But the fanboy they were talking about in the trial today, he came in through that drain? So it seems. Guess they covered it up in a hurry. Hey. Hey, Nick. If that drain's covered, the boy won't be able to get in. Uh, yeah, I think that was the idea. I feel kind of sorry for him, though, don't you? What, you want to rip the grid off? Really, Nick? We can? Whoa, too serious? Uh-oh. Rip it open. Well, I guess some things are just made to be broken. Yay, you know, Nick, you're pretty swell sometimes. Sometimes? hi -ya! There, that should make the kids happy. The things we do. Ow. Oh, hello. Oh, you look a little out of place. It's the clothes, isn't it? I thought my camo vest might do the trick. Kind of an alternative guard fashion thing. So the studios. So how are the studios doing? There's police wandering around everywhere. It's terrible. They won't even let me clean up. Don't want me to disturb in evidence. I haven't even cleaned up our lunch plates from the day of the murder. You mean those plates with the steak bones left over on them in the employee area? Yeah, can you believe it? Do kids sneak in here a lot? Well, I don't think there's that many of them, but I do see one in particular a bunch. It's always gawking at the scents or snapping pictures. You should see old windbag's eyes flash when she sees them. She has a bit of trouble catching them, though. I heard something at the trial today. They said that the director and the producer were here at the day of the murder. Oh, sorry. I am in a prop storage room, so I didn't see them. I guess they weren't here, though. And Junio had seemed pretty eager to keep us quiet. So they were trying to protect the director? More the producer, really. The producer's our real star here. She saved the studios from the brink of disaster and kept them running. I don't think we'd still be in business if it, business if it weren't for that producer. The producer, huh? What are you frick? Who are you, Google Lamau? <laughs> huh? We. Wait, you first. Who are you? you? Look pretty suspicious to me. Where, lamers? How can you do that? It was great salmonella. I mean, to leak shows. Steel Samurai? Mine are KFC. Read your film credits. Really? You're the Salmonella? I'm so sorry. I just. You you looked so. Sorry. No, no, quite alright, really. It's fine, Raffle. I'm gonna skip past this line of dialogue because I just do not want to read it. You could go ahead and read it for yourself. Yes, yes, it's coming to me. It's a pink princess. The sequel to the Steel Samurai. Pink princess. The warrior of the little old Tokyo. Raffle Lamau. Pink princess? Why does it gotta be little old Tokyo? Why can't it have a cool name like Neo Old Tokyo? Maya, we really need to talk about cool. So yeah, he's certainly... A guy. Did you notice anything unusual on the day of the murder? Oh, I know who you are. This security told you about us, eh? That's right. 
It was a pretty regular day. We had a run through for an action scene this morning. Then our meeting from lunchtime is a Studio 2 trailer. <laughs> I was so busy I didn't even get a chance to eat lunch. T bone steak, was it? Yeah, suck swords. I miss missing out on food. Nick, what does suck swords mean? No idea. Anyway, I was in a meeting from noon until after 4 o'clock, which produces and some big leaks from the network. Mr. Hammer's time of, est of death was estimated at 2.30 p.m. If he's telling us the truth, that, that meeting gives him an al alibi. The producer. About the producer who was at the meeting with you. Oh, you mean Gay Vasquez? She's a genius. Matt, Matt's killed all the way. Scary, though. She brought those studios back for the break of destruction. She's the one who made it possible for me to make the steel samurai. You had a meeting with her on the day of the murder, right? Yeah, we just got for news to four o'clock the whole time. The big wigs. Who exactly are- uh, I accidentally dipped Salmonella's voice for a second. Who exactly are those big wigs people keep mentioning? Oh, sponsors of the network and sponsors. Also a few production guys. They probably do a limousine and got here right around the moon. Make your attention, Schmutz. Were all of them with you the entire time? Yeah, unfortunately. They're all great hair geezers. Hmm. Sounds like they'd all be reliable witnesses. October 18th, Studio One entrance. Hey, Nick. It looks like Detective Gumshoe isn't here today. You're right. He's probably up to his neck in paperwork after the commotion at today's trial. So, Nick. Remember that Studio 2 we heard about at the trial today? It was down the path with a fallen tree, right? Yeah, I think that's what they said. Maybe the director and the rest of them are there today. Now's our chance, Nick. Let's check it out. And with a new area comes a whole bunch of stuff to examine. October 18th, Studio 2 entrance. This place is deserted. Eek! N Nick! W what was that noise? It sounded like you came from inside the trailer. Someone must be inside. Hello? No answer. Pretty suspicious if you ask me, Nick. Let's go in. I'm not sure we should be barging in. Huh. Blocked. What? Don't we have a key? No. But there's probably one in the guard station at the main gate. What are we waiting for? Let's borrow it. If they'll let us. Aha! You again! Eek! How rude acting like you've seen a ghost. You certainly got back to your post quickly. Oh, the police took me away, they did. They pulled out a spare steel samurai costume. Told me to put it on. Can you imagine? How could I, a sweet little old lady, wear a giant suit like that? Mr. Powers is pretty tall. As soon as they saw there was no way I could wear it, they let me go. I guess that would rule out her being the murderer. Anyway, know this, whippersnapper. This whole lady never forgets a slight or insult. And you won't get any information out of me. My lips are sealed. You sure are talking a lot for someone with sealed lips. Starting now. One, two, three. Mm. This lady's too much. She certainly is. The fanboy. Um, about that kid you said you saw. If I see him again, I'm taking him down. Nick, look at her eyes. She's serious. The director. About the director, the one who was here on the day of the murder. If I see him again, I'm taking him down. Nick, I think she's losing it. No, uh, I mean, if she's gonna take down Salmonella, I'll let her. Hey. Uh, hey, wait. I'll bet he came in right through that drain. Hey, um, kiddio. What's your name, sport? I'm not a kid, so don't talk to me like that. Huh? But you you are a kid. What a rude little brat. That's no way to talk to an adult. I don't see no adults here, hippie fashion chick. Hi hippie fashion? Nick, I think I'm being mocked. You gotta hand it to Maya. She's pretty sharp and pretty mad. I'm Cody. Cody Hackins. Call me Kitty again and I'll get you down where you stand, evil doer. So yeah, this case is, uh... Certainly a lot. Got a lot of, shall we say, characters. Steel Samurai. So you're a fan of the Steel Samurai? How dare you order that name, evil doer? What do you mean? We're on the Steel Samurai side. Ha! Ha <laughs> ha! You can't fool me. Okay, then what's the last line said by the innkeeper in episode 8? Ha! <laughs> Easy. Like some fries to that? Hmph. Not bad, kitty -o. Watch it! What are they doing? Geeking out, Phoenix. 
Say, you heard anything about the incident the other day? You were here, weren't you? Did you see anything? He... 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 He always... The Seal Samurai always wins. Always. Yeah, I saw him. I saw everything. What? But, but no, I'm telling you losers. What? Wait. Let me go. He's gone. Huh? Something fell off the table when he bumped into it on his way out. A bottle? Why was this sitting there, I wonder? Empty bottle slipped into pocket. Anyway, what was that kid saying? He saw everything? Huh? Where's that old windbag? Oliver to leave her post. Hey! Nick, that was her. Stop! Whippersnapper! Yeah, it sounds like she's chasing after that boy. Natch! Uh-oh, she tripped. Maya sure looks happy. And while she's gone, we're going to go ahead and yank a key for Studio 2, because that's also a place we wanted to go earlier, but we couldn't because it's locked. And Old Bag wouldn't give us a key. Now's our chance. Let's check out the guard station. Good idea. Oh, this is it, Nick. The trailer key. The key to that trailer in Studio 2. We'll be borrowing this, right, Nick? Trailer key slipped into your pocket. I wonder if the key we borrowed from the guard station will work. It opened. Great, let's go, Nick. He seems eager all of a sudden. Well, you first, Nick. Ah, not that eager. Into the trailer. October 18th, Studio 2 trailer. Eek! Someone's in here. Names. Uh, our names? Um, we're WB's lawyers and, um... I see... And who might you? D. Vasquez, the producer. D. Vasquez. She's quite beautiful. I was wondering if you could tell me about the day of the murder. Miss Vasquez? Script. Excuse me? Script. I'm looking for a script. A, a script? The Steel Samurai. Episode 13. I need it. Um, could we ask you a bit about the day of the murder? I need to read it. We're getting nowhere fast. Steel Samurai. Um, we'd really like to ask you about the Steel Samurai. Miss Vasquez? It's on TV. Every week. That's all I have to say about that. Next, she's telling us to go watch TV? The nerve of her. Hey, don't get mad at me. The director. About the director, Sal Manella, was it? What uh, exactly is his role here? Perhaps I didn't make myself clear. I'm looking for a script. I can't be bothered with anything else. Nick? Are all people in the entertainment business this weird? Starting to look like it. Nick, let's get out of here. Isn't there someplace else we have to check? Y yeah. Wait. Y yes? If you see Manila, give him this. Why do we have to do your errands? I I don't think I like her. <laughs> don't cry. She'll take it as a sign of weakness. All right, we'll give it to him if we see him. Hey, you. You want to look at this? Here, I got this from the producer. Huh? Bring the script for episode 13? Episode 13. We're going to put that one. I must have left it somewhere. Uh oh, my ass is pwned if I don't find it. Jake. Nick, it might be quicker to just look in all the places where he's likely to have been. I agree. 
We're back at the scene of the crime. Let's find what we need and get out of here quick, Nick. Hey, look, that's the chair the director sits in. I've always wanted to sit in one of these. The director. Maya, take a look around that chair for me, would you? Remember the script the director was talking about? Didn't he say he'd left it somewhere? Aha! Found it, Nick. Good work. Script placed in pocket. Here's episode 13 script. We found your script. Whew, thanks. Still, I don't know. That woman is to be feared when you bring something to her late. Say, um, do you think you can do a character for me? Thanks. Is that the... Is that producer really that scary? Well, she's certainly not normal. Here's your script, ma'am. Here, we found it. Your script. Ah. Uh, script handed to D. Vasquez. Um, uh, you're not going to talk to us? Quiet. I'm reading. Just you hold on, what's the big idea? Who do you think you are anyway? And don't you know even know who we are? Powers as lawyers? Um, right. Am I a suspect? No, it's just... Well, no, but... You wanted to know about the day of the murder? Y yes, anything you could tell us would be a big help. You know there was a meeting here at noon? Yes, with the director and the people from the network. Correct. Now listen closely. None of the people in this trailer that afternoon went to Studio One. It was impossible for us to leave. Impossible? Why? The path was blocked. The path? The blocked path. On the day of the murder, the path that leads here was blocked. You saw Mr. Monkey on the way here, correct? M Mr. Monkey? The monkey with the broken head. Oh, right, that. What an original name. Its head fell over in the wind on the day of the murder. They didn't start moving the head out of the way until after three o'clock. It was after four o'clock by the time the path was unblocked. Capiche? Everyone in this trailer was stuck here until the path was cleared. Stuck in this trailer. Stuck until after four. Hammer died at 2.30. Thus, none of us could have gone to Studio One. What? It's true. A crane came at just after 2.30 to move the head. We called some people in to clear the way. I'm sure they'd corroborate my story. But, but wait. What if the head fell over after 2.30? Then you could have gone to Studio One. 2.30. The time of death. Very well. Come. That's Mr. Monkey. When it wasn't broken, it announced the time. In ooks. One ook per hour. Ook, 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 ook. Always with the ook in. It is a monkey, after all. Check its head. The clock inside stopped when it broke. Nick, it stopped at 2.15. 2.15. That's right. This path was blocked from 2.15 after four. Therefore, we're innocent. Mr. Hammer died in Studio One at 2.30. See? Goodbye. Mr. Monkey data added to the court record. What do we do, Nick? There isn't anyone besides WB who could have killed Hammer. It's over. We're finished. It sure doesn't look good. 
Guess we should head back to the office and plan our strategy. October 18th, Wright & Co. Law Offices. Now what? Uh, we're fresh out of clues. Everyone's alibi is watertight. We don't even have any promising leads. Things are looking pretty grim. It's a little early for giving up, don't you think? Huh? You've got one lead. M Mia, it's you! What took you so long? Sorry, Phoenix. Maya has trouble calling me unless she's really in trouble. Right. Oh wait, I guess that means we're in trouble. I'd say so. What, what did you mean we have one lead? The boy, of course. Yeah, I saw him. I saw everything. What? But, but, no way am I telling you losers. I don't know. He didn't sound like he was going to help us at all. I'm sure you can find some way of bringing him over to your side. Either way, we should get back to the studios. That boy is our last hope, Phoenix. Thanks, now I'm more worried than I was before. I forgot Mia's voice, so... Yeah. Anyways, we have a few things to examine while Mia's here. The plant. My poor plant. My poor plant. It looks so... So sluggish. You've been watering it properly, Phoenix? Um, well, Maya has actually. I think maybe she's giving it too much. That child. Sorry, Charlie. The plant's name is... Charlie? October 18th, Global Studios Main Gate. What's wrong? Whipper snapper! She's been chasing that boy this whole time. When, when, when I catch him, I... Sounds like she hasn't had any luck catching him. I, I got a hostage now, whippersnapper. A hostage? Jesus. The fanboy. Um, what happened to the boy? If I see him again, I'll, I'll, and I'll puff, and I'll blow his house down. I am flat. <laughs> My, what a violent old lady. The director at all. Actually, I just met with the director just now. Eh, my heart, I don't feel so good. Is she okay? Before I'd go, I'd like to visit where poor Hammer died. Right, she was saying she wanted to visit the studio where he died. A hostage. What's this about a hostage? When that boy was running away, he dropped his, this and ran. He, he'll come back. For this one. It's kind of hard to understand her with all that huffing and puffing and blowing his house down. Phoenix, that hostage mightn't be what you need. Cody might talk to us if we gave him that. Good idea. Miss Holbeck, I- No! I'm catching that bread if it's the last thing I do. Phoenix, do you have anything you might trade with her? A trade, hmm? I wonder. Well, she did say that she wanted to visit the place where Hammer died, so maybe if we give her the key to... Wrong button. Maybe if we give her the key to Studio One, she'll hand over the hostage. Wrong key. Uh, card key. Hey, that's... That's a card... Studio One? Right, a card key. To Studio One. I, I could visit poor Hammer. I'd like to visit... He died. I was his fan. You don't have your own card, Missile Bag? Studio One isn't my turf. You let me borrow, borrow it then? If I give her the card key, then I won't be able to get into Studio One. Let's go ahead and hand it over to her. Why don't you let her borrow it, Phoenix? I guess it can't hurt. Here you go, Miss Old Bag. Card key lent to Miss Old Bag. Listen to me, Sonny. I don't like having depths to know whippersnappers. You, you take this and we're even. Deal. What's this? Steel Samurai trading card? That sneaky kid dropped it. I figured it's pretty important to him, though. Thank you. I may have a use for this. This must be the hostage she was talking about. Steel Samurai card added to the court record. Alright, I'm off. There she goes, hobbling to off toward the studio. October 18th, Global Studios employee area. There he is. Hey! 
Hey, you, wait a second. Phoenix, was that the boy? Yeah, his name's Cody Hackins. I think he ran into the dressing room. October 18th, Global Studios dressing room. You're sure to be in here somewhere. Found you. Damn it, he's getting away. Come back. There, he's back. How did you... Hey there, would you mind helping us out? Please? I, I, I'm Cody. Hello, Cody. I'm Mia. Mia Faye. Nice to meet you. Yo, and I'm Phoenix Wright. Who asked? Phoenix, you can take it from here. I'm not so sure I'm qualified. The Steel Samurai. The Steel Samurai is so cool. I think he's, um, the bomb. Ha! <laughs> what a labor like you know about the Steel Samurai. Hey, watch that attitude. Phoenix, you really shouldn't yell like that. It's only a kid. Yeah, don't yell at me like that. I'm only a kid. Uh, what happened? So do you know anything about what happened here? Could you tell me, please? I don't know nothing. Hmm. Looks, a, looks like a little persuasion is necessary. Maybe a bribe? Present. Steel Samurai card. Cody, this look familiar? Hey, my you are. You are. Huh? You are, you know, ultra rare. That card's really hard to get. Man, for a grown-up, you sure are dumb. I'll give you this if you help me. But that's my card. By offering me something I already own, you're in effect eschewing the very basis of our consumer society, namely the principle for a fair trade. And for a grown up, you sure are dumb. That's one of my favorite lines. What do they teach these kids in day? What do they teach these kids in school these days? Quantum physics? Man, whatever. I don't need that card. Huh? I got a double. Just keep it. It's yours. What? After I went through all that trouble? If you want to trade, find me a really rare card. Really rare? You mean there's something rarer than ultra rare? Ultra rare premium cards are way, way rarer than the plain ultra rare cards. Come on! Man, for a grown up, you sure are dumb. Premium rare. Why do I feel like we're talking about stakes? Oh, hi. Hello. What brings you here? Oh, well, I had to arrange some stuff. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, Girl with you. Doesn't she seem a little different? Like, is she even the same person as before? Uh, nope. She's always the, the, she's the same as always. Same as always. Okay. Whatever you say. The fanboy. Have you seen that boy since then? Nope. You missed it, though. The scary lady was chasing around the F after the boy so fast, I thought she'd collapse. Of course, he got away in the end. Boy, was she mad. Actually, we saw them. How was the old windbag doing? She was squeezing donuts through her clenched fist at, back at the guard station. Some people take their jobs a little too seriously. Well, when you're security, I think it's warranted. Are all the posters on the wall here of Hammer? Yes, it's a really, it's really terrible, a really terrible loss for the studios. But his popularity had been waning recently, right? That's true. And again, after what happened. After what happened? You mean you don't know about the hammer? No, what? I I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said anything. Now you're piquing my curiosity. Oh, wait. Yeah. Wait, now you have to tell me. What happened with hammer? I'm sorry. I'm probably not the one who should tell you. Uh-oh. Where do we get the feeling something's being covered up here? Well, if we can't learn about that, we should just t start presenting stuff. Have you seen my attorney's badge? Um, sorry. I'm really not sure what that is. You could give her the Steel Samurai cards. Do you know anything about this? Hey, that's a Steel Samurai training card. I collect those, actually. I'm one card away from a complete set. Complete set? Yeah, so one of each card. Huh. Wait, 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 wait. That, that's it. That's the card I need. You don't know how long you've been looking for it. Uh, I don't care what kind of girl you might think I am. I need that card. P please, I beg you. Please trade with me. T trade with you? Yes, trade cards. Look, I'll even trade you an ultra rare premium card. Trade me a... Huh? Yes, it's a good deal for your ultra rare. Please. 
Phoenix, can't you see, see she's desperate? What's everyone getting so excited about? Okay. Really? Thanks. Then this is for you. URP card out of the court record. Yo! It's a goal. And there she goes, long jumping away. Doesn't doing great good things like that make you feel great? Yeah. Yeah, it does. And... Wait, hold on. Before I present the URP card. Have you ever seen my attorney's badge? What's that? Boring. Man, how could one person be so lame? If only you were a superhero, you'd be, you'd be lame, old man. You'd be a great superhero. <laughs> so, here, I'm here in the future editing this video, and Cody just said that if Phoenix was a superhero, he'd be lame, old man. And I just had a funny thought where, remember how a couple episodes ago Maya said that the attorney's badge should be a huge L for lawyer? If anyone wants to make fan art of Lamo Man with a huge L on his chest, I would love that. URP card. See this card? Y yeah, so. Wait, that's it! That's the last over rare premium card I need. Come on, give it to me, please. You gotta give it to me. Wow, I've never seen him so eager. Right, okay. How about a trade? You're on! I'll give you a samurai spear and throw in an evil magistrate to boot. No, 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 no. Not that kind of trade. I don't want cards. I want information. Huh? You sure? Fine by me. Give your P card to Cody. Okay, Phoenix, let's hear what he has to say. If we know something that could help us, we can have him take the stand tomorrow. Whoop. Let's talk. Steel Samurai. So, you like the Steel Samurai? You're so cool! I... I guess. You're judging him by his looks. You have to look at his actions, at his life. I'm being lectured on life by a grade schooler. You like him too, don't you? Uh, oh, me? Yeah, I, um, love the Steel Samurai. So tell me, what's your favorite thing about the Steel Samurai? Uh, it's kind nature. R right. Come on, think of something. I really like his, um, his kind nature. What a guy. Totally. He looks so tough, but inside he's as gentle as a kitten. Yeah. So what else do you like about him? Don't tell me I have to keep this act up. So tell me, what, what's your favorite thing about the Steel Samurai is? His fighting skills. Gotta think of something. I like it when he, uh, vanquishes his foes. Yeah, wazam! The Steel Samurai always wins. Always. Check this out. It's my fan album. What the... It's all pictures of the Steel Samurai. I go to every live performance. Those stupid pu publicity stunts where they beat each other up in public. I always take a picture when the Steel Samurai lands a fight a blow. Wazam! I got them all. I never missed one. A perfect collection. Check it out. My new digital camera. Wow, that's very impressive. Newest model, isn't it? You bet, lady. I just got it for my birthday. The album has the album has a name. Want to hear it? Steel Samurai. Path to Glory. My Steel Samurai, the Steel Samurai always wins. Always. Hey, if you want this, you can have it, lady. Really? Are you sure? Yeah, I took these with a digital camera. I got all the data at home, so I can always make another one. Well, then I'm happy to accept. Thank you. Path to glory received. What's with people always giving stuff to Mia? What a life. What a life. What happened? You were here on the day of the... Incident, right? Yeah. Did you see anything unusual? Cody? Cody, he needs to know because he's fighting for justice. Isn't that the Steel Samurai's motto? For great justice? You have to help us fight for great justice, too. I... I saw... I saw everything! Well, well, you might get some useful information out of him yet. Cody, I need to ask you something very important. What did you see on the day of the incident? I got here that day, around 2 o'clock. I had to come in through the woods out back so that I, the old lady wouldn't see me. I got kind of lost, though. I was in there for maybe half an hour or so. Then I finally got to the studio. After that... What is it, Cody? The, the steel samurai killed the bad guy. He used a samurai spear. Just like that, just like always. One shot, one kill. It happened so fast, I got scared. I went home after that. Cody's voice is kind of inconsistent, so apologies for that. I... I see. 
It must have been hard for you. And you say those nice things, but it's obvious you aren't speaking from the heart. Um, right. Mia? Yes? I think we could say for s sure that this means the Steel Samurai did it. True enough. And the director has an alibi, so it wasn't him. Indeed. So, the only person left who could have done it was Will Powers. I have to admit, it's kind of a shock. But if you put this boy on the witness stand, your client will be guilty for sure. Let's not call him then. I think that would be wise. Best to leave this one alone. Not so fast, pal! I heard everything. This boy here is a key witness, and he's under police protection starting now. Come on, son. You've got a rendezvous with me down at the precinct. No, I ain't going. Wah. That didn't go so well. We're back to zero leads, and now we have a serious handicap in court. What are we gonna do, Mia? Well, hmm. <clears throat> I really need to be going. Don't worry, Phoenix. I'm sure you'll be fine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. C come to the trial tomorrow, please. I need you there. Phoenix, can I ask you something? Do you really believe that Mr. Powers is innocent? Of course he is! That's all I want to hear. Excellent. I'll see you in court then. Great. Thanks, Mia. See you soon. October 19th, 9.42 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. Um, Mr. Wright? Yes? Why do you look so unhappy? Uh, oh, oh, nothing. <laughs> really, it's nothing. Right, Mia? Uh-oh, she looks even unhappier. Phoenix, your client is now practically a dead man walking. Perhaps that's why I feel particularly close to him. This is no time for dead people jokes, please. You know we're going into this trial utterly defenseless, yet if Mr. Powers truly is innocent, we should be able to find something overlooked in the evidence to prove it. Something overlooked? You have to find something, Phoenix. Today. It's that or lose the trial. This isn't going to be easy. October 19th, 10 o'clock a.m. District Court, courtroom number four. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Will Powers. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. An unexpected fact has come to attention of the, the attention of the court. Yesterday, we learned that there were other people present at the studios. Today, I would like to show evidence proving they had nothing to do with the murder. Very well. You may call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. I wonder if that producer is going to come out. The prosecution calls Mr. Sal Manella to the stand. Or that director. Will the witness state his name and profession? How rude can you get? You don't know me? I'm the director. I'm a steel samurai noob. Russell. Salmonella, I'm a director. Television. Were you at Global Studios on the day of the murder? Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. Very well. Please testify to the court about the events of that day. Phoenix, let's start by picking this testimony apart. If Powers is innocent, you know what that means. Someone in the trailer on that day did it. R right. She doesn't waste any time get putting on the pressure. Yeah, that's Mia for you. The day of the murder. I was at the studio from around 9 o'clock that morning. During the morning, I was doing um an action she run through. It took a lot more time than I thought it would. I searched at everyone else at lunch in the employee area, but I had a meeting in the studio through trailer, so I ended up skipping lunch. We were in some meeting until around 4 o'clock. During the meeting, well, I'm pretty sure no one left their chairs. That's about it. Hmm. 
time of Mr. Hammer's death was 2.30 p.m. And according to your testimony, you were in the meeting at that time. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the day of the murder. But I had a meeting in the studio to trailer, so I ended up skipping lunch. So in the end, you didn't get to eat. Yeah, you'll shake at least. Can you believe it? That must have been tough. Phoenix. Yeah? Doesn't something about that seem odd to you? It's contradictory. Yeah, it does seem odd now that you mention it. Mr. Manella! Hmm? <laughs> what do you mean, Trish? He just said your name. <laughs> when I went to that trailer, I saw something on the table. There were two plates on the table, the same kind of the plates as the employee area. Who ate lunch there? <laughs> No, it's, I, um, <laughs> good call. I, uh, I was embarrassed so I didn't mention it. But I hear you after all. A T-bone steak, you mean? Yeah, well, I mean, this is so much through all that trouble. I brought it to the trailer, thinking I could eat it later. Clearly a man who likes to eat. I suspect, suspected as much. Jesus Christ, Phoenix. <laughs> so, when exactly did you eat it? Check one for the strange that me. I, uh, well, she's am then. Mental image I will carry with me to my grave. Wait a second. If they took a break in that meeting, that contradicts his testimony. I'll press on that one a bit more. During this meeting, well, I'm pretty sure no one left their chair. You didn't take a single break? Uh, well, yeah, not a one. Hmm. What's he sweating so much about, I wonder? If only I had an idea. Wait a second. Maybe I do have an idea. Wait a second. Mr. Manella, you've just contradicted yourself. Didn't you just tell the court that you ate a T-bone steak during that break? Oop, raffle. Well? Um... Mr. Manella, what's this all about? Well, yeah, I guess it would just take a little break. Phoenix. Great job. If they took a break, one of them could have gone to the studio during that time. Your Honor, I call on the witness to testify to the court about this break. Very well. Mr. Manella, your testimony, please. Erk. <laughs> Uh-oh. Edgeworth is laughing. Yeah, that's never a good sign. The break. Yeah, if it was worse, we took a break. Raffle. But it was only 15 minutes. 15. That's only 13 in Base 12. Not enough time for someone to, say, commit murder in Studio 1. Lol. That's only just enough time to eat a T-bone steak, if you ask me. Seems. Hmm. I don't think it would even be enough time for that. But that's just me. Very well. You may begin that cross-examination. The break. Yeah, for sure, we took a break, Raffle. What time exactly did you take this break? Hmm. I say it was from around 2.30 or so until 2.35. 2.30? That's the time of death. So we could have gone to Studio One, killed Hammer, and come back. I guess it's possible, time-wise. Time-wise. Been during 15 minutes. 15, that's so certain in phase 12. What were you doing for those 15 minutes? Eating my cubone shake, what else? There were two plates on the trailer table. Oh, right. The only other one was Divas, sorry, Divasquez's plate. Divasquez, the producer. To eat a T-bone steak in 15 minutes, that's quite a feat. Down your time to start to commit murder in Studio One, LOL, or LOL, or however you pronounce it. Why is that? Haven't we had enough of this pointless line of questioning? Your Honor, the testimony to this point has made one certain fact painfully clear. The people in the trailer had nothing to do with this murder. It was impossible for any of them to go to Studio One. What? Something wrong, Mr. Wright? Surely you aren't suggesting that one of the people in the trailer went to Studio One. 
Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright. Phoenix, this is critical. Think about it before you give your answer. You claim someone from the trailer went to Studio One. No, it's impossible, unfortunately. I don't want to write off so many possible suspects, but I can't keep claiming the impossible either. I agree that it was impossible for anyone in the trailer to go to Studio One in that time. Ha! I thought you might be thoughtlessly treading on thin ice again, but I see you at least had an inkling of the truth. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? It's quite simple. True, that, that break in the trailer meeting came right at the time of death. However, the path from there to the scene of the crime was blocked. The fallen Mrs. Monkey had barred the way. At around 2.15, a strong wind, gust of wind knocked off the studio mascot's head. Ergo, when the people in the trailer took a break at 2.30, the way to the studio was blocked. Blocked by Mrs. Monkey's severed head. It's actually Mr. Monkey, but Edgeworth has a point. And somehow I feel no desire to correct him. I believe we have seen enough evidence. I would like to relieve Mr. Manella from the stand. What? It's over? Very well. The court's opinion on this case is as follows. We have found that there were several other people in Studio 2 on that Studio 2 on that day of the murder. However, it is also clear that none of these people could have gone to Studio 1. They therefore have no relation to the case. Furthermore, with regards to the photo of the Steel Samurai, given the size of the costume, no one other than Mr. Powers could have worn it on that day. All that is lacking is decisive evidence that he is the one who did it. If we had that, I'm afraid I would have to find Mr. Powers guilty. Your Honor, the prosecution is pleased to announce that we have indeed we indeed have decisive evidence. A witness. Who is this witness, Mr. Edgeworth? My witness saw the very moment when the Steel Samurai skewered the victim. Order. I will have order. I see. The court will take a ten minute recess, after which we will hear your witness. Court is adjourned for recess. October 19th, 11.04 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. What do we do now, Mia? Everyone in that trailer has an alibi. I'm sorry, Phoenix. I guess I was wrong. M Mia! Don't tell me you're giving up. If you give up, what hope do I have? Don't get me wrong. I've never given up on a trial before. Not when there was a chance. Only one thing became clear in your cross-examination. The people in the trailer could not have gone to Studio One. I thought there was more to it than that. But I was wrong. That's all there is. Um, uh, what's going to happen to me? It kinda seems like everyone in that courtroom thinks I did it. They think I'm a murderer. Don't worry, Mr. Powers. If you are innocent, we will prove it. I guarantee it. Leave it to us and be yourself. Be strong. You are the Steel Samurai. Hero to children everywhere. Uh, I... You... Thanks. <laughs> okay, Phoenix. This one's for the kids. Let's do it. So yeah, Edgeworth seems to have a decisive witness, so it's probably Cody. October 19th, 11.15am, District Court, courtroom number 4. Court is back in session for the trial of Mr. Will Powers. The prosecution has a concern. As our witness is a grade schooler of tender years, and this is a murder case, we worry that the defense might cause unnecessary trauma with his cruel questioning. Nice to see Edgeworth taking the moral high ground. However, we have no choice. The prosecution calls Cody Hackens to the stand. <laughs> Your Honor, perhaps you could arrange a box for him to stand on? Oh, right. Guard, please bring him a box. One of those donut crates should do. Will the witness state his name and grade in school? Witness! 
What? Just because you're all grown up don't mean you can push me around. Mmph. Cody? Answer his question, okay? Hey, it's you, the nice lady. I'm Cody Hackins. I'm in second grade. I get the feeling this is going to be a long, long day. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember that you're speaking to a child. Try to be gentle. Mm -hmm. Witness, uh, I mean, Cody. He's having trouble with this gentle thing. You were present, uh, you were at Global Studios on the day of the, uh, incident? Got a problem with that? Please tell us what you saw on that day. Why, Pops, you want me to tell you and Gramps with the beard over there? Just, Mr. Edgeworth will be fine. I prefer bearded gentlemen myself. A very long day. Incidentally, photographic equipment is strictly forbidden in this courtroom. <laughs> My apologies, Your Honor. He said he wouldn't testify if he couldn't bring it. I'd like special permission, if that's possible. Wait, so you're saying you had to bargain terms with a kid, and you lost? Hey, I just got this new camera. Don't really know how to use it all that good yet, but I bring it with me wherever I go. Phoenix? I wonder if he had that camera on the day of the murder. Better make a note of it in the court record. Cody's camera added to the court record. Very well, Cody. Please testify to the court about what you saw the day of the incident. Witnesses account. I wanted to see a SEAL Samurai rehearsal just once. I found a map on the internet and went to the studios that day. I went through the woods off the path so that the old lady wouldn't catch me. I was going to the studio. I got kinda lost on the way though, for about 30 minutes. When I came out by the studio, there was a steel samurai. It totally rocked. Right before my eyes out came the bad guy. Of course, the steel samurai took him down. Pow! If I had my camera with me, I would that would have been a time for a shot, I tell ya. Anyway, I couldn't get into the studio, so I went home. An interesting thing to note is that in the 3DS trilogy port of this game, some of the statements might be missing. So, if you're playing that version of the game, keep a lookout for that. Hmm. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. And be gentle. Remember, you're talking to a child. This kid is tougher than most adults we see in here, honestly. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Phoenix. You're just being... Uh, witnesses account. So, the contradiction here is... Right over here on the last statement. Okay, last statement right here. He says that would have been the time for a shot, I tell you. But earlier, we saw that he is constantly carrying it. So why wouldn't he be carrying it right then when a rehearsal for the Steel Samurai is going on? Objection. Cody, what you just said seems, well, a little strange. Didn't you say before that you always bring your digital camera wherever you go? You were quite clear about that. Huh? Cody, you shouldn't lie here. You understand that, right? Mr. Wright, a word with you. Uh-oh. Were they putting on the pressure too much? What is this digital camera contraption you're talking about? It's, um, a digital camera, Your Honor. It's kind of a new sort of camera. How do I, how do I explain that? I see. Anyway, Cody, I can't believe you wouldn't bring your camera on a trip to the studios. You did bring it, didn't you? Um... Mr. Wright, how cruel are you to terrorize a child so? I don't care if he's a child or a prosecuting attorney. No one should lie in court. What do you mean, or a prosecuting attorney? Well, Cody? What? Yeah, so I had my camera. So what? You got a problem with that? So you did have a camera. And did you use this camera? W why would I use it? I, I was too busy watching. Hmm. Very well. Please testify to the court about what you were so busy watching. Yeah, I had my camera with me. But I was glued to the action. I couldn't take my eyes off it. The Steel Samurai, he goes for the bad guy. Wham! Then, then the bad guy stopped moving. He's so strong, the Steel Samurai rules. 
Hmm. Ah, is that all? Well, that was brief. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination. What I saw. Then, then the bad guy stopped moving. Why? Huh? What do you mean, why? Why wasn't the bad guy moving? W well, because the Steel Samurai brought him to justice. And how exactly did he do that? How did he do it? With a samurai kick, and a samurai punch, samurai chop, samurai slap. Something like that. He's still being vague about this. What? Don't we give, don't give me that look, Pops. How should I play this? Rule number one of Ace Attorney, always press harder. Cody. Well, what? Something's bothering me. Before you said that you couldn't take your eyes off the action. Yeah? So what? Yet you missed the most important part. What is the meaning of this? The witness has stated that he what he saw quite clearly. You know as well as I do that he's being vague. Tell me, what kind of a murderer uses a samurai slap? Mm. My point is this. Cody, you may have seen some of the Steel Samurai's fight. But you missed the most important part. The killing blow. Order, order. Mr. Wright, how could this be? Can you explain how he might have missed something so vital? Um, well... Uh, that's the thing. Phoenix, I believe you're on the right track with this. Think, why didn't Cody see the climax of the fight? I know you. You can figure this out. Mr. Wright, your answer. We have ascertained that this young boy is a great fan of the Steel Samurai. Why wouldn't he watch the climax of the fight? Show evidence. Your Honor, I have evidence. Evidence? Yes, Your Honor. What? What? Why did Cody look away from the fight? Here's my proof. What's that? A camera? The witness stated that he recently received this camera. Yes, I'm aware of that. He wasn't entirely familiar with its operation. I'm aware of that too. Ah! Correct! Why would Cody be looking somewhere else at that critical moment? Because he was looking at his camera. He was trying to take a picture. Hey! Bullseye. Well, what's your problem, Pops? You gotta think we're picking on little kids. Pressing, not picking. Great job, Phoenix. Goody was lying, clearly. Smart of you to realize there's no way he could just stand there watching his hero and not take a picture. Right. Cody, there's only one reason why you would have looked away from the fight, and that was because you wanted to take a picture. But having just received your camera, you weren't used to using it yet. So you missed the climax of the fight, correct? Yeah. Well, Phoenix, I'll bet you anything he's hiding more than that. Have him testify again. R right, Mia means business. Your Honor, the defense would like to request that Cody Hackens testify once more. Very well. Cody, could you please tell us about your camera? About why you didn't take a picture of the fight? Uh, um... Welcome to the real world, kid. No photo. Yeah, you're right, Pops. The Steel Samurai had just escaped from the clutches of the villain, so I held up my camera to take a picture, but the lens wouldn't open in time, so I missed it. That's all that happened. Yep. Hmm. Anything strange in that testimony, Mr. Wright? I'm not sure, but I'd like to proceed with the cross-examination anyway. That's all that happened. Yep. <laughs> That's all? Y yeah, I told you, I didn't take a picture. Hmm, I would've once I got that lens open. Did he really not take a picture? Not even one? Press him hard. Nah, I definitely would've taken a picture. There's got to be something here I can use. Cody, listen up, Cody Hackens. I know exactly what happened that day. You took a picture. Hey! Bullseye? Uh, how did you know? I see through all your lies, Cody Hackens. It's one of my powers. W wow! This feels great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I took a picture. 
Perhaps you can change your testimony to reflect this, Cody. I took a few shots, but it was too late, so I erased. But he wouldn't do that because he gave us this book right here, Path to Glory, which basically has every single life performance of a Steel Samurai battle. So why would he immediately erase the photo if he's collecting pretty much everything? Cody! What? Man, every time you say Cody, you followed it, followed up with something bad. I just want to thank you for giving the, me this the other day. Huh? Oh, oh, right. What was it you told me then? I go to every live performance. I always take a picture when the Steel Samurai lands the final blow. With Am. I got them all. I never missed one. A perfect collection. Cody. Did you really get a picture of the Steel Samurai standing victorious over his foe? If you did, then I find it hard to believe you would just erase it. Wouldn't you keep it for your album? Ah! Mr. Wright, what exactly is this album? It's called Path to Glory. It's a collection of pictures of the Steel Samurai, all taken by Cody Hackens. He claims it's a perfect collection of every battle the Steel Samurai has won. I, I see. Don't you find this very odd, Your Honor? Among all of his pictures of the Steel Samurai, none were taken that day. Order. Mr. Wright, have you an explanation? If the Steel Samurai had just defeated his adversary, I certainly would expect to see a picture of it in this album. Exactly my point, Your Honor. No, wait. No way! Phoenix, I think we finally discovered the truth. And what a truth it is. M Mia, are we sure about this? Did he actually... Yes, I'm pretty sure what you're thinking is right. Tell them, Phoenix. Tell them what the truth is. Mr. Wright, explain to the court what is going on here. Why was there no picture in the album from the day of the murder? Why would the boy have erased the photos he took? There's only one answer. I can think of only one reason, Your Honor. The Steel Samurai didn't win. That's why Cody deleted those photos. You mean the Steel Samurai... lost? Well, Cody, I'm right, aren't I? Tell the truth. The bad guy defeated the Steel Samurai. N no way! No! It's impossible! The Steel Samurai never loses! He never loses to anyone, ever! Your Honor... The witnesses revealed everything with his words. There was a reason why he lied and told us he didn't take a picture. The same reason he erased his precious photos. For Cody, it was inconceivable that the Steel Samurai could be defeated. However, Cody witnessed the impossible. He saw the Steel Samurai lose. Yet to admit what he saw would destroy everything he believed in. That's why he lied and said the Steel Samurai won. He couldn't handle the truth. Order. I will have order. Witness. I mean, Cody. Is this true? What did you see? Tell the court everything you saw. I... Uh, I... Cody, that day you saw the Steel Samurai lose a fight, right? Okay, okay. Y you're right. The, the, the Steel Samurai fell down, and he didn't move. Oh. Order, order, order. What kind of stunt are you trying to pull, right? The Steel Samurai was the murderer, not the victim. Yet according to your witness's testimony, the Steel Samurai was the one who fell. Mr. Wright, what's going on? Apparently, we have all made a serious error. An error? What's this all about? The Steel Samurai was the victim. If you understand what really happened, it's actually quite simple. At the end of the fight, the Steel Samurai fell to the ground and lay still. In other words, the Steel Samurai was not the killer, but the victim. Don't you see? Jack Hammer was the Steel Samurai. Order, order, order. 
So, the Steel Samurai in this photo. You're saying the man in this costume was the victim, Mr. Jackhammer? That's what I'm saying, Your Honor. Jackhammer was present at the action scene run-through that morning. Thus, he obviously knew about Will Powers' foot injury. But wait, hadn't Mr. Hammer gone to Studio One already? That's what everyone thought. But remember what Miss Oldbag said in her testimony? On the day of the murder, I arrived at the guard station at 1 o'clock p.m. Did I see poor old Hammer? Nope. He'd already gone to the studio before I got back to the guard station. Mr. Jack Hammer left the employee area after lunch. However, no one saw him go into Studio 2, nor was there a picture of him. He waited for Mr. Powers to take a nap in his dressing room. Then he snuck into the dressing room and stole the Steel Samurai costume. But why would the victim do such a thing? I don't know. I get it. I thought that Steel Samurai was moving strange, so it was a different person inside the suit. Pops! Huh? Me? What? Actually, there was one piece of data I saved. Data? Yeah, a photo of my digital camera! What? Show us, quick! No way, man, not if you're gonna look at me like that. No! Here, this is it. Well, looking at this photo, it's still a little hard to say. I'm afraid that it could be anyone in that costume. Your opinion, Mr. Wright? I agree, Your Honor. This isn't decisive evidence. I'm sorry, this doesn't look like it's proof we need. I'll give it back. Wait, Phoenix. Mia? Yeah? What? Look at that photo once more. That's it, Phoenix. That photo is all the evidence you need to win this trial. Wh what? Y Your Honor, may I see the photo once more, please? Certainly. I don't see why not. Phoenix, show him. There's a glaring, decisive inconsistency with the facts that we know, as we know him in that photo. Find the inconsistency in this photo. Your Honor, look at this. I see a gate. Might I draw your attention to the number on the gate? The number? Ah, uh, yes. Well, it's hard to see, but it looks like a two. Clearly not a one, Your Honor, correct? Ah! I believe Mr. Edgeworth sees what I'm getting at. B but th that's impossible. Hmm? Eh? What's this all about? Please explain so that I might be shocked along with the rest of the court. <laughs> I'll use the studio guide map. The body was found here, in Studio One. However, what do we see in this photo taken at the time of the murder? It does not say one on that gate in the photo. Your Honor, here is the true scene of the crime. Here, at Studio Two. I see. That would, that would explain the two on the gate in the photo. Your Honor, I find it very significant that the murder took place in Studio 2. As you may recall, there is a trailer in Studio 2. Now on the day, on that day, a meeting was held in the very trailer. There was a break in, break in the meeting corresponding to the time of death. During that break, Mr. Sal Manella and D, Ms. D. Vasquez were outside eating steak. They were at the scene of the crime. The path to the trailer was blocked. So we have heard. The path was blocked at 2.15. In other words, the victim went to the studio before that time. Yes, I suppose that would be the case. Remember Mr. Salmonella's testimony? Allow me to remind the court. He said no one in the trailer was guilty because they could not have gone to Studio One. Yet in actuality, the reverse was true. Only someone in the trailer could have committed this murder. They were the only ones with access to the scene of the crime. Studio 2. Uh, order, order. The defense makes it makes the following claims. The scene of the crime was Studio 2. The person that the, secu that the security cart Miss Oldbag saw was the victim, Jack Hammer. Mr. Hammer, for some reason, stole a steel samurai costume. Then he went to Studio 2. 
This is madness. Jack Hammer is the victim. The victim? Why would he steal a Steel Samurai costume? Are you suggesting he did so to cover up the details of his own murder? Well, no, of course not. Hmm. Or do you have proof? Give me proof that the victim Jack Hammer stole the costume. I have proof. E you do? You do, Mr. Wright. Now that they're so surprised, suddenly I'm much less confident. I think I'm right, though. Here's my proof that Jack Hammer stole the costume. This is it. An empty medicine bottle. I found this on the table in the employee area. The same table where Mr. Hammer and Mr. Powers ate. The label reads sleeping pills. Sleeping pills? The defendant, Mr. Powers, spent that entire afternoon sleeping. He was drugged by Mr. Hammer. Wait a moment. That bottle does raise some suspicions, yes. But there's no proof that Mr. Hammer used it. Your Honor, I have an idea. An idea? Very well, let's hear it. I want to check this bottle for fingerprints. If my claim is true, Mr. Hammer's fingerprints should show up on this bottle. Hmm. <laughs> I suppose you're right. Very well, the court will take possession of the bottle. Empty bottle given to the judge. This court will suspend current proceedings on the current trial for today. Kodiakin's testimony has revealed new possibilities in this case. In fact, things may have happened very differently than we previously thought. The steel samurai seen by Miss Oldbag may have been the victim, Jack Hammer. The scene of the crime was not Studio One, but Studio Chu, Two, and those in the trailer did not have time to commit the crime. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? Your homework is to find the answer to the following question. Why would Mr. Hammer steal the Steel Samurai costume? Also, who killed him and why? You'll find the answer for me by tomorrow. That's a lot of homework. Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm? You will need to re reconsider your stance in this case. Above all, you will need to reconsider your suspicion of Mr. Will Powers. As you say, Your Honor. This trial will be extended until tomorrow. It's the last extension. Very well. Court is adjourned. October 19th, 2.47 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Whoa! That was a close one. We were safe by a hair, but that's all that counts. I thought seriously about going home about three times during that trial. Me too. Really? You both seem so... so confident. <laughs> Maybe I should take up a career in acting? I was ready to pronounce you dead about three times back there. Me too. D -d dead Oh, of course we're kidding. Are you sure? I wasn't kidding. <laughs> now, Mr. Powers, we have to go make our final investigation, but I promise you we'll find the true killer by tomorrow's trial. Right, thanks. October 19th, 3.27 p.m., Wright & Co. Law Offices. That was a close one, huh, Mia? Really? Too bad. I'm sorry I missed it. M Maya! So, what happened? Well, I think I've got a pretty good idea who did it. Now all I need is a motive. And proof. Wow! Good going, Nick! Under the initial trial system, tomorrow's the last day we have. Initial trial? What's that? That's the new court system they introduced two or three years ago. They had so many cases in the system they decided to speed up the whole process. So wonder that system trials have to end in three days? Yeah, pretty much. Well, we have no time to waste. I don't get it, Maya. Why would Mr. Hammer steal the Steel Samurai costume? What? You mean Mr. Hammer was wearing the costume? Yeah. But, but Mr. Hammer was the victim, Nick. Why would he go through the trouble of stealing it? That's what we have to find out. The director's alibi. What happened with the director's testimony? Well, it's pretty clear that the producer and the director were both in the trailer. Huh? Which means the killer has to be one of them. Really? Why? Because the real scene of the crime was Studio 2, where the trailer is. What? Hmm. Was Maya always this excitable? 
Well, have you noticed anything that might help us? I can't see what's going on when Mia is here. So no, I haven't noticed anything. Right. Maybe we should go talk to WP? WP. Powers. Right. October 19th, Detention Center Visitor's Room. Mr. Wright, you did very well again today. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Um, could you not look like you're about to burst into tears? Wow, Nick, you must have really wowed him in there. You could stop looking so vulnerable, too. Hey, WP, only one day left. Let's make it count. Yes, though there's not really anything I can do to help. <laughs> I'm not really sure what I can do either. Please, this is no laughing matter. What have you got for us, Mr. Powers? Could you tell me more about Miss Vasquez? Oh, the producer? She's she's well respected in the industry. They say she's a genius. I'm starting to turn into Marvin Grossberg. A genius? She's been at Global Studios for five years now. Right or wrong, nobody t dares tell her different these days. Why is that? Ever since she came on board, we've had nothing but hits. Global Studios was on its knees, but she pe picked it up and made it shine. Oh, and... And? What? Nothing. Forget it. I've only heard rumors, anyhow. Can you tell me anything about Mr. Manila? Oh, he used to be a minor straight-to-video director, but something in his work caught Vasquez's eye. She brought the Steel Samurai idea to him. Oh, everybody knows the name Sal Manella. Here he's pretty much at her beck and call, though. Whenever she says jump, she, he asks how high and all that. I can imagine him being at her beck and call, but I can't imagine him jumping. Jesus, Phoenix. I mean, yeah, but... <laughs> I was wondering about Mr. Hammer. Is he a big star? He was a big star back in the day, right? But then he just dropped off the face of the earth. Oh... Yes, you're right. In fact, he was my role model when I started in this business. But he just stopped taking on big roles. That's when he began appearing in pro little productions at Global. How could he do that? I was really looking forward to a sequel to Samurai Summer. He just gave up being a star five years ago. Actually, now that I think about it, that was right when Miss Vasquez came to Global. Five years ago? Oh god, October 19th, Global Studios Main Gate. The old windbag. Uh, that's. The old windbag sure is quiet today. You know, this place really. peaceful like this. Nick? I think your guard's down. Yeah? I bet we could even eat those donuts in the guard station if we wanted. You eat, you die. <laughs> Woo, she's alive. Probably one of my favorite lines. I feel like I'm going to say that about every line in this game, but these games are really funny. Um, I was wondering about Dee Vasquez, the producer. Oh, the Studio Big Wigs love her. She, she, so she always gets her way. She seems bitter. Do you not like the producer? Look, the studio people don't want, want me talking about her, so sorry. Sorry if I have a bit of trouble getting back into Old Bag's voice. Can I ask you about Sal Manella, the director? Sal? He's a, he's soft. A pushover. Does whatever Vasquez tells him to. He treats him like dirt, but I think he likes it. Huh? How would anyone like being treated like dirt? That doesn't make any sense, does it, Nick? Uh, no. No, it doesn't, Maya. Yeah. About Mr. Hammer. I heard what you said about today. GK Wimper Snapper. Poor old Hammer. You drag a star down from the sky and stomp on it. Calling him a criminal. A thief. I I, I, I won't forget this. Uh-oh. She's really pissed this time. You listen to me, Wimper Snapper. My poor old Hammer would never do such a thing. <laughs> Why would he steal Powers' costume so he could sneak by me? He would never stoop so low. It's impossible. I guess they're not filming today either. I did want to see them filming. Just one time. This trial will be over and done by tomorrow. You can come see them film later. I guess. This is where you found that bottle of sleeping pills, right? Uh-huh. I wonder if there's any other clues lying around. Yeah! No, no, no. No touching, pal. Eek! Oh, sorry, pal. 
Didn't mean to frighten you. D didn't mean I almost had, to, had a heart attack. <laughs> I guess I could be a little dramatic at times. I suppose it's the actor in me. Dramatic indeed. <clears throat> anyway, I'm here to examine the plate on that table, pal. Wait, are you looking for sleeping pills? Yeah, pal. Traces thereof. Gumshoe's, Gumshoe's theme is really cool. I, I really like it. The plate. So you're looking for traces of sleeping pills. How? For a thorough examination, I gotta take the plate back to the precinct. But I but I have the capabilities of to make a cursory examination right here. Our science gig yeah, our science guy gave me some testing solution. This reacts to our sleeping pills, see? If there's traces, it'll change color. Wow, neat. Well, Detective Gumsh, what are you waiting for? Now now, everything everything in due time, prowl. Well, the test and solution changed on the plate changed color, all right. So there were sleeping pills on the plate. Looks like it. Now I'm having trouble getting back into the Gumshoe's voice because I, I haven't done his voice in like two months. Investigation. How goes your investigation? To tell the truth, it's a real mess, pal. Some people think we should pursue the case we already have against Powers, and some people think we should switch suspects. What do you think, Detective Gumshoe? Well, pal, I hate to admit it, but I'm not sure I've had the case against Mr. Powers anymore. I feel kind of bad for Mr. Edgeworth, though. Prosecutor Edgeworth. How is Edgeworth doing, anyway? Edgeworth is out of control. He was in the waiting room and he crushed his, this paper cup with hot, hot coffee in it. Whoa. Talk about burns, pal. Wow, the fury of Edgeworth. Yeah, crushing paper cups. Cups. Bottles. Say, whatever happened with that empty bottle? Oh, the bottle of sleeping pills? Well, I got a good, good news for you about, for about that, pal. Yeah, they found the victim, Jack Hammer's prints on the bottle. So that means... Yep, sounds like the one who put powers to sleep was none other than the victim. So I was right. Sleeping pill bottle added to the court record. Oh, hello. What are you doing here? Oh, I was just cleaning up the dressing room. I guess WP won't be using it anymore, so... What? What? Why? But WP's innocent. Yes, and I'm really grateful for all you've done. But this week is the last episode of the Steel Samurai. What? No! Mr. Hammer. I was wondering if I could ask you about Mr. Hammer. Yes? On the day of the murder, he went to Studio 2. Huh? I thought he went to Studio 1. He stole the Steel Samurai costume too. What? Why would Mr. Hammer do something like that? Oh. I guess the rumor must be true then. The rumor? Yeah, Miss Fast is that producer is some kind of hole on Hammer. He had some dirt on him. He'd do anything she said, apparently. Some dirt? What dirt? Dirt. You know, bad stuff. Um, I know what dirt means. About five years ago, they were filming a movie starring Mr. Hammer. They were using the new studio. Studio 2. Some sort of accident happened during the filming. After that, they never used the studio again. They left the film set the way it was, too. Film set? Is that trailer part of the film set, then? Anyway. What do you mean, the last Steel Samurai? I know it's a shock, but nothing can be done to shame it now. Whoever really didn't kill Mr. Hammer also signed the Steel Hammer death warrant. No, no! Also, I hear that Global Studios is going to change its programming. They're not going to make kid shows anymore. What? Why? I don't know. It's sad, but, I, but that's what Global Studios has decided. Why aren't they going to make kids shows anymore? Australia and Bangalang don't want the Steel Samurai around anymore. They want to forget all this ever happened. They want, to, they want it quiet, you understand? How can they just do that? What about all the kids who love the Steel Samurai? It's okay. I'm sure the kids will be fine. They'll find a new hero to follow. 
No, that can't be true. If the program just ends, they'll be heartbroken for sure. Nick, say something. Um, yeah. I think evidence rather than words is called for here. Here, take a look at this. And this is... A fan collected all of these photographs. The kids love the Steel Samurai. The show shouldn't be cancelled just so some adults can save face. I would think you would understand that better than anyone. You're right. Okay, but what can I do? Well, for starters, you can tell me something. Tell me what it is that Global Studios is so intent on hiding. Tell me about this accident five years ago. Okay. Could you tell us what happened five years ago? Well, I could tell you what I've heard. Apparently, five years ago, someone died. It was Hammer's fault. Someone died? It was an accident, of course. Anyway, producer Miss Vasquez managed to hush it up, and that's the dirt she had. Or, and that's the dirt she had on Mr. Hammer. That's why Mr. Hammer would do any, anything Miss Vasquez asked him to do. But it was an accident, right? Why wouldn't they just make it public? Well, you know, Mr. Hammer was a big star back then. They were afraid about what would happen to his career if word got out. I see. You know who knows more about this? Miss Oldback. She was here at the studios back then, you know. Thanks. We'll try asking her. If she'll talk. What? You're still slinking around? If you like the place so much, why don't you take over for me? The old windbag doesn't look so good. Everybody's doing their darndest to forget Hammer. Who do they think made Global Studios what it is today? Hammer! It's all due to Hammer. You're starting to froth at the mouth, Nick. Maybe we should keep a safe distance. Yeah, that's definitely the best idea when talking to Old Bag. Five years ago. Um, I wanted to ask you about five years ago. Who told? Who did you hear that from? I, uh, huh? Nichols! Nichols? Nichols, Nick. Penny Nichols. That assistant we talked to. Uh, oh, right. Anyway, we heard about the accident. It was during filming with Jack Hammer. Killed a man, didn't he? Whippish snappers. Dredging up dirt on someone's past like that. And the recently departed, no less. I suppose you think this is fun? No, I'm just doing my job to protect Mr. Powers. And you claim that Hammer sold Powers' costume. You expect me to believe that rubbish? Or do you have some kind of proof? Proof that Hammer stole Powers' costume? I have proof indeed. I'm sorry, Miss Oldbag, but I do have proof. I can prove that Mr. Hammer stole Mr. Powers' costume by using the sleeping pills bottle. Here's my proof. What? What's a little empty bottle supposed to prove? It's a bottle of sleeping pills. With Mr. Hammer's fingerprints on it. Oh, what does that prove? I'm, I'm sure Old Hammer had some sleepless nights. Where's your proof that he used those pills on Powers? That would be the steak plate. Mr. Powers ate a T-bone steak for lunch, correct? Well, yes, so? This is the plate that he used to eat that steak. There are traces of sleeping pill powder on the plate. I see. Poor, poor Hammer. You did wrong, Hammer. Rest your soul. Miss Holdbag? Okay, you win. I'll talk. I'm tired, see? Tired of holding it all in. Miss Holdbag. You're right. Five years ago, there was an accident. A fatal accident. What's worse, a paparazzi, paparazzi took a photo of it. That photo, well, it caused quite a stir. And guess who made it better? Vasquez! She has ties to the Mafia. She silenced that paparazzi. That was the beginning. After that, she became a force to be reckoned with here at the studio. I see. But you have to understand, poor old Hammer never meant to harm anyone. This old bag. Hold on a minute. Here, take this. A photograph. Wait a second. This is the picture. Is this the trailer in Studio 2? Emma was supposed to fight with the bad guy on the top of those stairs there. 
He pushed the other actor, and the man fell onto the flower box fence. But how did you get this? It was a long time ago. I don't feel much like talking about it. I understand. Five-year-old photo added to the court record. October 19th, Studio One entrance. Think back, Nick, to the day of the murder. Mr. Hammer put on the Steel Samurai costume, then he left from here to go to Studio Two? Right. But why? I wonder if someone called him, like the director or the producer. October 19th, Studio Two entrance. Hey Nick, it's Miss Vasquez. Hello? 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 Maya, you should at least try to be polite. I'm watching the clouds. That's all she had to say, apparently. Five-year-old photo. Not even looking. Where? What? Where did you get that? I, well... Old bag. Old... She means the security lady, Miss Old Bag, Nick. R right. Anyway. Miss Vasquez, you hid this incident from the press, didn't you? And you used it contr to control Mr. Hammer. The wind... But, huh? It's gotten stronger, don't you think? The wind. Your conversation interests me. Let's talk about it more inside the trailer. Nick, she went inside the trailer. Into the trailer. Hmm, you came. Well then, what was that you were talking about? Why is she so eager to talk all of a sudden? Miss Vasquez, you were using that accident. You were blackmailing Mr. Hammer so you could control him, weren't you? That's why he was doing kids shows for petty change. Hmm, so I'm a blackmailer now. Well, that's what it was, wasn't it? I mean, sure it was an accident, but he used it to drag Mr. Hammer down from his rightful place as a star. Oh. I haven't pulled anyone down from anywhere. Mr. Hammer's career went sour of its own accord. But you're the cause. You pressured him. And to think it was just an accident. Excuse me. What is this all about? You keep saying accident, accident. How are you so sure? What do you mean? Must I spell everything out for you? Think. What would it be if it wasn't an accident? No. No way. You mean, you mean Mr. Hammer did it on purpose? That is what I mean. Where's your proof? Can you prove it? <laughs> Just think. Would he have let me run his life for five years over a mere accident? And I ran him hard, believe you me. But the security lady said it was an accident. Oh, well, she was a big fan of hammers, you see. She jumped on the reporter who brought that photo to, into the studio. She wrenched it out of his hands, she did. Give him a few bruises, too. So that's why she had the photo. She's an old fool. Of course, all the reporter would need is the negatives. He could have made a copy, but he didn't. The only copy of that photo is the one you hold. Give it to me. Now. What? This is valuable evidence. Boys. Uh, um, who are they? Professionals. They're good at erasing various things. What do you think? Would you like to be erased? What? The trial ends tomorrow. How unfortunate. It's a shame you'll have to miss it. Tell me why. Why do you want this photograph so badly? This is Mr. Hammer's dirt, no? Why should D. Vasquez care about it at all? I'm sure you'll have plenty of time to think about that where you're going. So long, friends. Boys.
Erase away. No! Hold it right there! I heard everything, pal. Do you ask kids? You're coming down to the precinct with me now. Hmm. Not bad. Very well. It appears this contest will be decided tomorrow, then. In court. I'll be looking forward to it. Hey, you okay, pal? Sorry I was a little late, late with my entrance. I don't get many chances to practice that sort of thing. Detective Gumshoe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I was really scared. Huh? Don't mention it, pal. Just doing my job. Detective Gumshoe? Sorry, it's just I've wanted to say that line ever since I became a detective. Okay, I've got one more job to do today. I'm sure we'll run into each other again soon. Well, Nick, it looks like we're getting close to the bottom of this. And who's at that bottom? D. Vasquez. October 20th, 10 o'clock a.m. District Court, courtroom number four. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Will Powers. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Today will be the final day of this trial. I hope both the prosecution and the defense will be able to present decisive evidence. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement. In yesterday's session, the defense presented us with a new theory for this case. It claims that the scene of the crime was in fact Studio Chew. Today, I will call on the people present in Studio 2 that, in the Studio 2 trailer that day. From their testimonies, it will, the truth will become clear. Hmm, very well. Edgeworth seems a bit on edge today. I guess that's why they call him Edgeworth. You may call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls Miss D. Vasquez to the stand. Miss D. Vasquez is a producer who was present in the Studio 2 trailer that day. Will the witness state her name and occupation? D. Vasquez. I am a producer for Global Studios. I won't do the pause thing after a word because even though she is calm right now, I feel like it'll take forever. On the day of the murder, you were in this trailer to Studio 2. As everyone here knows, yes? I dislike needless banter. If you must pontificate, do it when I'm not here. Mm. Very well, Miss Vasquez. Please give the court her testimony concerning the day of the murder. Nick, I know she did it. Make her pay! R right. If she's guilty, I'll catch her with her pants down. So to speak. Day of the murder. I entered the trailer, oh, a little before noon. The meeting began at two, 12 o'clock sharp. It ended at 4. There was to be a rehearsal afterwards, so we went to Studio One. I was fatigued, so I had Sal take me. At 2.30, we took a 15-minute break in the meeting. Sal and I ate T-bone steaks on the table in front of the trailer. We found Hammer's body later when we all went to Studio One. That's all. Hmm. I have a question about one part of your testimony. You were fatigued, so you had Sal take you? The van. Hmm? There's a van at, this, a van at Studio Two. I had him take me in that. I thought it might be risky to walk, what with the monkey's head toppling over. I, I see. Very well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination. This is the final battle, Nick. Let's do it! Day of the murder. So the contradiction here is we, if we head over to the last statement about T-Bone Steaks. This would be normal, except... If you'll remember, in the Studio 2 trailer, or by the Studio 2 trailer, the plates didn't have any bones on them. Huh, just as I thought. You claim you ate a T-bone steak. 
But I say you did not. What's this now, Mr. Wright? Look at this. It's a plate. This plate was on the table in the employee room. As you can see, a large bone has been left behind. Mr. Wright, need I remind you that it was a T-bone steak? Exactly my point. Remember if you will. Miss Vasquez and Mr. Manella ate at the table outside the trailer. Yet there were no bones left on the plates. The plates were bare! Miss Vasquez? Tell me, how can a person eat a T-bone steak and not leave the bone? I think I know how. You didn't eat any steak during that break. You took your steak and threw it somewhere, like the incinerator. Uh, I see. Then, what was Miss Vasquez doing during her break? Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? She was meeting with the Steel Samurai. Order. Uh, are you saying? Yes, Your Honor. As Miss Vasquez left the trailer to eat her steak, she ran into the Steel Samurai. And then you did it. You killed him with your own hands. Mr. Wright, isn't that a little presumptuous? What kind of a stunt are you trying to pull, Wright? Let him claim what he wants. You say... you say I did it? Yes. Fascinating. And here I was worrying that today would be as boring as all the rest. Very well. Let us have a battle of wits, you and I. Any day, Vasquez. Good luck, Nick. Let's see. What was that murder weapon again? Oh yes, the samurai spear. Yes? I am, as you can see, a woman of petite stature. How could I possibly use that heavy spear as a weapon? You couldn't, could you? I think you would have a great deal of difficulty using that as a weapon. Pretty much anyone would. Huh. You see? Yes. However, that has no bearing on this case. Meaning? The samurai spear was not the murder weapon. What? What is the meaning of this? The spear was found lying next to the victim's body. I have proof, your honor. I can prove that the samurai spear was not used as the murder weapon. I present my proof, the so-called murder weapon. But that is the murder weapon. Not so fast. Remember that this spear broke during the morning run through, morning action scene run through. But someone fixed the spear. It was the security lady. She fixed it with duct tape. Now tell me, how is it possible for someone to stab a man who is wearing a thick costume with this through the chest? Order, order. Mister Wright, what are you driving at? Think about what you're... Silence. I am the one testifying here, and I will be heard. Oomph. Are you quite sane? Are you even aware of what you're saying? If the samurai spear was not the murder weapon, then pray tell what was. How was Hammer killed? Well, Mr. Wright, can you tell us what the weapon was... What, tell us what weapon was used to kill Mr. Hammer? I can tell you. Would I make a claim like that if I couldn't tell you what the weapon was? I'm afraid your confidence can sometimes be unfounded, Mr. Wright. Very well, let's see this murder weapon then. Look at this photo. What is this? Why, that's Jack Hammer standing at the top of the stairs. Order, order. If I cannot have order, this trial will be suspended. Mr. Wright, what is all this about? This photograph is from five years ago. There was an unfortunate accident at Global Studios. This is a photo of that very accident. Not a word of this was leaked to the outside. It was a close-kept secret at the studios. What does this have to do with the current case? Mr. Edgeworth, you still can't see it? See the fallen man in this photo? See how the fence post pierced him through the chest? 
What? What? Are you saying... Yes. What happened five years ago? Has happened again. Mr. Wright, continue. It's 2.30 p.m. on the day of the murder. Miss D. Vasquez meets Jack Hammer outside the Studio 2 trailer. Then she did it. She pushed Mi she pushed Mr. Ha she pushed Mr. Hammer off the stairs onto the fence. Just like Mr. Hammer himself had done five years ago. But whether she did it on purpose or by accident, I cannot say. Uh, in, in other words, the victim, Mr. Hammer, he died in the same way he caused another man to die. Five years ago. Precisely. Ironic, isn't it? Oh, oh, very creative, Mr. Wright. I could use a man like you on my script writing staff. You deny that what, what I say is true? Mr. Wright, let's say for the sake of the argument that Hammer died at the trailer as you say. Yet the body was found at Studio One, was it not? And in the evil Manchester Street's costume, no less. Are you claiming that I carried the body to Studio One and returned to the trailer all in the space of a 15 minute break? How could I have disposed of the body? The break in the meeting at the trailer lasted from lasted 15 minutes from 2.30 to 2.45. Good Jack Hammer have been pushed off the stairs to his death, then carried to the Studio One and placed inside his costume? There wasn't enough time. Hmm, indeed. Well, Mr. Wright, how could you have dealt with the body? She had another way. What if she had another way to carry the body, other than with her own hands? For instance? Actually, for that matter, there was no need for her to do the deed in 15 minutes. And there was a way for you to carry that body. Interesting. Let's hear it, then. Mr. Wright, please show us how she carried the body. Miss Vasquez, you carried the body to Studio One, and you used the studio van to do it. Recall your testimony. There was to be a rehearsal afterwards, so we went to Studio One. I was so fatigued, so I had Sal. I was fatigued, so I had Sal take me. There was a van there, right? I had Sal drive me. Use the van to carry the body to Studio One. Then before everyone else got there, you put the body into the Magistrate costume. Hold on, right? Don't forget it was Sal Manello that drove the van. Are you suggesting that Mr. Manello was a conspirator? Of course Sal Manello has to be... Uh, has to have been a conspirator. The body had to be placed in the van and put into the costume. There's no way Mr. Miss Vasquez would have done that alone. Also, don't forget that they had to dispose of the Steel Samurai costume. They had to, because it was covered in Mr. Hammer's blood. They had they probably burned it in that small incinerator. Well, Miss Vasquez, shall I continue? No need. You're smarter than you look, Mr. Wright. Oomph. I lose. You win. It was fun. I... win? Um, so what happens next? Don't m me. Don't you have anything to say? What would you like me to say? Huh? I lost? Something like that? I just said that. W wait, so you mean... Do you ask his? So it was you? You killed Jack Hammer. Who can say? Huh? Are you sure I did it? Mr. Wright, we just engaged in a battle of wits. And the result of that battle? You proved the possibility that I murdered Hammer. R right. But that is only a possibility. 
Proof is another thing altogether. You lack decisive proof, Mr. Wright. What? 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 Order, Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts. Um, um, uh, um, uh, of course, it's just as the witness says. Certainly, it does seem very likely that she did it. But, uh, there's new proof. Edgeworth isn't sure. Well, I came here as a witness today. If you've no more questions, I'll be leaving. Erk, what do I do now? Uh... Testify again, Vasquez. I, I'd like you to testify again. Testify again? No when to give up, Mr. Wright. Think about it. Even if I were to testify again, what's the point? I can only say what I said before. The truth, Mr. Wright. I've already said all there is to say. What would happen if I said it again? Uh... You'd ask the same questions, get the same answers. A waste of time. Damn. Damn. To come so far only to fail. As it seems, there are no further questions. I would like to end the cross-examination of the witness, Ms. Vasquez. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth? I was hoping to come up with a question while I was objecting, Your Honor. I didn't. I see. Very well. Your Honor, I request that the witness testify again. You are the prosecutor, are you not? Why are you badgering me? I'm your witness. I, I, I just want to hear your testimony again. Does this make any sense to you, Your Honor? I don't see that we have anything to gain by repeating the last several minutes. Mr. Edgeworth, I too see little point in making Miss Vasquez repeat herself. What exactly did you want her to testify about? Oof. Well, yes, um... I indeed, verily, I'd say. Ergo, I want to hear about what happened after they found the body. After they found the body? Very well. The witness will testify to the court concerning this matter. Oof. Nick! Why did it worth... Who knows? Probably realized she did it too. But, but, wasn't he the one that said he always gets a guilty verdict? After all that, Edgeworth. After finding the body, I was with Sal and Old Bag, the security lady, and when we found the body, the assistant was there too. Only Powers was absent. I immediately called the police. Then Powers showed up. The security lady old bag was quite agitated, pointing at Powers, saying, He did it. I asked to be left out of the proceedings. I went back to the trailer to get my script and direction notes. Then I went home. Hmm. I see no issues raised by this testimony. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination. Okay, Nick. We're close. Real close. She may be acting tough now, but if you put her on the spot, she's sure to falter. Find the key you need and twist the truth out of her, Nick. Right. Cross-examination. This will probably be the final cross-examination of the case. I went back to the trailer to get my script and direction notes. The script and your direction notes? Yes, they're quite valuable. It wouldn't do to have them stolen. No, I guess not. Wait a second. I thought you came to Studio One for a rehearsal. Why didn't you bring your script and notes? Well, I was under the impression that we wouldn't be able to rehearse anything. Why? There was a murder after all. Who could think of rehearsing after that? Oh yeah, I guess. Hmm. Very well, Miss Vasquez. Please continue. Your Honor, I have an objection to the witness's last statement. Huh? Think. Miss Vasquez said she didn't bring the script because there wouldn't be a rehearsal. Don't you see what that means? She would have had to know about the murder before going to Studio One. Oh. 
Order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, what you've just said is a reasonable observation. However, I find it quite hard to understand why the prosecution would make such a move. Or are you thinking of a career change to defense? I appreciate the concern, Your Honor. I will stand by my statement, however, regardless of how the court sees my role here. Now, Miss Vasquez, do you have an explanation? I can't believe Edgeworth is helping me. Hmm. So the prosecution is in coverage with the defense? What kind of court is this? No matter. I think you misunderstood me. I had a perfectly good reason to be believe there would be no rehearsal. Hmm. Very well, the witness will change her testimony to reflect this reason. I knew that Hammer was injured and couldn't do any action scenes, so I left them behind. Objection! You knew that Hammer was injured. Don't you think that's a little funny? I mean, it was the Steel Samurai who was injured. It was Will Powers. Wh what? Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Yes, Mr. Hammer is dragging his leg in this photo. But that's because he was pretending to be Mr. Powers. P pretending One person was injured in the run-through that morning. That person was Mr. Powers, not Mr. Hammer. Now, why did you think it was Mr. Hammer who was injured? I, I already said it was Sal who told me. That's right, you must have gotten it wrong. I think not. Mr. Manel was at the run-through that morning. He would have known it was Mr. Powers who was injured. He saw it happen. Why would he tell you the wrong person? Miss Vasquez! Actually, you didn't hear anything from Mr. Manel. You saw Mr. Hammer limping with your own eyes. Yes, but wasn't it Mr. Powers who was injured? Yes, but remember, Mr. Hammer was dragging his leg too. And he was pretending to be Mr. Powers. Ah, and when was he doing this? Well, it would have to be after he put on the Steel Samurai costume and went to Studio 2, where he was murdered. Exactly. Miss Vasquez, you met him, didn't you? You saw the Steel Samurai limping. And Mr. Hammer was in that Steel Samurai suit. That's why you were confused. That's why you thought it was Mr. Hammer who had been injured that morning. Order, order. I will have order. Witness. Can you refute this claim? Mm. <laughs> yeah, let's see you sneak out of this one, Vasquez. Very well. I have a question for you. Urgh. Why are the real killers always so... persistent? Why in the world would I want Hammer dead? Yes, he'd fallen on hard times, but he was a star. I had nothing to gain from his death. Nothing. Hmm. Yes, you would need a motive. Why would she have killed the victim? Is there a reason? If there is a reason, it is unclear to this court. Does the defense have anything to say on the matter? In other words, can you prove she had a motive? I have proof, and I'll show it to you. I present to the court evidence as to Miss Vasquez's motive for this murder. This is my proof. This is the photo from before. This photo reveals the motive in this murder. I'm right, aren't I, Miss Vasquez? <laughs> Five years ago, Mr. Hammer was at the height of his fame. With D. Vasquez's help, a terrible accident was swept under the carpet. Ladies and gentlemen, this case currently up for trial. It began on that day five years ago. Ironically enough, that accident precipitated Mr. Hammer's fall. His fall from stardom. His guilt weighed him down, no doubt. However... You, D. Vasquez, used Mr. Hammer. You made him work for you for petty change. Hmm. Bringing us to the present day, in Mr. Hammer's last role as the evil magistrate. Yes, undoubtedly it was a constant source of shame for the ex-star. Hmm. One moment, Mr. Wright. 
We are talking about motives here, yet you have only talked about Mr. Hammer. It almost seems as if... as if it was Mr. Hammer who had killed D. Vasquez, and not the other way around. What motive would Miss Vasquez have? Y yes, that's right. According to what you say, I would have no reason to kill Hammer. He was a good source of income for me, and I never get rid of useful men. It's a policy of mine. Mr. Wright, please explain Miss Vasquez's motive for murder. She had no motive, Your Honor. What's that now? It was Mr. Hammer who was out for blood. All Miss Vasquez did was push him off the stairs, in self-defense. What's that now? It's simple. Mr. Hammer was intending to kill Miss Vasquez. What? What? Your Honor, Jack Hammer drugged Mr. Powers with sleeping pills. Jack Hammer snuck into the dressing room and stole the Steel Samurai costume. Jack Hammer wore the costume to fool the security lady into thinking he was Powers. Then Jack Hammer made his way to the trailer. And for what purpose, you ask? To kill D. Vasquez, who had ta so cruelly taken advantage of him the all those years. So, you did it, didn't you? Yes. I am guilty. It was me. Congratulations, Mr. Wright. I lose again. Mr. Edgeworth, where's D. Vasquez? In the waiting lobby, Your Honor, as calm and collected as ever. I see. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? It appears you have brought about yet another miracle. I. Thank you, Your Honor. I think not, Your Honor. Bill Powers was innocent. That he should be found so is only natural, not a miracle. Yes, yes, you're right. Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Will Powers. Not guilty. Hooray! That is all. The court is adjourned. October 20th, 1.12 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby number three. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. Thank you so much. I'm just glad you're okay. Yes, but it's sad. I know now that Mr. Hammer stole my costume. It's bad enough that he wanted to kill Miss Vasquez. But to think that he tried to frame me for murder, it makes me sad. Tell me why, Mr. Wright. Uh-huh. Tell me, why did Mr. Hammer want to blame me? Well, this is what I think. Mr. Hammer wanted to put the blame on you because... It's because you were the Steel Samurai. Be because I was the Steel Samurai? Mr. Hammer was a big star once but he was reduced to acting in a kid's show, and is the villain to boot. The kids love the Steel Samurai, and so he hated you. Uh, I think I understand. 
he could have just told me. I, I would have changed places with him any time. I think you're missing the point. Thank you. I I'm just glad it's all over. So am I. So am I. Congratulations, WP. Oh, oh. <laughs> Thanks to you, I'll be able to don the Steel Samurai outfit once more. I can't wait to get back into that sweaty costume and... Hmm? Is something wrong? N no, of course not. Ah! N Nick Edgeworth. Say something, right? I'm not good at small talk. Huh? What? Um, that was too bad, Edgeworth. You don't waste any time gloating, do you? No, I really want to thank you. Vasquez would have gotten away if you hadn't stepped in. Ah, uh, uh, pleased to meet you. I'm Powers. <laughs> ah, uh, Edgeworth. I'm a big fan of your work, Mr. Powers. Liar. Right. I must say I hadn't expected to meet you again after all these years. Meet again? However, in retrospect it would have been better had we not met. Thanks to you I am saddled with unnecessary... feelings. Unnecessary feelings? Yes, unease and uncertainty. Aren't those kind of necessary? They only serve to get in my way. You listen to me, Phoenix Wright. Don't ever show your face in front of me again. That's what I came here to tell you. Um, Mr. Wright? Is this guy your friend? What? Friends as if? They're rivals. Rivals. Right, Nick? For now we are. I guess. Huh? Why do I get the feeling I'm missing something? Come on, Nick, tell me. What's the deal with you and Edgeworth? And so the curtain closes on another trial. I caused quite a stir by revealing that accident from five years ago. It was the talk of the town. Thankfully, Global Studios rethought its programming change. They went back to making kid shows again. Nick, this is it. The new show starts today. You're going to watch it with me, right? I'll admit, I was kind of surprised. I didn't think they'd seriously go through with it. You have to buy the trading cards too, okay? We have to trade with Cody and that assistant. Fine, fine, I'll do it. Isn't it great that WP gets to play the lead again? I wonder if they'll show his real face this time. I don't know. I don't think the world is ready for the real world powers. December 25th, 10 o'clock, 10 08 a.m., right in Cola offices. Hey, hey, Nick. Do you know if there's any good waterfalls around here? Waterfalls? Dare I ask why? Done, Nick. Isn't it obvious? I need a waterfall to stand under, preferably a freezing one. Oh, is that a part of your spirit medium training? Of course, except I've been slacking off lately. I need to brave the elements and be forged anew under the rushing spring waters. Um, okay. I don't know about any falls per se, but Gord Lake is pretty close. Oh, darn. Sorry, but them's the breaks. Couldn't you just take a cold shower or something? Good idea! So much for the rushing spring waters. Next in the news, a large unidentified animal was sighted at Gord Lake. 
town is buzzing with excitement. Locals are calling it Gordy in the tip of the hat to Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. Though its namesake Nessie proved to be a hoax, locals are confident that their Gordy is the real deal. Ooh, boring. Can't they show real news for a change? Nick? The water pressure is kind of low in that shower. You want more pressure, huh? Why don't you go down to the fire department and have them spray you with a hose? Good idea, Nick! Apparently ESP is no aid in detecting sarcasm. We interrupt this program to bring you an in special news bulletin. Strange occurrences continue at Gord Lake, but this time it's murder. Gord Lake again? The body of a man was found in the lake early this morning. A suspect was apprehended. Sources inside the police department revealed that the suspect's name was Miles Edwards, age 24. Edwards was an up-and-coming prosecution attorney known for his skill and connections. He was guaranteed a long and rewarding career. Has he thrown it all away? Edgeworth? What's going on? Edgeworth wouldn't, would never do something like... Nick? Yipes, Maya. The fireman yelled at me when I called him. We've got bigger things to worry about than that. They arrested Edgeworth. What? You mean the prosecutor? Yeah, he's a suspect. In a murder. What? When? Where? Whom? Why? How? I don't know. Let's go find out, Nick. December 25th, Detention Center, Visitor's Room. You know, Nick, we've all been in here one time or another, haven't we? I guess it comes with a ter territory. I'm not sure it's something we should mention to too many people. Ah! Hey, Edgeworth. Come back. What are you doing here? Nick, I don't think he's in a very good mood. Well, he is in detention. Were you in a good mood when you were here? So you've come to laugh at the fallen attorney. Then laugh. Laugh! Well, why aren't you laughing? Nick, should we be laughing? Nah, it's a trick. Laugh and he'll get mad. Or burst into tears. Edgeworth. We don't have so much free time that we could spend it coming down here to laugh at you. Yes, you do. Actually, he's right. I hoped you wouldn't come. I didn't want you to see me. Not like this. Hey, I didn't want to see you either, believe me. What happened? Edgeworth, tell me what happened. Why should I? What are you going to do about it? Duh! We're gonna help you, that's what. Help me, you? Don't be ridiculous. Sorry? You're a novice. You've only been in three trials. Hey! I'm sure you've gotten lucky and won all three, but your luck's bound to run out someday. You need real skill, right? Experience. Nick, he's insulting you. Nick? Why am I always the one who has to get angry? Whoops. The murder took place at Gord Lake, correct? Yes, late last night. The lake is a long way away from your offices in the court. Why are you down there? I see no need to tell you. Mr. Edgeworth, you... you didn't really... Gordy. Huh? I went to see Gordy. Gordy? What's that? I'll... tell you later. I want Edgeworth to talk to us. Your attorney's badge. Edgeworth, let me defend you. Ha! <laughs> Good one, right? But I'm not that hard up. Not yet. What do you mean by that? Me? Trust a wet behind the ears lawyer with only three trials under his belt? Never. What? My case is near hopeless, right? Every defense attorney I've talked to has turned me down. What? Simply put, they were afraid they'd lose. It occurred to me that it might be my fault that they lacked confidence. After all, I did get every single one of their clients declared guilty. I don't believe it. Regardless, I don't want you involved in this. You in particular, I cannot ask to do this. 
So yeah, he's very uncooperative. Edgeworth, this is really hard for me to ask, but you didn't do it, right? Right? Think what you will. I only have one request. Huh? Stay out of this case. Why? B -b -b Nick is trying to help you. I know, I know that. But I don't want your help, okay? Why not? Look, just go away and leave me alone. Nick? Mr. Edgeworth did it, didn't he? Maya, let's go investigate elsewhere. But Nick... Gord Lake Nature Park. December 25th and... Uh, let me read that correctly. December 25th, Gord Lake Park entrance. This is where it happened? Yeah, Gord Lake is in the middle of this park. I can see some police walking around in there. Questioning people, probably. Hey, isn't that Detective Gumshoe over there? Well, pal, there's enough of us here. Fa anyone found anything? S sorry, sir. Nothing. Idiot! The trial's tomorrow. We need to. F we need clues on the double. B but, sir, there weren't any clues. That's why we arrested that attorney, Mr. Edgeworth. It's clear, sir. He's the one who. Shut up! Just you try saying that again. I'll. Uh, I'll make you sorry if you do. I mean, just get out of my face, pal. Y yes, sir. Detective Gumshoe's kind of scary today. Recruits! Bleh. Ah! Eek! Hey, you're the hairy guy! Harry Butts! Right, Phoenix Wright. Will you ever learn my name? And just what are you doing here, pal? Investigating? Huh? Um, well, yes, I suppose. Well, I'm here to help. Ask me anything you want. Bring it! He seems different than usual. I wonder what's up. Um, Mr. Edgeworth hasn't actually asked us to, to defend him yet. Huh? Oh, y you don't say. I feel winter's chill from the bare leaf trees today. <sighs> what is it about winter that turns people into poets? I don't know, but my toes are starting to feel numb. Yes, my poetry has that effect on some people. <laughs> what happened? Detective Gumshoe? Do you know what happened here? Huh? You don't know, pal? No. Wow, well, okay, Mr. Head in the Fluffy Pink Clouds lawyer. Head in the... What? Never mind. Never mind, I'll tell ya. It happened last night. About 15 minutes after midnight. There was a boat out on the Gold Lake. In that boat were two men. One of those men shot the other with a pistol. And the shooter was Mr. Edgeworth? A cop who arrived on the scene arrested him. How did he get there so fast? Well, there was a witness. When the report came in, we raced to the lake. A witness? We'll get to that in a little bit. Edgeworth. You don't think Edgeworth is a murderer? Absolutely not. It's impossible. I don't care if there's a witness either. I don't believe a lick of it. Right. Who cares what the witness says? I care. You really believe in him, don't you, detective? Of course I do. But the police are pretty sure he's the killer. Nobody's even really taking this investigation that seriously. Oh, no. After all the help Mr. Edgeworth has been to us, I do imagine no one's standing up to take his side. Well, at least you are, detective. At least you are. Defense request. Is it true? No one will take Mr. Edgeworth's case? Yeah. He's a bit of a celebrity. If you defended him and lost, your reputation be sure to suffer. What's more, the case against him is, well, it's pretty solid. I suppose it, I suppose it would be if they have a witness. Hey, pal. Don't tell me you're going to turn your back on him, too. Remember the Steel Samurai. Mr. Edgeworth helped you get that client declared innocent. I, I know. I went to Edgeworth. I tried. He really doesn't want us to represent him. Especially not us, he said. What? Well, that doesn't make any sense, pal. You should have heard him talking about you after the Steel Samurai case. He kept saying, right, 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 over and over. Nick? I'm not sure that's a good sign. Neither am I. 
Why wouldn't he want your help? I don't get it. I'm trying to add a bit of a Brooklyn accent to the raspiness. Who is this witness? Uh, sorry, pal. That's confidential. Anyway, the witness saw everything, apparently. I'm sure they'll turn up at the trial tomorrow. Was there... Was there only that one witness? Yep, it was pretty cold out on the lake last night. And it was Christmas Eve after all. Still, we're being thorough. You never know what you're going to turn up another, when you're going to turn up another witness. That's why we're checking, that's why we're here today checking things out. So far, we're coming up empty. Oh, it's Christmas today. I'd forgotten. What are you getting me for Christmas, Nick? Dr. Santa. Jesus, Nick. Detective comes here, sir. What? Find something? Um, no, sir. Not yet. But there was a call from the precinct. They want to hold an investigation briefing. A briefing? Right. I'm off. Oh. Sorry, pal. I guess you heard. I gotta go. Any last things you want me to talk about before I head back? Uh... Let's go with the autopsy report. Well, yes. Do you have any information on the victim? Sorry. I haven't worked up the autopsy report yet. I'm still waiting for it myself. Actually, say, if you get the time, drop by the precinct. We can talk more there, pal. Not coming back, detective? Um, probably not, pal. So, what should we do if we have something to talk to you about? Alright. Here, I'll show you how to get to the precinct. Come down to see me anytime. Detective Gumshoe gave you directions to the police station. Oh, hey, Detective Gumshoe. What? We'd like to take a look around the park. Can we walk around? Yeah, no problem, pal. You got my permission. You know, Nick, I think there's something to be said for talking to people when they're busy. Yeah, they don't have time to think about not giving you information. Right, now let's get investigating. December 25th, Gord Lake Public Beach. Wowzers, this is Gord Lake? Yep. I'm not sure it warrants a wowzers, though. Hmm, probably not. But hey, look at that snack stand. Samurai dogs. I want a samurai dog, please. I bet they're great. With a name like Samurai Dog, how could they not be? They're a little behind the times, though. The kids are all into the pink princess now. I mean, like, you know? Nope. <laughs> huh, someone left one of these poppers here. You know, you pull the string, and it goes pop. Yeah, I know the ones. You see them a lot around New Year's. Hey, Nick, it might be a clue. Let's take it. Come on, admit it. You just want to pop it, right? Was it that obvious? A popper. Hmm. Let's go ahead and take it. I suppose it couldn't hurt. Huh? Where'd it go? I already put it in my pocket. December 25th, Gord Lake Woods. I like it here, Nick. Look, someone's camping. They've, they've got guts camping at the scene of a murder. Hey, hey, Nick. If they were camping here last night, they might know something about the murder. That's true. Good call, Maya. Let's go talk to them. This camera is a mic and some sort of attachment. It must take pictures when triggered by a noise. Wow, cool. Let's try it out. <coughs> Hi, I'm Nick. Maybe I'm not saying it loud enough. Hey, I'm Nick. Huh. Nick! Will you stop that? Maybe it's broken? Don't kick it. Maybe it isn't set to respond to voices. Well, what then? I know. A party popper? Yep, it responded. Hey, you, get your hands off of that. I can't do a southern voice. Hey, you, get your hands off of that. There we go. Eek. What in the Sam Hill? Look what you done now. There goes a whole roll of film. Ah, well, huh? Sorry. Sorry's nice, but it don't pay my bills. Y'all know how much roll of film costs. I'll pay you back. What were y'all thinking sending off a potty pop in this place like this? Uh, well. What? Don't try to play stupid with me just because you think I'm some country bumpkin. Yeah, I know how y'all yanks think. I say those other folks with their exaggerated brawl, they must be dumb. Well, let me tell you this. Just because I'm dumb don't mean we all are. 
Nick, help. Who are you now? Her chaperone? Y yeah, uh, no. Rather, uh, we're sort of. Just figure out what y'all are gonna say and say it for Jesus' sake. God, I'd rather sit through one of Pop's draw than listen to you stutter all day. Oh boy. I guess we should pay her for the film. Watch it! Yes, ma'am. On second thought, I'll pay later. I'm really sorry. I, uh, this is my badge. Huh? Aren't badges supposed to be all shiny and impressive? You a cop or something? Um, I'm a lawyer. What? Y'all ain't gonna try and pull one of those lawsuits on me over that film now. Cause I'll have y'all know I'm a fighter and I wrestle mean looking things in you. No, that's not it at all. We're here investigating a murder that took place on, here on the lake. Murder? Sounds cool. Why didn't y'all say that in the first place? Go ahead, ask me anything you like. Finally, some cooperation. You too, y'all can come out of hiding now. I won't bite hard. Come to think of it, where did Maya get to? S sorry. It's, uh, no, I'm... Ugh. Hold on one second. I did Lada's voice for a second. Sorry, I was feeling a little overwhelmed. The culture gap and all. Never you mind, honey. I can dock a yank for you, for you if... <laughs> if it pleases you. Th thanks. I think I'll be okay. Great then, I'm Lada Hart, but y'all can call me Lada. I'm here photograph photographing meteor showers for a research project. Mada, please meet ya. Oh yeah, was that when was that murder anyway? I ain't seen much television lately. Happened late last night late in the night on Christmas Eve. That so, Christmas Eve? Man on the boat was shot. Did you see anything? Well, let me see. A boat, you say? I reckon I might have seen one. Not sure though. Y'all gotta remember I've been watching this here lake for a good three days now. I've seen enough boats to choke a mule. Kinda hard to remember which I've seen when. So what is it you do, Lotta? Huh? Me? <laughs> Y'all don't really want to know that, do ya? Actually, I'm a research student at Country U, right in the heart of the Heartland. Wow, neat. Nick, he's a research student at a university. Country U. Uh, so I hear. So, so when did you come up here? Hmm, let me see. I guess it was about three days ago. What are you photographing? Didn't I tell you all that already? Meteors. Yep, meteor showers. Falling stars? That's quite a camera you have there. Y'all better know it. It's a German made. A genuine Solingen. Isn't that where they make knives? Fun fact, uh, that is actually a town, I think, in Germany uh, that's famous for making knives. So, cool fun fact of the day. Um, so what's that device you have stuck to the camera? Huh? Device? It started moving all by itself when I fired my party popper. Oh, that? That triggered the stu shutter whenever it detects a certain sound. It's programmed to pick up loud noises right now. A, prog a programmable camera? Neat. Lotta's camera added to the court record. December 25th, Police Department Criminal Affairs. Looks like Detective Gumshoe isn't here. Something wrong, miss? Hmm? Turning yourself in? Okay, what'd you do? Shoplifting? Larceny? Public indecency? N no, none of those things. We're looking for Detective Gumshoe. Is he around? Gumshoe? Oh yeah, he's in the meeting right now. I don't think he'll be out anytime soon. Okay, we'll come back. You do that. Oh, and go straight home and stay out of trouble. No more shoplifting. You got that? Do I look like a criminal or something? Okay, real quick. Lotta? Yeah? So your camera, it triggers on loud explosion noises. Uh, yep. <laughs> yuck. Actually, the victim in this case we're researching was shot with a pistol. A pistol? Right. Now, wouldn't a gunshot make a similar noise to our party popper? I guess it would. Your camera didn't get a picture of the murder, did it? Hey, y'all are pretty bright. Huh? I see what you're saying. Tell you what, I'll have a look-see at my film. Would have been a photo taken late last night. I checked them once, don't remember if there was anything on them, though. 
But what if I got something? I could be a witness to a genuine murder. Yeehaw! I'll go check that film. Y'all come back now, you hear? She went inside her SUV. I guess we should come back later. December 25th. Boat rental shop. Nick, what is this place? Boat rental shop. Closed for Christmas, it seems. I guess a murder taking place on one of the boats won't, won't be good for business either. Boats! I've never ridden on a boat. Really? Well, how about we go on one once we finish, once the trial is finished? Hey, good idea. You bet. Okay, I had to go back here, and then I have to go all the way back to the woods. It's a bit tedious. I guess the Detective Gumshoe is still not meeting. Hey! Thanks for coming down, pal! Detective Gumshoe! We just finished the meeting, for better or for worse. I get the feeling we're going to be- we're in for some bad news. Do you know anything about the victim yet? No, no, still can't ID him. Has Mr. Edgeworth said anything? Not a word. The meeting. So how did the meeting go? I can't tell you, pal. You're a lawyer. True. You know, I don't know what to believe anymore. Sure, Mr. Edgeworth's human like you or me. Still, I got the feeling that if he had done something wrong, he wouldn't go hiding. That's just the kind of guy he is. Why can't anyone else see that? So they think that Mr. Edgeworth did it? Well, the trial's starting tomorrow, it's scheduled. I see. Um, hey, in the end, you did tell us about the meeting. Don't go telling anyone else, pal. Yes, sir. And do me a favor. Stand by Mr. Edgeworth. He needs your help, and you're the one. He needs help, and you're the ones to help him. I'm sure he's got some reason why he won't talk to us. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. Trusting Edgeworth. De Detective Gumshoe, how come you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? Well, I think that'd be obvious. We've got a strong working relationship, us two. We work, we trust each other, and that's how it works. A working relationship? See, Mr. Edgeworth always gets his defendants declared guilty every time. Yeah, his methods might be a little extreme at times, but there's a reason. He trusts our investigation scene. He gets, he trusts us to get the right man. It's a bit sad to hear because from what we've seen so far every single time we've seen detective gumshoe he's brought in the wrong person <laughs> that's why i work extra hard pal we've got to earn that trusty places in us i see mr edgeworth is a man you can trust and you have my word on that the autopsy report i was wondering did you ever get an, that autopsy report oh that yeah i made a copy for you Thank you. Nick? Huh. Can you show me that photo of the victim? That face. Someone you know? I... I don't know. I just have this feeling that I met him somewhere a long time ago. What is it? Oh, nothing. Just something's been bothering me. Could you show me that autopsy report once more? Hey, I, I remember now. This guy. This is a lawyer that was at that office Mia worked at. I met him once when I went there to hang out with Sis. That office? Wait, you mean Grossberg's office? Right, that guy. That was the last name I expected to come up. Maybe I should go talk to him, for old time's sake. December 25, Grossberg Law Offices. It's been a while since I was here last. Mr. Grossberg is out as usual. Hey Nick, look at the wall. That painting is still missing. Mia must have known about the deal with Mr. Grossberg in Red White. She kept track of all of White's extortion and blackmail rackets. Looks like she might have found something. December 25th, Gord Lake Woods. Hey, y'all. Lotta. Wait up a sec. We got a bingo. Bingo. My automatic camera took two pictures last night. Hey. 
This is them. Take a look. Wait. Say, say, he's shooting him with a pistol. It looks like that, yes. But you can't really tell who it, who that is shooting. Yeah, well, there was enough fog out there last night to strangle a bullfrog. But, you know, seeing these photos reminded me of something. What? Or what? I saw that murder happen. I'm a witness. What? Are you serious? Of course. How do you forget... Never mind. Y'all reckon I should tell the cops? I reckon so. What's that? Now don't y'all go trying to mock my accent. I'm a sensitive lady. Hey, so I'm off to talk to the cops. Y'all can have this photo. Later. Wait, Lotta. What? Can't y'all see I'm kinda busy? Tell us what you saw too, please. Ah, that's try, honey, but I wasn't born yesterday. I'm a witness, and that means I'm on the side of justice, and that means the cops. I'd sooner in the south side of the north bound skunk than you tell you. A lot of Don't let your don't let it get in your Don't let it get your skivvies in a bunch. Friends today, enemies tomorrow. Is that the other way around? No matter. I'm gone. Hey, maybe they'll let me do some testifying. Hot darn. She left. Well, that's one more witness. What do we do now, Nick? Well, if she saw something, there's not much we can do about it. The question is, what exactly did she see? I guess we'll find out in the trial tomorrow. Lake photo added to the court record. December 25th, Gord Lake Public Beach. Looks like the police have given up their questioning. Hey. Ah. Nick, I think Santa's mad at you. Long time no see, Nick. Nick, you know Santa? Wow, Nick and St. Nick. Hey, I see the connection. Don't be ridiculous. Dude, it's me. Larry, what are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm working my day job. I sell samurai dogs. Want one? Gotta get money for dates, you know. My girl Keontae deserves the best. Keonse. Not another model, I hope. Oh, Keonse is a fine, fine woman, Nick. It was her idea that I wear this costume. Costume. I don't know why I said costume. She's all like, you go, girlfriend, you know? She bought this costume for me. That, that's great, Larry. Wow, a Santa costume. She must be really nice. Whoa, cute. Nick, who's she? She's not your... Not uh, my... what? N no, she's not. I'm his partner, Maya Fay. I'm, uh, the little sister. Sister? Wow, Nick, it must be tough. Work a 9 to 5, having to take care of a little sister? No, I'm not Nick's sister, I'm my older sister's little sister. Huh, sounds great. Don't worry, Maya, he's not listening. What happened? Hey, Larry, there was a murder here late last night. You work here. Have you heard anything? Nick, you're wasting your time. Last night was Christmas Eve. He was with Keonse, obviously. He wouldn't have been standing out here in the cold. Oof. I think what you said just caught him off guard, Maya. No, it's just Keonse is not in town right now. She, uh, She's in Hawaii on a photo shoot. A motto. I knew it. Well, anyway, there was a murder here on the lake. The trial's tomorrow. Huh, me. The defendant is Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth. Um, Nick? Why would Larry know Edgeworth? Whoa, Nick! You don't mean that, Miles Edgeworth. Old Edgy? Yeah, he's a murder suspect. Whoa, murder? Huh? You know Mr. Edgeworth, Larry? Yeah, of course. Edgy was in the same class as us in grade school. What? So, Mr. Edgeworth was your classmate, Larry? Yeah, Nick, him, and I used to hang out all the time. Wow, I never knew. Don't get me wrong, he's always been kind of stick in the mud. Studying all the time, trying to be like father. Like his father? Yeah, Edgeworth's pop was a famous defense lawyer back in the day. Wow. 
Wait, you said defense lawyer? Yeah. Wait a second, but Mr. Edgeworth is a prosecuting attorney. What? Edgeworth's got a proboscis on his knee? No, no, he's a prosecuting attorney. It's like the total opposite of a defense lawyer. Huh, go figure. You always used to talk about defending the weak who are, no who are unable to defend themselves. Man, he used to go on about man's duties to society and all that. What a bore. I wonder what changed his mind, though. Do you know Nick? Nick? Anyways, samurai dogs. Um, um, tell me about the dogs. Huh? Oh, you mean the samurai dogs? Why are they samurai dogs? I, I mean, they kind of look gourd-shaped. Oh, uh, well, originally they were gourd dogs. You know, like guard dogs. Ouch. The samurai thing was Giance's idea. Oh, she's my woman, you know. She was all, change the name and you go, girlfriend. She made that banner. Man, the kids can't get enough of those samurai dogs. Um, something about that just seems wrong. Oh, and guess what? We're getting a ton of customers here at the lake. Well, with the big news. The big news? Yeah, Gordy. G Gordy? Good old Gordy. Um, what's Gordy? Huh? You mean you don't know? It's here in this very lake. A giant, mysterious monster. Gordy. Uh, monster? Yeah. Check it out. This is an article from yesterday's newspaper. Here's a photo. Wow, it's really real. Nick, a monster. A real monster. Um, yeah. It's probably just a log or something. Right? Hey, there's a quote here from a person who took the photo. Hmm, what's this? I set the camera to automatic, and when we got into frame, I heard a loud bang like an explosion followed by the sound of something slipping into the water. I wish I could have seen it. Why would there be a sound like an explosion? Larry, could I borrow this article from you? Sure, no problem. That'll be one million dollars. One million? Grow up, Larry. December 25th, Grossberg Law Offices. Urgh. Um. Ah, that old familiar clearing of the throat. Aha! You're me as something, are you not? I was her understudy, yes. Phoenix Wright. Aha! And you're... You're me as something too, are you not? A little sister yet. Yes. You've grown. You've come to look a lot like your sister, you know. It takes me back. Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Um... Mr. Grossberg, sir? Hmm? Ah, yes, I beg your pardon. Of course, you came here to discuss something. What is it, then? Something the matter? There was a murder last night. A murder? You haven't heard? I, uh, just got up, you see. Well, Miles Edgeworth shot someone with a pistol. Edgeworth? What? Who? Well, the identity of the victim is still unknown. This is terrible news indeed. Because he hadn't heard anything. Mr. Grossberg, whatever happened to that painting? Oh yes, I do not think it shall ever come back. Be coming back home to this office. I can exactly claim it as stolen. I suppose it's just my just desserts, old bitter desserts. The autopsy report. Because remember, the victim in this case might have said that she remembers seeing the victim at Grossberg's office. Hmm? Strange. I feel as though I've seen this man somewhere before. Ah! Did you remember? He was a lawyer, here in my office. That's Hammond, Robert Hammond. Mr. Hammond? And you say this is the man Miles Edgeworth shot? Who is this Hammond guy, anyway? Mr. Hammond, he was the defense attorney in that case. That case? Yes, the DL6 incident. 
Yell six. Why does that sound familiar? Perhaps you'll remember? I'm sure someone mentioned it during the trial for Mia's murder. That was the incident where the police were so at a loss they used a spirit medium. Wait. You don't mean... Is that medium my mother? Yes, my dear. A spirit medium, Misty Fay, your mother, contacted the victim of the spirit. But the case was a loss. No conviction was made. The DL6 incident, yes, happened 15 years ago. A very strange case indeed. Never caught the criminal, right? Correct. Mr. Fay used her powers to talk to the spirit of the late victim. Her testimony led to the charges being laid against one man. Mr. Hammond won the case, and the suspect was declared innocent. And the police blamed my mother, calling her a fraud. You were the one who helped her out, right, Mr. Grossberg? Uh, uh yes, 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 quite. Thank you. No, please, don't mention it. DL6. Never thought I'd hear that name again. But wait. What does that case have to anything to do with Mr. Edgeworth? It has everything to do with Mr. Edgeworth, my dear. The victim in the DL6 incident was none other than his father, Gregory Edgeworth. Wh what? His father? If you want to know more, you should ask him yourself. Show him this. I'm sure he'll talk to you. Wait. This is a photograph of my mother. Misty Fay's photo added to the court record. What's this? I was hoping you'd gotten the message the first time. Edgeworth, what about your defense? It's no concern of yours. Guess he hasn't found anyone yet. Edgeworth? It's only been a matter of hours since you last visited. Yet you've made incredible progress in your investigation. I'll admit it, I'm impressed, right? You were always single-minded in your work, though. But you start on something you always see through, don't you? About the DL6 incident. Right, DL6. I didn't want you to find out about it. That is why I refused your offer to defend me. I'm sorry if it sounded like I thought you weren't up to the job. I just wanted to keep you away from DL6. So, do you still think it would have been better for me to stay away? I don't know, but I see no point in hiding anything from you now. Very well. Ask whatever you like, and I will answer to the best of my abilities. The DL6 incident was when my father died. Right before my eyes, he was shot and killed, and I saw it all. My memories from that time are foggy. I suppose it's a self-defense mechanism. In any case, a suspect was arrested. A man. It's pretty clear he was the one and only who could have killed my father. As the spirit medium they used to talk to my late father said the same thing. It was an attorney by the name of Robert Hammond that cleared the suspect's name. And Hammond is the victim in the Gord Lake murder? Correct. Um, that spirit medium, that was my mom. What? You mean your... It's strange. I thought that terrible incident was about to end, and now... This. About to end? The DL6 incident happened 15 years ago. 15 years ago, on December 28th. December 28th? The statute of limitations run on the case runs out in three days. What? Um, Nick, what does that mean? When a case's statute of limitations runs out, legally the case never happened. Three days from now, DL6 will be closed. Forever. What happened to the suspect? The one who got off innocent? I don't know. He disappeared from the public view. Nobody knows where to. If he's still alive, he'd be about 50 years old now. I guess I can understand why he'd go into hiding. 
be hard to live a normal life after being a murder suspect in such a big case. Um, so was your father a lawyer? He was. Gregory Edgeworth. He was quite famous at the time, apparently. So you were sort of trying to follow in his footsteps. I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> Would have thought there'd be a photo. Edgeworth, did you shoot him? What do you think, right? I don't think you're the kind to point a gun at anyone, no. So you didn't shoot him? No, I didn't. It wasn't me. Right. It pains me to ask you this now. I know. You want us to defend you. Yes, will you? Uh, who could have guessed this day would come? Not me. It's my chance to finally pay you back. Pay him back? Pay me back? For well, what? I don't remember ever doing anything for you. Never mind. I guess you don't really need to know. Huh. My letter of request. Please give it to Detective Gumshoe. Edgeworth's request put in pocket. Well, I guess we should... What's that? Earthquake! Nick! It's big one! What? It's calming down. Whew, that was scary. Huh? Where's Edgeworth? There! He's on the floor in a ball, shivering. I guess he doesn't do so well with earthquakes. I've heard of running, but curling up in a ball? Well, I guess we're done. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't seem like he's going to stand up anytime soon. Let's go, Nick. Uh, right. You have to give Edgeworth's letter request to Detective Gumshoe. So speaking of earthquake, I don't know if this is a speaking of earthquakes thing, but during that earthquake, you didn't move an inch. This guard monitors the visitor's room. He hasn't moved an inch since I came in. A real pro. December 25th, Police Department, Criminal Affairs. What's going on here? Eek! What's wrong, Detective? This wild lady comes in here just a while ago, says she came to talk to y'all after hearing what Mr. Rat had to say. What's all this about, pal? A lot of heart. Why are you going around find more witnesses? Want to give Mr. Edgeworth a dent death sentence, pal? Can I just talk about something real quick about the Ace Attorney series? Is that something weird that I've noticed, at least in the first few games, I haven't played the sequels yet, or I haven't played the fifth and sixth games yet, so I don't know if it pursues there. Uh, or if it continues there. I think that means the same thing. But one thing that I've noticed is for some reason they treat having more witnesses as a death sentence. Like, they, they say like, oh no, you're finding more witnesses. But it's better to find more perspectives on a story because then you can poke holes in certain pieces of evidence or poke holes in the testimonies. And that's how you find the truth. And if everything does point to, you know, your client being guilty, and everything does seem to work out like they're guilty, then if they're guilty, then good. Like, it, it just seemed weird to me. I don't... No, not at all. Just, I mean, she did see something. There's nothing I can do about that. Can't go around covering up evidence. Uh, you trying to say something about the way I do my job? No, sir. See, a lot of testimony. So, what did Miss Hart say? She says she saw Mr. Edgeworth fire the pistol. What? She even had a photograph to prove it. Right, I saw it too. You really, really can't tell from the photo who it is shooting. That's why she said she's going to enlarge the photo. She said it'll drop the quality of my, but, it, but it'll show us who's who. She can do that? Okay, so there's going to be an enlarged photograph that shows Edgeworth in the act. Great. Just great. In any case, she's going to be the one testifying tomorrow. Huh? What happened to the other witness? Well, apparently there was a cancellation. 
cancellation. I'm afraid tomorrow is going to be a life or death for poor Mr. Edgeworth. We got a witness who said she saw the very moment of the murder. And we got a photo taken when the shot rang out. I'd say that sounds like a pretty unwinnable case. Wait, what did Mia used to say? If he's innocent, there's gotta be something I've overlooked. It sounds like Mr. Edgeworth is going to state is going to ask the state for it to assign a public defender. I was just asked to file the paperwork. But you still got time, pal. Go talk to him again for me, please. You have to convince him. You have to make him let you defend him. Please. I know you're the only one who can do it, pal. You're the only one who can save Mr. Edgeworth. Well, luckily, we've already got a request for defense right over here. Look what I got. Hey, you did it, pal. Glad I waited till the last minute to file those papers. I'll rip them up and start new ones for you. Thanks, detective. I'll see you in court tomorrow, then. Good luck, pal. Hey! You guys feel that earthquake a little while back? I was worried. Worried? We're fine. I've lived out here my whole life. I'm pretty used to them by now. Oh, I wasn't worried about you two. I was worried about Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, right. He did seem to overreact a little now that you mention it. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. It was a pretty big quake. I'm going to check on him. You two go eat and get your rest for tomorrow's trial. Later. I wonder what it is with Mr. Edgeworth and earthquakes. I wonder. I was never that scared of them when he was in school. Then again, I was only in the same class as him for fourth grade. He transferred to another school after that. I wonder what happened to Edgeworth. December 26th, 9.44 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Karma. That's right, I'm Fred Von Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. He's a god of prosecution, right? A god. Not a single case. He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Hmm. Sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. Hmph. <laughs> You don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. It's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of ten. Ugh. So, so he was your teacher then, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. Now he's trying to get you found guilty? What a creep. Oh wait, maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 years! He's as ruthless as me times 20. That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia... Um, Maya? Uh-huh. We could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh. I can't. Sorry, I tried. I really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. My powers are weak again. Oh man, what bad timing. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. I hope so. What are you whispering about? Uh, oh, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. December 26th, 10 o'clock a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Von Karma, is the prosecution ready? Fool. You seriously think that I would stand here were I not completely prepared? Right, my apologies. He's even got the judge scared. Very well, your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Ah, uh, uh, nothing of course, that should be fine. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? 
I call the detective in charge of this case. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. Describe the incident. Now. Yes, sir! Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late, late Christmas Eve around midnight. There was one boat in the very middle of the lake. There were two men on the boat. Now there happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake. At 12 a.m. at 12:10 a.m. she heard two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. It went toward the boat rental shop. Hmm. Overhead map added to the court record. Justify to the court about your arrest. Now. Wait, Mr. Von Karma. Yes. Actually, I'm the one who that's supposed to be handling these proceedings. Wrong. There is only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. Y yes, of course. You're quite right. No, he's not. Oh boy, this is going to be a tough one. The arrest of Edgeworth. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. But, the next morning a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm, I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. You received a call from a man? Uh, yep. But you said there was a woman camping there. She was the one who heard the two gunshots, right? That woman and the man who called in the report are two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. Ugh. Their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I've summoned the woman who was camping. The woman who was camping. A lot of heart. What happened next, detective? But the next morning a body was found in the lake. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. It was shot through the heart. Fatally. Judge... Here's the bullet. It didn't strike bone, so its shape is preserved well. Very well. Or not, not uh, sorry, that's Detective Gumshoe's voice. Very well. The court accepts this bullet into evidence. The judge isn't really doing much right now, so I kind of forgot how to do his voice for a sec. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. Murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe, that is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. All right. Sorry, Your Honor. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. What about the pistol made it decisive evidence? Tsk, tsk, tsk. Ah. Is the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. There were fingerprints on the moi on the pistol found in the boat. There were clear prints prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. What? Order, order. So Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon. Yes, Your Honor. Judge, this is the weapon in question. Uh, accepted into evidence. Pistol added to the court record. Members of the court, we now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. Detective. Yes, sir! Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Y yes, the ballistic markings in the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. Hey, Nick. What does he mean, ballistic markings? Shocking. 
to imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Nick, he's glaring at me. Tsk. Very well. I'll explain. Actually, judge, you do it. Eh, me. Um, ahem. Ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was without a doubt fired from this pistol. This pistol, which as you may recall was covered in the defendant's own fingerprints. Uh, order, order. This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. Well, Judge, I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this point. However, you wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, and so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess, which will last ten minutes. Judge. Yes? What are you doing? A ten minute recess. Now. But wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man. Y yes. Ahem. This court will take a 10 minute recess. Who's running this court anyway? December 26th, 1109 AM, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Edworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon. Uh, hmm. And that foggy photo makes one thing clear. The only one who could have shot that man was the person in the photo. True. Was that you in the boat? Yes, it, it was me. What? B but you must believe me. I didn't shoot him. Then who did? I... I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Then the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but... I thought at the time that he had shot himself. You mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I can come up with. Huh. How am I going to convince anyone of that? Say Maya. Huh? W what? Any progress with Mia? Oh. Sorry. It's no good. Uh. I know. I'm no good for anything, am I, Nick? If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? No, of course not. I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. Even if you don't actually help, it's the thought that counts, right? It's okay, Nick. You don't have to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or defense. What's more, I'm a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. Ah, uh, everyone has their off days. I mean, I've just been getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck is going to run out. Really? Whoa, right. Don't jinx this case any worse than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Oh? Oh, sorry. Whoops. Court is back in session. Mr. Von Karma, call your witness. Yes. Will Miss Lotta Hart take the stand? Lotta Hart, you are a research student at the university? That I am. Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And don't add anything trivial or subjective. Understand. Y'all need to learn some manners. Understand? Yeah, I understand. I understand. Uh, very well. Your testimony, please. Witnesses account. It was Christmas Eve. I, just after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. I heard this bang come up from the lake. When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Then there was another bang. There wasn't nary a thing on that lake but that boat. 
enough. Huh? Judge, she happened to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo, accepted as evidence. Well, this is a surprise. This looks like the very moment of the murder. Uh, order. I will remove you from the court if I do not have order immediately. As the witness testified, she looked at the lake when she heard the shot. There were no other boats on that lake. So the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes, it was the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. Order, order, order. I will have order. Well, Judge, the evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well, this court finds the defendant. Wait, Your Honor, I haven't cross-examined the witness yet. A cross-examination? We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? This photo is worth a thousand words, and they all read guilty. You lose. Or, do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Very well. If you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then I will have you held in contempt of court. Uh, Nick? Contempt? Contempt of court, you know? I guess I understand. Well, what are you going to do? Do you really think there was a contradiction with the facts in your testimony? I think I noticed one little thing. Wow, I'm impressed, Nick. I didn't notice anything. Right, let's take him on. Y yeah, I got a bad feeling about this. I understand. I will cross-examine the witness. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Very well. I pray for your sake that this isn't a waste of time. Witnesses account. I was in my car. Why were you camping there anyway? I'm a research student at my university. I was taking pictures to use my research. What research? This all sounds suspicious. Miss Hart. Could you be more specific about your research? What does the witness's motive in camping by the lake have to do with this case? The answer is nothing. I object to this line of questioning. Objection sustained. Wait now, I'm the one who says that. Well then say it already. Objection sustained. Thanks for nothing, your honor. I heard this bang come up from the lake. So you weren't looking at the lake at that time? Nope. I looked after I heard that noise. She said that already. I asked you to find contradictions, not to leisurely chat with the witness. I looked out the window, I saw two gents standing in a boat. Could you clearly see the two men? Just look at the picture, clear enough for you? Uh oh. Wait a second, I wasn't asking you about the photo. I was asking if you saw the two men. Uh, yeah, well, of course. The witness has testified that she saw them. There's also a photo. You best look elsewhere for your precious contradictions. He jumped in quick. He's hiding something. Then there was another bang. Were you watching the very moment the shot rang out? Well, yeah, sure. You're asking meaningless questions. Meaningless. Contradictions, Mr. Wright. Not meaningless babble. Juan Karma, I think I hate you trying to keep me from t talking to the witness. To what end? Great. Enough. I think we've heard all we need to hear, Mr. Wright. It seems you are unable to find a contradiction in the testimony worth noting. 
B but your honor... You keep your promise, Mr. Wright. I am afraid that I will have to penalize, penalize any further outbursts by holding you in contempt of court. And if that happens, you'll have to leave the courtroom immediately. Understood. Uh, uh-huh. Nick, a lot of testimony is fishy, Nick. Real fishy. I know what you mean, but if I can't say anything, what else can I do? I believe we've covered the, in the evidence sufficiently to make a decision. Then pass your judgment. Very well. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the stand. Uh, who was that? It was me. Maya. Is something wrong? Do you need to use the facilities? No, I do not. Lot of heart. Your testimony stinks. It's unclear whether you were actually looking at that lake. It's highly doubtful that you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Tell us the truth. This is a matter of life or death. Lotta, did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night? Did you see him fire that pistol? You will stand down. The court does not acknowledge the defense's outburst. Answer me, Lotta. What's the big idea treating me like some kind of criminal? I saw him, I swear it. I saw Edgeworth. Enough. Judge, declare the defense in contempt of court. Y yes, y yes, of course. I'm sorry, but you were warned. Guard, escort Mr. Wright out of the courtroom. He is in contempt of court and must leave. No. No. Wait. I, I was the one who made the outburst, Your Honor. Nick is innocent. Ha. Huh. What's the difference? All that remains is for the guilty verdict to be declared. Isn't that right, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Wrong. What? Did you hear what Miss Hart just said? She said she clearly saw Mr. Edgeworth. That was not in the testimony. That changes her testimony and I have a right to cross-examine her again. Order, 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 order. You're in contempt of court. It's too late for wild claims. Judge, sustain my objection. I'm sorry, Mr. Von Kama, but I cannot. What? Miss Lotta Hart has made a new testimony. The defense does have a right to cross-examine her again. But he is in contempt of court. No, I am. If you're going to arrest someone, arrest me. Hmm. Very well. Maya Faye, you will leave the courtroom immediately. Nick, I did what I could. You have to do the rest. Good luck. Maya. Puh. I care not for this melodrama. Very well, Mr. Wright. I do not tolerate badgering of my witnesses. I'm running out of time. Better find a contradiction in here or else. Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. I saw it clear as day. The man on the boat was Mr. Edgeworth. So the contradiction here, Lake Photo, she says she cl saw it clear as day, but her professional camera couldn't even see who it was. Gotcha. Gotcha, Miss Hart. Finally. What? You got what? Look at this photograph. The photo I took? The very same. There's something I want you to see in this photo. Quite clearly visible. The fog, Miss Hart. So? So? This picture was taken with a professional, high-quality film, correct? Yet even it could not capture the faces of the men on the boat. Yet you claim you saw Mr. Edgeworth. How? What? What? Mr. Wright has a point. That's why I told her not to say that in her testimony. Please. Yet now she has said it, Mr. Von Karma. How could you possibly see Mr. Edgeworth? Explain yourself. Miss Hart. What? Could you see the defendant that night? 
Of course, I said I could, and I meant I could. Then please testify about your about the circumstances of your sighting. I did it. I finally found a hole in Von Karma's carefully vague testimony. On to the next testimony. How Edgeworth was seen. You're right, it was a cold night and the fog was thick as grits. So once I finished setting up my camera, I got back in the car. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked with my binoculars. See? No problem. Hmm. You used binoculars. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. This one better be good. How Edgeworth was seen. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. Binoculars? Yeah, binoculars! Yesterday you mentioned that you were out looking for shooting stars, correct? Well, yeah. Wouldn't you need a telescope, not binoculars for that? I've got doubts about your camera, too. Was that really to take pictures of meteor showers? The camera is irrelevant to this case. You can't say that for certain. Hmm, Mr. Wright, is the camera really relevant to this case? If you believe it is, you may continue with this line of questioning. But know this, if you find nothing with this, there will be consequences. Well, Mr. Wright, do you wish to press further about the camera? This is make it or break it time. The camera is of utmost importance, Your Honor. It is perhaps the key to this entire case. Therefore, I will continue my line of questioning. Wow, maybe I went a little overboard there. Very well. Miss Hart, you will testify to the court about the camera. Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. A camera was set up to take a picture of a meteor shower. The contradiction here is camera was set up to take pictures of a meteor shower. However, if you'll remember, it's set to automatically take a picture when a loud noise is detected, and it faces the lake. Both of those things contradict that, because if it's set up to take pictures when loud noises are heard, like, shooting stars and meteor showers don't make loud popping noises, and why would you face the lake instead of facing the sky, where the meteors are? You were photographing shooting stars? That's a lie. Says who? I saw the camera you set up yesterday. It was pointed directly at the lake. You have, you have to point a camera upwards to take photos of the stars, Miss Hart. Oof. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? The witness was not at the lake to photograph shooting stars, Your Honor. Well, then, what exactly was she photographing? Your Honor, take a look at this. What was Miss Hart trying to photograph at the lake? Miss Hart, this is what you were trying to photograph. What's this? A newspaper article? Gordy. Ah, the sighting at Gord Lake. Well, Miss Hart? Uh, I never heard of no lake monster. You got proof or something? Let's see you prove I was down at the lake trying to photograph this Gordy. I have it. Proof. Hmm. Intriguing. Very well. Let's see it. And no joking around this time, please. Here is proof that the witness was trying to photograph Gordy, the lake monster. The proof, Miss Hart, is your own camera. Your camera was set to take photos in response to, a loud, to loud noises, correct? Thus the photograph here taken when a gun fired on that lake. And here, this article about Gordy. According to this article, Gordy made a loud noise when it emerged. Well, you were trying to photograph Gordy, weren't you? That's why you had set your camera to respond to loud noises. Order, order, I see. I, too, thought it was a little strange. Yeah, sure. Well, Miss Hart? 
You were camping there to try and take fo a photo of Gordy, weren't you? Yeah. Not bad. Are all you lawyers that smart? So smart, boy. I was down there to try trying to photograph Gordy. You got me. So what? Huh? That don't change what I saw, does it? Exactly. What you just used several precious minutes of our time to prove is nothing more than the witness is an idiot who thinks monsters exist. <laughs> hey! But, as she so succinctly said, so what? It changes nothing. Not true. You were hiding the whole thing about Gordy for some reason, I know it. But what could it have been? Whatever it is, I'm getting to the bottom of this. Miss Hart. Why did you hide the fact that you were searching for Gordy from the court? Please revise your testimony. Right, fine. I'll testify. Won't change nothing, though. Something will change. It has to. And I'm going to spot it. Lada's new testimony. Actually, I'm not a research student at a university. I'm an investigative photographer. Imagine what a scoop it'd be if I got a picture of that monster. That's why I was camping out by the lake. But that's all I was hiding. When I heard the bang, I looked right straight out at the lake. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched that boat the whole time. Then I saw a flash near one of the man's hands, and I heard another gunshot. I was looking right at that boat. The whole time, crossed my heart and hoped to fry. Hmm. Very well, very well. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. The witness's testimony is unchanged from before. Whether she is a research student or a photographer has no bearing on this case. There is no need to waste more of our time with another pointless cross-examination. Uh, hmm. I claim the defense's right to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Mr. Von Karm is up to something, I know it. He doesn't want me to cross-examine her because... Why? Is there a contradiction? Very well. You may begin the cross-examination. You seem sure of yourself. You must have something in mind. Huh. That would be a first. <laughs> Very funny. You understand that this is your last chance at a cross-examination, Mr. Wright. If there is no problem with the testimony this time, we will let the witness leave. I will announce my verdict, verdict at that time, Mr. Wright. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. Lada's new testimony. The contradiction here is that there wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched the boat the whole time. However, like Phoenix said, if she, saw, if she thought that Gordy was out there, she probably would have scanned the lake for Gordy. Miss Hart, were you really looking at the boat? What's with you? Of course I was looking at it. It was the only thing there, and a normal person would be looking at it. I agree, any normal person would. But you are far from normal. What? Y'all want to step over here and say that? You were camping at the lake to take a picture of Gordy. Think about it. What would you do if you heard a loud noise? You'd be scanning the lake for any sign of Gordy, that's what. You wouldn't give the boat a second thought. Ah! Order. Continue, Mr. Wright. You testified that you were watching the boat through binoculars. However, you wouldn't read... You wouldn't need binoculars to watch that boat. You needed them in search of Gordy, and that's what you were doing. Well? Hmm. Well, now that y'all mention it, I did sort of take my binoculars and kind of scan the lake a bit. I mean, Gordy might be out there and all. Miss Hart, are you saying that you were not watching the boat then? Sorry, y'all. I wasn't fibbing, really. I was just, I thought, you know, I could be a witness to a murder and all. I kind of got excited. I was sure I was watching that boat. Till now. This, this is totally uncalled for. B but hey, you got the photograph, you got proof. Hmm, still we can't see who is shooting who in this. Right, right. 
That's why I took this photo and... Witness, that's enough. You've had a long day. Shut your pie hole. Shut my what? What was she going to say? You took the photo and... What? Wait a second. She even had photograph, a photograph to prove it. We can't really tell from the photo who's shooting who. That's why she said she's going to enlarge the photo. She said it'll drop the quality of my, but it'll let us see who's who. If you enlarge that photo, why won't Von Karma let her show it? I've got a hunch. I bet that enlarged photo shows something bad for Von Karma. This is my chance. If I'm wrong, though, it'll mean prison for Edgeworth. Or worse. Whatever should I do? Miss Hart, look at this photograph. You enlarged this photograph, did you not? Yeah, yeah, I did. Why has that enlargement not been presented to the court? Because it does not exist. What are y'all talking about? You were the one who told me not to show it to the court in the first place. You old fool. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Von Karma? Uh, um... Miss Hart. Show the photo to the court. Show us the enlargement. The prosecution objects to the submission of this evidence. Objection denied. The witness will show the enlargement to the court. Here it is. Hmm. We still cannot see who is firing in this. It could be the defendant, or maybe it's not. Regardless, I'll accept this as evidence. Big photo added to the court record. Happy now, Mr. Wright. Hmm. There has to be something. You asked for an enlargement. You got the enlargement. And little good it has done any of us. That's why I requested she not show it. Hmm. I suppose this means the cross-examination is over, obviously. And I would like to close the cross-examination of Miss Lata Hart. And none too soon. That was a flagrant waste of my time. Mr. Von Karma, do, have, do you have anything to add? I stated everything I needed to when this trial began. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Nothing, of course. And I believe it is time for me to declare my verdict. Wait. It's not supposed to go like this. There has to be a clue in this photo. Somewhere. This is bad. Real bad. What should I do? Your Honor. There's something decidedly strange with this enlargement. Or well, what might that be? Mr. Wright, you will show the court what you mean. What about this photo is strange? Okay, here goes nothing. I'll show the judge what's strange about this photo. Here, Your Honor. A shooter? I'm not sure I understand. What about the shooter is strange? Look at the hand holding the pistol, Your Honor. The hand? That hand directly contradicts another piece of evidence. This man's left hand does what? This man's left hand does what? Let me show you. I'll show you the evidence that the left hand contradicts. The evidence is clear. The man in this photograph is holding that pistol in his left hand. However, the prints on the murder weapon were from Edgeworth's right hand. Ergo, the man shooting the pistol in this photograph is not Mr. Edgeworth. Now that everyone in the courtroom has quieted down, I would like to reconvene this court of law. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? You have given us definitive proof today. We now know it was not Mr. Edgeworth who fired the pistol that night. However, this leaves us with a rather large problem. If Mr. Edgeworth didn't do it, then who shot our victim? Precisely. As we have seen, there were no other people on the lake that night. Who but the defendant could have shot the victim? The only There's only one explanation remaining. 
The man who shot the victim was none other, th none other than the victim himself. Order, order. So, you are saying that the victim committed suicide? Yes, Your Honor. I can think of no other explanation. Hmm. Indeed, that does seem to be the only remaining option. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. But suicide is out of the question. What? An examination of the victim's wound reveals the distance at which he was shot. The distance? The victim was clearly shot further than a meter away. A meter? That's three feet. There is no way it could have been suicide. Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, are you sure of the accuracy of your data? Of course. I had already considered the possibility of suicide, you see. Autopsy report updated in the court record. Hmm, I see. Very well. Allow me to state my opinion. Considering the situation, the shooter had to be the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth. However, the prints on the gun revealed that the shooter was not Mr. Edgeworth. This is a conundrum. Therefore, I would like to suspend proceedings for the trial for today. The court orders the defense and the prosecution to further investigate this matter. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. That is all. The court is adjourned. December 26th, 1.15 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew, that was a close one. Hey, don't you have anything to say? No, I've yet to be declared innocent, right? Well, yeah, but what happened out there on that lake, anyway? If he didn't commit suicide, then who? The shooter was about a meter away, too. What? Don't give me that look. I did not kill him. I was just kidding him around. Oof. Look, I'm going to go check on Maya. Oh, right. What? Tell her something for me. What? Tell... Tell her to watch what she says in court. That's all. Yeah, I'm sure she'll be happy to hear you say that, Edgeworth. Jerk. I requisitioned a transcript of Lada's entire testimony. I thought it might give me some ammunition for the trial tomorrow. Of course she didn't see the shooter. So the only part of her testimony that stood was the bang she heard. December 26th, Detention Center Visitor's Room. Maya! Hey, Nick, it's you! I'm glad Mr. Edgeworth made it through the day okay. It's a relief. Hey, why'd you do that anyway? I don't know. I, I just knew it. I had to do something. I know I'm not the lawyer my sister was. I'm sorry. Well, you did save the trial. Just behave from now on, okay? Oh, okay. Have you been questioned yet? No, not yet. Detective Gumshoe was here just now. He said, Seeing as this, you, seeing as this is your first offense, we'll let you go after questioning. Whew! Oh, and you wanted me to get bail money ready. You can pay for me, okay? Huh? How much? I don't know. I guess they'll send you a bill or something. How do I picture giant bales of money every time I hear the word bail? Any luck with Mia? None. I can't get through to her at all. I tried. I really did. I don't know what to do. I think I probably shouldn't have stopped my training. Hmm. She sounds like she really did do her best. I should check and see if there are any waterfalls in the local area. I wonder if I'll ever see my sister again. December 26th, Gord Lake Park entrance. There are fewer than there, there are fewer than there were yesterday, but the cops are still around in the park. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe is here today. Well, let's head deeper into the lake to find out. Not like we're going to be going into the lake, but, you know, the, the park. I haven't seen Larry around today at all. 
Probably off paying through the nose on a date with a with the lovely Kiance. This feels very quiet without Maya around. December 26th, Gord Lake Woods. There we go. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal. The trial today, it, uh... Yes? What about the trial? Well, I was going to say good show, but it wasn't really all that. Though you did save Edgeworth, I guess. I... I just wasn't sure to th how to thank you, you know? Uh, thanks. Tomorrow's trial. Detective Gumshoe? Any idea what strategy Von Karma is planning for tomorrow? Sounds like he's bringing in another witness. Another witness? Oh, right, he said something about that in the trial today. There were two witnesses. Okay, I guess that's all for the flashback. I was wondering who that other witness was. Uh... Who was it? Okay, sorry, I read that wrong. Uh, who was it? S sorry, pal. As much as I'd like to, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Right. Oh, right. I wanted to ask you something about Edgeworth. What's up? Is he afraid of earthquakes? I never heard anything about that before. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't talk about himself too much, see? But there's one thing that's clear as day. Him hating crime the way he does, and him becoming a lawyer, and him becoming scared of earthquakes. It all started with that incident. The L6 incident? Yep, that's the one. Fifteen years ago, when he saw his father shot before his very eyes, he still feels the pain now. You can see it in his eyes. I wanted to talk to you about Maya Fay. Huh? She's not out on bail yet? That's strange. I told him to let her go as soon as they had the report written up. Man, I don't know what would have happened in that courtroom today if it weren't for her. Seeing her get dragged out by the bailiff. I'll be honest with you, pal. I shed a tear or two. Edgeworth, he was so moved I saw his lip trembling. Really? Cold as ice, Edgeworth? He was really grateful for what she did, you know. I'm going to head back to the station. I'll get the report on mine and get her out of there as soon as I can. Thank you. Oh, wait. Um, I was wondering, how much is bail going to be? Don't worry about that. Mr. Edgeworth is posting the whole amount. What? Edgeworth? Didn't I tell you? He's grateful to her for what she did. All right, pal. Why don't you forget? Why don't? Well, don't forget to go pick her up, okay? Hmm. Maybe I can get Edgeworth to pay this month's rent too. December twenty-sixth, detention center visitors' room. Hey, Nick! You finally came. They just finished the paperwork. I'm free to go. Free at last, huh? Those interrogators were really mean. They were all like, "Okay, so what did you do this time?" Like I was some kind of criminal. Can you believe it? Well, they let you out in the end, didn't they? Mmm. Oh, that reminds me. Thanks for bail. Thank Edgeworth. Huh? He posted bail for you. Said he was grateful for what you did. Mr. Edgeworth did that? I have to make it up to him. We've got to win this case, Nick. December 26th. Gord Lake Park entrance. There aren't many cops around today, are there? They're probably back at the precinct, working up the case against Edgeworth. Hmm. Hi, y'all! Hey, it's Lotta. Y'all really did it today. What did we do now? No, I'm not complaining. See, I did a little thinking. A little self-reflection, you might say. I realized that being a witness is my big responsibility. But I just went up there and started blabbing any old thing that came to mind. Lotta. So you see, I wanted to make it up to y'all. Make it up? Anyways, today's trial. What did you think of the trial? To be honest, I was doing it to have to just say I'd been a witness. Even though I didn't really see anything. I kind of convinced myself I had, though. I'm sorry I know I caused y'all a lot of trouble. Well, memory is a tricky, vague little thing. Yeah, I sure know that now. I'll be fine the next time I witness a murder. Right. You mean the first time you witness a murder. What about Gordy? Right. Well, the way I figured, the, the trial's only stoking the flames of Gordy fever. I'll get my exclusive photos and rock it to stardom. All right, Lotta. You go, girl. I wish I could be an investigative photographer, too. Finish your spirit medium training first. Lotta, what do you mean by making it up to us? Well, you say, I actually got a bit of information for you. What? 
That Von Karma didn't want me to say nothing about it. What information? Now we're getting to the heart of it. See, I reckon we might be able to do ourselves a little exchange. Exchange? Um, I thought this was to make it up to us. Right! I propose a little exchange to make it up to you. What? Information don't come cheap, my friend. Uh... Hi! I see you thinking my how unsophisticated these southern folks are. It's written all over your face. Let me tell you, most southern southerners are way more sophisticated than you. I'm just the exception, okay? Well, what'll it be? We got a deal or not? What do we do, Nick? We don't have any other leads, so I don't think we have a choice here. Okay, how much? Huh? You completely off your rocker? I may not be sophisticated, but I'm not trying to rob the poor. Huh? The only fair exchange for information is information. Listen good. What I need from you is the information about Gordy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Gordy? But Gordy doesn't... I mean, Gordy might not exist. Then bring me a proof that shows he down. Uh... I'll be keeping watch from the car, okay? You see something, y'all come to me first, got it? Okay. Right, see y'all later. Okay, Nick, let's get hunting. Hunting? You don't seriously mean... Gordy? I sure do. What about Edgeworth? We're searching for Gordy... We're searching for Gordy for him, Nick. Don't you get it? Okay, and how exactly do we search for a make-believe monster? Maybe we can find a monster myth specialist? What's that? That... the Steel Samurai, Nick. Yo, Maya. Larry, what the heck is this? Oh, it was my girl Kiyonce's idea. She was all, if you like it, put this here. It would be, like, really cool. Dude, she gave it to me along with a banner. Wow, that's real impressive she could find those for you. Well, she knows a lot of people. That show's finished now, so she got them for free. Right. Yo, Nick. What happened with Edgeworth? Well, we made it through the first day in court, all right. I don't know how good our, our prospects are from here on out, though. Huh. Hey, Larry. Did you know Edgeworth's secret weakness? He's terrified of earthquakes. He acts like a little boy. Huh? That's weird. I don't think he was ever like that in school. No? Really? Well, we were the only we were only in the same class for a year. We transferred schools pretty quickly. Transferred? Right. When the DL6 incident happened. Doesn't look like Larry knows about it though. Hey Larry. What was what was that big what was that big thing up there before? Huh? Oh, the big guy? I've had that for about a month, yeah. It's a big hit with the kids. Why wasn't it up there yesterday? Huh? huh? Oh, oh, right. That compressor was busted. Compressor? Yeah, it's that little unit my, by my hot dog stand. That's what I used to put air in the Steel Samurai. It broke a little while ago, so I sent it in for repairs. Oh, here I thought you'd inflated it by yourself. <clears throat> December 26th, Police Department Criminal Affairs. Hey there, pal! What's up? Look out of sorts. Wait, you didn't go do something that's not- that's going to do- going to hurt Mr. Edgeworth's case again? What do you mean, again? Whatever, have a seat, pal. I'm here for you if you need anything. Besides money, that is. Go ahead and talk to the big guy. Investigation. How was the investigation proceeding? It's... not really. We have another meeting coming up. We're supposed to talk about Mr. Edgeworth's motive. His motive? See, Mr. Edgeworth's father died in that DL6 incident, and the guy who got the lone suspect declared innocent was the victim in this case. Robert Hammond. They're saying that's why Mr. Edgeworth shot him. And Edgeworth never talks about his past. I bet they'll drag that out of him with, in court tomorrow, too. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I gotta admit, doesn't look good, pal. Say, Detective Gumshoe, do you know Gordy? A monster down at Gord Lake? Not personally, no. 
Well, we're looking for him. Huh? Are you out of your minds? Eek. You got no you got time to go wild monster hunting? How about doing a little questioning for me then? Oh. Detective Gumshoe is scaring me, Nick. I told Detective Gumshoe about the deal with Lada. Nick, try telling him sooner next time. Uh, sorry. I see, pal. Sorry for shouting at you. Okay. I, Detective Gumshoe, will aid your search for Gordy. Huh? I'll loan you one of our newest secret weapons for finding evidence. Really? You can take whichever one you like. Okay, give us the goods. Hold on now, everything in due time. First, let me show them to you. These are our best and brightest. Introducing secret weapon number one, Missile. M missile? He's a canine police dog, still in training. Missile, missile, here boy. Here he is. Hey, he's cute. Look, Nick, cute dog. Cute dog. This will help us. How? He's adorable. Uh, quick trivia. I may be wrong on this, but I think that that dog is based off of uh, the director for this game, Shu Takumi's dog. Next, secret weapon number two: a fishing pole. Here, this is my own personal pole. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for a monster. Yeah. How are we supposed to catch a whole sea monster with a fishing pole? Never know till you try, pal. Okay, this next one is the last one. No, please. I'm already overwhelmed by your choices. Secret weapon number three. A metal detector. Yeah. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for something alive. Right. How are we supposed to find this with a metal detector? Hey, you never know. It might have been eating soda cans. Well, which will it be? Um, I can't make up my mind, Nick. It all seems so perfect. I can't make up my mind either. For the totally opposite reason. Oh well, I suppose it can't hurt to borrow one of them. The metal detector. Can we borrow that metal detector? Sure thing, pal! I'm not sure what we're going to find with this. Remember, you're hunting for a monster. Anything is possible. Anything! Borrowed metal detector from Detective Gumshoe. December 26th, Boat Rental Shop. It's always so quiet here. I wonder if the boat shop is closed for good. Well, with the murder on the lake and all. Probably just taking a vacation till it blows over. I get it. Nick! It's beeping! The metal detector's found something! Sure is loud enough about it. Whatever it is, it must be one of in those bushes. Go check it out, Maya. Why do I have to check it out? Nick, look! Huh? An air tank? Huh. The valve looks broken. I thought it was Gordy. Maya, uh, first of all, why would Gordy be in the bushes? And second of all, why would a metal detector react to a sea monster? Oh. Huh? There's something wrapped around this air tank. It looks like... A string of flags? Well, we might as well take it with us now that we found it. It's heavy. Picked up air tank of dubious value. So if you'll notice about the air tank, is that it has strings wrapped around it, which are the, uh, which have the same flags that Larry has right here. What? An air tank? What about it? Larry, I wanted to ask you about this tank. Say, is this air tank yours? Why would I have a thing like that? Look, see how there's a string of flags around the tank valve? It's just like the string of flags around your steel samurai there. Must be a coincidence. There's strings of flag everywhere these days, like elementary schools and used car dealerships. Look, why would I need that tank anyway? You used this to inflate that, didn't you? Inflate what? What else? The big puffy steel samurai. 
Now, why would you go asking me a question like that? Looks like I hit the nail on the head. Right, right. Actually, um, see, the compressor I always use was on the fritz. So, like, I tried using the tank to inflate it just once, and, uh, it didn't go so well. So I suspected. It didn't go so well? Uh, yeah. Do you think you could be a bit more descriptive? Specific? C come on. Look, it's embarrassing, so I really don't want to talk about it. Tell us, tell us. Fine, whatever. It's like what I said, the compressor was busted. So I took the tank and tried to fill the steel samurai up with it. And then... The valve busted open and made this incredible noise. And that tank there took off like a rocket. And it took my poor deflated steel samurai with it. What? Off into Gord Lake? It sure scared me out of my gourd, that's for sure. Get it? Flying air tank. Um, so the tank and the steel samurai you were trying to fill flew up, flew away. What happened next? Well, all that happened on the 20th or so. The 20th, a week ago. Now, as far as I could see, the tank went flying out into the lake. So I went out every night in a boot looking for it. I mean, Kionsei gave me that steel samurai after all. And when did you find it? Just the night before last. It flew way out there. It took me four whole days to find it. The night before last was the night of the murder. Sorry for not telling you, Nick. Actually, I was here on the night of the murder. But you see, I went home before midnight. So you didn't know about what happened? No. That's too bad. It's not all bad. You've solved one mystery at least. A mystery? Maybe we should go tell her. What happened? I heard something in today's trial, that's for sure. This will find a serious business. That's why I decided not to talk about that case anymore. Huh? Whoa, didn't you say you had information about the case? Tell us that at least. Like I said, I'll trade it for the dirt on Gordy. Well, Mr. Lawyer, I've got the info y'all need. Y'all got the scoop on Gordy for me yet? Huh? Gordy? Oh, we found him already. What? I haven't seen him any monsters yet. Y'all for real? Gordy really exists? Wait, I need proof. You got, you got a photo? Of course I have proof. Oh, fair, Nick. It was when I was, went to the bathroom, wasn't it? That's when you made contact with Gordy. Enough jabbering already. Let's see your proof. Larry's air tank? What are y'all doing with an air tank? This is Gordy. Um, excuse me? What exactly are you saying, Nick? There's a stand near here. Hot dog stand. There's a giant inflatable samurai doll there. About a week ago, an idiot who happens to be a friend of mine tried to fill it. He used this air tank, and when the valve blew, the tank flew into the lake. Apparently, it made a pretty loud bang when it flew. A bang? The tank, along with the still deflated samurai, fell into the lake. At the same time, a couple was taking a photograph of the lake. This photo. Wait, so you're saying that Gordy is really the steel samurai? Well, that's a fine way to ruin a gal's dreams. I'm sorry, Lada. Nah, it's okay. You win. I'll give you your info like I promised. Poor Lada. Tell us this information you have. Promise is a promise, I guess. I overheard the cops talk. The cops around here saying something about the witness tomorrow. They said he's the caretaker of the boat rental shop up the path there. Boat rental? 
There's someone there? I mean, it looks so deserted. Just an old guy living all by himself. Y'all should go check it out. Thanks, Lotta. We will. Let's get cracking, Nick. Hold on. Something else? Yeah, the night of the murder. My camera clicked twice, you know. Wait, so you have another photo? Well, yeah, but there's nothing in it at all. Just like... I figured it wouldn't be much use of evidence, so I kept it to myself. Well, it might not be helpful at all, but... Here, take it. Second link photo added to the court record. Bye now. Y'all take care. Time for me to pack up and leave. Poor Lotta. It's all Larry's fault. Legend still lives on, I guess. The legend? Yeah, the legend of Larry. Familiar to all the all who know him for any length of time. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Hmm. Someone should whip that butts into shape. December 26th, Boat Rental Shop. Hey Nick, this is the boat shop that Lotta was talking about. You're right. Doesn't seem to be any doesn't seem to be anyone around at all. I guess that makes sense. Well, let's go check it out anyway. December 26th, Caretaker Shack. Meg, is that you? Eek! Hey, is that keys with you? Where have you two been? I've been worried sick. Nick, you handle this. I think I'll leave this one up to you, Maya. Meg! Y yes Finally made up your mind, have you? My mind? You'll run the pasta shop when I'm gone? The pasta shop? Glad to hear it, glad to hear it. You make the old man proud. You kids left the house, I didn't know what to think. How am I supposed to keep up this place when an old man like me? Polly, you kids are home. Hello, hello, squawk! Nick, what was that? Parrot, one on the perch. Keith! Yes? I'll leave the wet noodle in your capable hands, Shunny. Nick? What's the wet noodle? Um, based on the available evidence, I'd say it's the name of his pasta shop. That's really using it, Polly. Hello! Hello! Squawk! Yep. <sighs> Fell asleep. I guess he's relieved. Wow, what an amazing parrot that is. Good morning. Hello? He ignored me. What, you forgot, Meg? You gotta call her name first. Her name? Polly, how you been? Hello, hello, squawk! See? Neat, so the parrot's name is Polly. Parrot added to the court record. Too bad all she can say is hello. <laughs> oh, Polly can say lots of things. Just need to know the secret words. The secret words? Pasta restaurant. Um, a pasta shop? Uh, yep. You think the wet noodle will live on when I'm gone? My father started it, you know. So that makes you two the third generation. Meg. Yes? Tomorrow we'll start with the secrets of dough tossing. Dough tossing? You too, Keith. Yes? You'll be the best pasta wrangler the West has ever seen. Pasta wrangler? The West? Isn't pasta from Italy? Meg! Yes? You know the best pasta is always made in the West of the Rockies, don't you? Right, of course. Everyone knows that. Nick? Huh? How long do we have to keep this this all in the family charade? This old man must know something about the murder. We're not leaving until we find out what that is. Um, this is a boat rental shop, right? What you talking about? This here's the Palace of Pasta, the wet noodle. Yes, now that you mention it, we haven't got many orders for spaghetti lately. 
all the kids come up and say, Yo, dude, we want to ride one in, in one of your boats. Let's try to keep them boats out there. Youngsters these days, darn if I understand them. Pretty confused myself. Nick, this isn't going anywhere. This old man is the witness tomorrow, right? We've got to find some way of getting information out of him. Arsh, my memory's gotten worse as of late. That's why I just tell everyone everything important to old Polly over there. Everything important? Hmm, I wonder. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight! Squawk! All right. Hey, Polly, watch you, will ya? <laughs> See, Nick? All it takes is a little clever thinking. A criminal mind. Quick, Nick, write that down. Hey, don't get me involved in your little heist schemes. So, interestingly enough, for the third time this case, our attorney's badge is actually important. Is that a lawyer's badge? Yes, it is. I don't believe it. This old guy is the first person to recognize my badge. I get it. Huh? Hey, yep, I got you figured out now. You're that quiche! Nick. Now's our chance to clear things up. Um, sir, no, I'm not Keith. And I'm not Meg, either. We're here investigating a murder that took place on this lake the other night. Please help us. Mmm, a lawyer, huh? Please, mister. Alright, I'll help. But I'll one condition. Well, what's that? This case is over and done. You'll run to Wet Noodle. Okay, we promise. Nick, are you sure about this? Hey, anything to get this case solved. Also, who wouldn't want to eat Phoenix Noodles? I guess so. That's my, girl. That's my boy. Good for you, Keith. Wait, didn't I just say... You too, Meg. Yes? <laughs> you bring a tear to your old man's eye, you know. Now, what is it you want to know? Speak up, Polly. Hello! Hello! Squawk! Ah. Now he's talking to the bird again. How do we get him to talk to us? Uh, yep, I've seen this. You know something about this, sir? Okay. Yes? It's okay. You could call me Dad. Dad? You know something about this? Uh, yep. The other night, out on the lake. Yes? Yes? I know all about that. I seen it. What? Tell us. Tell us what you saw. Well, I suppose. Since you take taken over the shop and all. I forget the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably night, yep. It was after midnight, but okay. Then I heard this BANG! So I looked outside, and I heard another one. BANG! A little while later, this boat comes back. And a young man walked by my window here. He was muttering something to himself, yup. What did he say? Uh, yup. I forgot. I'll remember about tomorrow by court time, I promise. We need to know earlier than that. You know what? Uh, old Terry was just here. Terry? Uh, yep, that kid next door. You always used to make him cry, remember? He was wearing this tattered old coat. Got himself some whiskers going on his face. Must be talking about Detective Gumshoe. It comes and tells me to come down to the court tomorrow. Really? Somehow I don't think we're going to get much useful information about this guy. Or about out of this guy. My, maybe we should be leaving. I think you're right. Oh wait, I had one more question. Huh? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget DL6! Squawk! Huh? What did she just say, Nick? One more time, Polly. Don't forget DL6! Squawk! 
What? The DL6 incident? Hey, mister. I, I mean, dad. It's getting weird. Who is this old guy? Why would that bird Polly... What would that, why would that bird Polly know about DL6? I have to figure out who that old man is. Oh! What? He locked the door from the other side. Who could that old man be? I think I need to do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe. December 26th, Police Department, Criminal Affairs. Hey pal, long time no see. You don't look so happy. What's wrong this time? Actually, we want to ask you something. Yeah? Boat Caretaker. You know the boat rental shop down at Ford Lake? Oh yeah! The old man who runs it is appearing as a witness in court tomorrow, right? Huh? How'd you- Hmm. <clears throat> that was supposed to be top secret. Do you know who that old man is, detective? Actually, I don't. He's a bit of an odd bird. I haven't been able to get a straight answer out of him. I decided first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why we called Miss Lodhart yesterday. As for who he is, we have absolutely no idea. Hmm. Sounds suspicious. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe, please help us. Huh? We need to know about the DL6 incident. That was when Edgeworth's father died. I can't help but think that it has something to do with this current case. To tell you the truth, I don't know much about DL6 either. Mr. Edgeworth will bait us from reading the file. So, I'm afraid I can't show them to you either, pal. What? However, if you can convince me somehow that the DL6 incident is related to this case, well, I guess I'd consider opening the file up. Well, thanks to the parrot over here, we do have a pretty solid connection. What's that? A parrot? The old man at the boat rental shop's parrot. The parrot knew about that incident. That incident? DL6. Wh what? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget, DL6! Squawk! Huh? Pretty sure that old man must have taught her that word. Yeah, how would the how would that old man Yeah, but how would that old man know about the DL6 incident? Wait, what if? What if that old man was connected to DL6? Nick, you think he might be? I get ya. Sounds like you need information on the DL6 incident. Though there is the station's records room. I'll give you special permission to go in and find what you need. Alright, way to go, Detective Gumshoe. Okay, Nick, to the records room. Guess it's time we face Edgeworth's past. December 26th, Police Department Records Room. Wow, it's amazingly dusty. Ten years of files and ten years of dust, I guess. Let's find the DL6 stuff quick. Fifteen years ago, both me and Edgeworth were nine years old. We were almost through with fourth grade when he suddenly transferred. Because of DL6? Nick, I found out where the file is. Uh, oh, thanks. Just let me know what you want to know and uh, about DL the DL6 incident. I'll go get the right file. A case summary. Well, first I have to get a handle on the main facts. Like a summary. Right. Summary, summary, found it. Here you go. December 28, 2001. That's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. So in two days, the case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district court. What? Is this the same district court where we're holding the trial now? Looks like it. There was a large earthquake at 2 o'clock p.m. on that day. Part of the court building collapsed and all of the lights went out. Wow, that was some earthquake. 
At the time, there were three people trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours! That would be scary like that in the dark. There was a lack of oxygen in the elevator, and the survivors were unconscious. The survivors? One of the three in the elevator had been shot in the heart. That was Mr. Edgeworth's father, wasn't it? He said that his father was shot before his very eyes. So Miles Edgeworth was one of those other passengers in that elevator. It would have been horrifying for a nine-year-old. You have data on the victim, Edgeworth's father? Yeah, hold on. Victim, victim, here, found it. Gregory Edgeworth, or er, Greg Gregory Edgeworth, 35, defense attorney. If you were still alive, he'd be 50. He had lost that day's case in court and got in the elevator with his son, Miles. Miles? Miles Edgeworth, of course. So he was on the elevator with his father. From the angle of the bullet and the other evidence, it could not have been a suicide. The murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired twice. Where have I heard that before? Huh. Sounds just like this current case. What's going on here? Got any data on the suspect in there? Hmm, that would be the guy that my mom arrested. Hold on. This is it. The man arrested as a suspect in DL6 was... Yanni Yogi? He was a clerk in the court, apparently. So he must have been the third person in the elevator. Well, then he had to have done it. But he was found innocent, thanks to his defense lawyer, Robert Hammond. Hammond, the victim in our current case. Right. The suspect, Mr. Yogi, was oxygen deprived, so much so he had brain damage. He lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. Hmm, where could Yogi have gone to, I wonder? Maybe closer than we think. I guess I know generally what happened in DL6 now. I still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing had on Edgeworth. Nick, are we going to take the whole file? There's too much. We'll never get it out. You're right. How about we just take what we think we'll need? DL6 case file added to the court record. Right. That's probably all we'll be able to find here. Now all that's left is the trial tomorrow. I wonder how Dad will do testifying in court. December 27th, 10 o'clock a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well, apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who's the judge here, anyway? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Ah, uh, very well, no opening statement, sir. Not so fast, judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. R right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah, must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. R right. I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand, it's that mysterious boat shop owner. Witness, state your profession. I am the proprietor of the restaurant Wet Noodle at Gord Lake. And, uh, I also went boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, yep, yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We 
still haven't heard who this old guy is. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah! I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right. The witness will state his name. Uh, well, uh, not really sure, yep. What do you mean? My, uh, memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Hmm. Can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we, witness? The Night of the Murder It was night of the 24th, just after midnight, yup. I was in the restaurant where I, uh, rent boats as usual. Then I heard BANG, yep. And I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. And I heard another BANG! Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Hmm, very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge your verdict now. Uh, yes, Mr. Wright. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Hmm, very well, you may begin. Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma. Three minutes just passed. I see. Well then, let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. The night of the murder. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore, and a man walks by my window. By your window? Yep, by my window, right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I shall. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. Tisk, tisk, tisk. I have a bad feeling about this. That man was dependent. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Uh, are you are you sure? Uh oh. D Dad. Dad yeah, certain key. Shit, I can't believe he's dead as he's locked back to you. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy. This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Von Karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. Better act quick or this trial is going to be over. Your Honor. We proved in yesterday's court that, that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun, and the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly! That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. 
Hmm. Judge is lost in thought. What should I do? Your Honor, this witness claims that Edward said I can't believe he's dead, but his word is all we have. If he were telling a lie... Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Erk. Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Uh, are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Three minutes was perhaps too high in expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No. Mph. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Guilty. The accused will surrender to the court immediately. To be held pending trial at to be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. The court is adjourned. Who was that just now? Huh? What? Larry! What are you doing here? Listen, you gotta listen to me. I, I was... I was there in the park the night of the murder. I, I wasn't sure about it till yesterday, but I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. Uh, order. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did. A gunshot. That night, I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony, and I realized something he said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I just can't sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. Order, order. Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not sure, quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us one final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. He could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth has just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now! What? The court will adjourn for a five minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. The judge is actually doing stuff now. December 27th, 10.28 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew! That was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Hmph. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. 
I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night. Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? You say something right. Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It, it's nothing. Hmm? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor in the boat of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? One comma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his, his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No ten minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was fifteen minutes. Fifteen. Everything depends on Larry now. It's not the best situation we find ourselves in. December 27th, 10.35 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session. Or back in session, sorry. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Juan Karma didn't even have time to prepare his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. The night of the murder. That night, I was out on the, I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something, and uh, I found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back into the rental shop dock. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't notice the boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. I'm not really good at doing a surfer dude accent, so just bear with my voice that I do for Larry. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any matter, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. Cross-examination. So, the test- the, uh, contradiction here is a pretty big one. Uh, after- he said- so after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. However, it's been stated plenty of times throughout this case that there were multiple gunshots, two in fact. Objection. Wait a second, Larry. What? what You only heard one bang. You're sure. That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot? Are you sure? Um... Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Eh? Not sure? How could you not be sure? 
Yeah, well, I, uh, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude, on my headphones. What? Boo, you suck. Order, order, and stop that booing. Mr. Butts, you were listening to a radio on earphones? Yeah, so what? That a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Your Honor, please. Please allow this witness to continue his testimony. Bah. Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. Yeah, that's Larry for ya. What Larry heard. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real boomin' loud, like. But I'm sure I heard the gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. You were listening to your radio. At a high volume. Yeah, what's the big problem? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ has said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. V very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. What Larry heard, the cross-examination. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. What did he say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a D radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask, huh? Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when, just when she said, Hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Objection. Larry. Are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with that face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easily. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas, when he heard the gunshot. Indeed. And? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But that contradicts the two testimonies that we have heard so far, Your Honor. Both Miss Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order, order. What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, 
The answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butts' claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart with, Hart with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50pm. Oh yeah? Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50pm. That is why the photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then, where does that leave us? Miss, Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50pm was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When then was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order, order. Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen the, that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you? Why? Uh-oh. Better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes? Ah! What's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it. Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean... Is this safe? Safe? I've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Tsk, tsk, tsk. So you finally realized the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. 
Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be none other than the man on the boat. I admit, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have a photographic evidence of, of the time of the shooting. The timestamp of the photo says 015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. It's the only way Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who this is sitting on the boat. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Wright. It's... Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Bah, again you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop. That old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? W where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way down on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not in the boat. What? Well then, where did the murder take place? You're the judge where the murder really took place. Here, of course, the boat shop, where he lives. That way he can meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night, he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. Mr. Wright. What happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Uh, not really. But if I, th I think if I start at the very beginning, I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then, who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Of course it was the murderer who just shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth. On purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. 
The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. I believe he shot twice to greet a witness, Your Honor. A witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anybody who heard the shot would look out at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first shot. Next! The murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then... The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol and the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake. It would appear that one of the men had on, the on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body, and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly! Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed, Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm... I'm sorry. I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir! Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? Find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I'll extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. December 27th. 1.22 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Yay, Nick! You did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. What about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D -d Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No. There's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Hmm. I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? 
It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. December 27th, 2.11pm, Wright and Cole offices. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of a murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never. Nick? Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? Item swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? S swooning? Me? Oh, oh yes, I do remember feeling faint. Right on! Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Huh? Me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you could do better than that. Come on! I saved Edgeworth in there, dude! Edgy! You guys should be bowing before me! Yeah, bow before your hero! That's exactly why I don't like Larry. He's just... <sighs> today is trial. Larry, you really helped us out in the trial today. You did! If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> Seriously, Nick. That boat shop caretaker guy is pretty serious. We're suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know. But from where I was sitting, Edgeworth seemed pretty... edgy. Huh. <laughs> I mean... Can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But what I do know is I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? But why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? Oof, enough with the silent treatment. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait, was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me. Miles. And Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. What? Hey, hey Larry, what is he talking about? Huh? Uh, um... Uh, sorry. I kind of forgot. <sighs> okay, Nick. Out with it. I'm going to hear this story t today, and that's final. Okay, okay. Kind of a long story, so hang in there. It's the beginning of spring, fourth grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? I won't talk for this part, because it's kind of dramatic, and I don't think I'm really up to task to voice act it well enough to make it as dramatic as it should be, so I'll just let you guys read it.
That's a sweet story. Edgeworth's goals. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after the class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my dad. A famous defense attorney. And then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. It's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. Well, that's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he'd become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believed in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Whoa, Nick! So is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Aw, oh, Nick. Nick. Nick! We have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very may well be. Er, very well may be. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I guess I can clean out some evidence that I no longer need. Okay, let's go. December 27th, Detention Center Visitor's Room. They look as grim as always. <laughs> um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In fourth grade? Lunch money? Oh, oh, right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you'd do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple, to a fault even. Well, maybe, yeah. I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Hey, Edgeworth. Why did you become a prosecutor, anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter, any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. A defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. We had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's ar argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yogi had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. 
That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He's a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he's obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent. Ever. But... But that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. If the weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. Mmph. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. December 27th, Gord Lake Park entrance. Hey pal, long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, eh? I got so worked up I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may, it's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch me criminal. Detective Sh Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, another thing! Eek! No one could go into the woods today. The woods? Where Lotta was camping? The woods are off limits to camping, and apparently the park ranger found out. You got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. I guess Lot is in a lot of trouble. <laughs> anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. A funny thing is that when I'm uploading YouTube videos, I put those little I cards in. You know the thing where in the top right corner it'll link to something else. Like I'll probably put something in right now, and. When I'm going through videos, I can clearly tell at what points Gumshoe is on screen because the audio levels just expand like tenfold. December 27th, Gord Lake Public Beach. Huh? Steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's been too busy with a trial to show up for work. December 27th, boat rental shop. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. <laughs> I know that clearing of the throat anywhere. <laughs> Hello. Who might what might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grossberg, this is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm, if you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Edgeworth was doing here anyway? Who knows? December 27th, Caretaker Shack. Nobody's home. Hello! Hello! Squawk! Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello! Hello! Squawk! I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello! Hello! Squawk! 
that wasn't me just repeating voice clips over and over again. That was actually me doing it three separate times. And ow, my voice. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? 1228! Squawk! Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't money in there. Ah, But hey, it keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Ah, boring. Hmm, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth! Nick, why would Edgeworth's name be here? How should I know? I'm gonna read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is your time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond, and frame Edgeworth, calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Edgeworth, see this letter? Hmm? This came out of the safe in that shack where the boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge. On me? Who is that old guy anyway? I, I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nice try, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So he was following this letter then? Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is your now now is your time to give revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men, meaning myself and Robert Hammond. This also says this is your last chance. Last chance. Wait, maybe. Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man! What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in that elevator together 15 years ago. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long it felt like forever. The air thinned, and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation had stress, and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed, and the court and Yogi was found innocent. Huh. But isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right? Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. 
You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. I think... I think the time has come to tell all. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. But, that's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the past 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, you... You mean... It was me. I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there's anything we we can do. Like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. There is, Nick! There is someone else who knows about DL6. One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going. December 27th. Grossberg Law Offices. Mr. Grossberg? Ah, oh, hold on. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding. I can't believe you're not. My, my, my. Just calm down and tell me what's happened, hmm? It's Mr. Edgeworth. He, he... <laughs> I see. So, Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father? It's only a dream. Only a dream. I wonder. What? If that's the case, why do you two look so troubled? Mm -hmm. Well... Also, consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagined. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired and the deed was done. N no! I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irrevocably wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the statute of limitations so close. Hmm. 
What do you know about Edgeworth's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fey. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's te techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. Result? He has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost. And died in despair, as it were. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Fay. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was... Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems that what the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. S so you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility nonetheless. Oh, so this is the letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney. But he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent. Why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict but for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before. A long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? you have any idea who wrote this? Hmm, could it be Manfred von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. Hmm? Von Karma. Von Karma. Wait! You're right, my boy! This is von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it! I used to see it all the time on court reports. What? But, but that means the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? If it truly was Von Karma who wrote the letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no. But, but how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought he was just a nightmare. Hmm, that I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy, satisfy a grudge against Greg Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court, and Von Karma did win, but he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial, but Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence, and though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was, the only, it was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took vacation for several months after that, you see. 
Vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. It was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. If he wanted to keep a perfect, a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Juan Carmen's going to bring up deal six. You can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to deal six? I won't let him. Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I have to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. I know that. I, I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But Nick, Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. Police materials. Hmm. December 27th, Police Department Criminal Affairs. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, oh, true. I don't think Grumshaw will be back. At, will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check out the records room again. Well, now I can't have just anyone running around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now, anyway. You can go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? Yes. He just arrived, actually. Von Karm is in the records room. Nick, let's hurry. December 27th, Police Department records room. Dusty as always. You were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Juan Karma. Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says unsolved cases, evidence. Hmm. Unsolved cases. Nick! The file for DL6! It's completely empty! What? What are you doing in here? Eek! V -v 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 von Karma. You. How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edgeworth defense team. Defense team? Hmm. <laughs> I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They are like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. Uh, um, Mr. Edgeworth was your student, right? A romanticist who could never see shed that veneer of amateurism. Just like his father, always second rate. Mr. Ron Karma, you had an axe to grind with Mr. Gre Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me, a grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record? Mm. So you did. But what, I, but what I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? 
You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. We were right. Von Karma is going to bring up deal six in court tomorrow. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. So you admit it. You... you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You've saved me from a lot of needless hassle. What? N Nick! What is that thing? A stun gun. For self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000? Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it. Usually. Now, give me the letter. No. No! Whoa, what are you... Nick, run! Ah! Maya! Out of my way. Wah! Uh, he got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence. All of it. Back to having no clues. Wait, Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? Ma Maya! Maya, open your eyes. Maya! The letter. Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Are you are you okay? I I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now when we needed her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Maya! Ugh. Must be some way I can help her. I'd better do something about her self-confidence first. Maya. She's holding on to something. What is that? A bullet? The L6 incident. Evidence number seven, taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. But DL6 bullet in pocket. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. December 28th, 9.51 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby number two. This is it. Judgment day. Today, things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Wah! What's the big idea? S sorry Nick, I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock still hasn't worn off from my run-in with the stun gun yesterday. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Edworth is looking glum as always. I hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard. Whoa! What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge. Right, good idea. Why not to electrocute anyone on your way out? Whoa, yeah, pal! What's gotten into that girl? 
Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How did it go, Detective? I have no fear. As promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I just got on my way in, I feel pretty good. Yerky says he's forgotten his own name, but that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. December 28th, 10 o'clock a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready. Uh, right, very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma. Your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness to the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness, why did you run away, away yesterday? The witness was not running away, as he will now testify. I, I see. Very well, please begin your, your testimony. <laughs> Why I left court. Uh, I'm really sorry about just leaving like I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for Polly, you see? I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. I mean, I need to have one of those moto things, right? I don't got those. So my testimony yesterday at the same as yours. Hmm. Very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi, and I'm going to prove it. Or Yanni Yogi, however you pronounce it. Why I left court? I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, yep. Seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh. Or, or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no idea who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Ugh. How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? It's impossible. Mm, I've gla I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. Uh, I mean, I need one of those motor things, right? I don't got one. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes. Yes, Your Honor? 
You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witnesses memory of the past or lack thereof into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witnesses said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Order, order. Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying... Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Ho, ho. Now, this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So, who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell me, tell us what the witness's name is. His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi, from the DL6 incident. I thought the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But, what does this mean? Your Honor! If this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness is Yo Yanni Yogi? Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witnesses the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove his yogi right here, right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick, how are you going to prove it? How could you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on the file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see. That makes sense. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Huh? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? What? No fingerprints? Uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingers working with the stuff. Yup. What? Yogi, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove its identity. No. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Well... What will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh... Hmm? It seems that the case has been decided, no? No. I know what happened. I know everything. I... I just can't prove it. But no. I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? Tsk, tsk, tsk. Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine the parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Wait a second. Cross-examine the parrot? What is it, Nick? No. You're not going to... Your Honor! The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On his... proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. Order. Order. Uh, well... What do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce. I object. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're so desperate, 
then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy. Well, still want to go through with your little game? Let the parrot take the stand. I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Von Karma's worked every person's testimony, every piece of evidence. Except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least, I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name. The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. Ahem. Very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please uh, testify for us. Who is your owner? Hello! Hello! Squawk! Hmm. Certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well, begin your cross-examination. Right. What are you going to do, Nick? I... I don't know. What do we do, Maya? Hmm. Hello! Hello! Squawk! Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right, uh, what do I say? Remember, two days ago. Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget, DL6! Squawk! If I can get Polly to say that here, I'll prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? That's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot. Something we forgot. Hello! Hello! Squawk! Uh-oh. It's not working, Nick. She won't say it. It's ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Tsk, tsk, tsk. Something the matter, Mr. Wright? Wait. Don't tell me Wong Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot. Or could he? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? Oh, squawk! And we say all that again. So the next thing is, what's your name? Maybe I should get her to say her name. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, Polly, squawk! Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with Aroni's identity? Yes, it does. Ha! Huh. Fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity? Then show us this proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the, the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... A DL6 case file? That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright, please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to the parrot's name? It's on the suspect data page. This page is all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Hmm, indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly! 
Exactly, Your Honor. You remembered the name of his fiancée who committed suicide. That's why you named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. Bah, a mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does that make you my granddaughter's fiance? She's only seven years old. Hmm, indeed. Alone it is lit it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more. If we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right. But what? Hmm. Very well, witness. You may continue. So our last piece of evidence over here is... The safe number. Maybe I'll get her to say the number of the safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number on the safe in the shack? 1228! 1228! My, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker? Actually, it does. That's why I had her, I had her say it. Ha! Huh. Ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? The DL6 case file? What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in this, in this file is something related to the safe number? It's on the case summary page. The case summary? Specifically the date on which DL6 the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident? December 28th. Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Ah! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Bah. This is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 because I am number one. This has nothing to do with a date. Nothing. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence. That's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. Ooh, what are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately. Witness. Tell us your name. Wait. This witness, he doesn't remember. No, it, it's okay. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi. I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. Fifteen years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Oh, order, order. Yanni Yogi. So, was it you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. It put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. He won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiancé, my social standing. Then this year, 15 years later, our package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The 
plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who sent it. I thought this was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Sedgworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth. What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I'll admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. On Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is innocent. In this case, at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty. That is all. The court is adjourned. Objection! Did someone just say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth? Your Honor, I object to your judgment. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's going to say he's guilty. He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's going to tell them he killed his own dad. Uh-oh. What do I do? The judgment has already been passed. I object to Edgeworth's outburst. Didn't something like this happen yesterday, too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new witness, this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. For 15 years, I have had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now, I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean, in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't a suicide, either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer. The criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. Order, order. This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Bah, it's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We try this man for his crime of 15 years ago. I think, I think I would like to have a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. December 28th. 2.24 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. I'm sorry, Wright. I've just wasted all of your effort. Mr. Edgeworth! I don't- I just don't believe it, pal! I mean, you... kill your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, Detective. But... 
It's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy! Just crazy! Nick? What are you doing? Huh? Oh, I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm gonna prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted it. He confessed that he ki he did it in court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just that it's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in the court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. R right. Then I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examining. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. On Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth. I'm a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please, please. A DL6 incident. If I'm not mistaken, this will be our last piece of testimony for the series. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake stu struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Hmm. And until now you thought you this memory was a dream? We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out and I lost my memory of the events. Bah! The same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. So, the problem here... ...is a moment later there was a gunshot, a single gunshot, and a scream. However, if we're to look over at the DL6 case file... Uh... The murder weapon was fired twice. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream, then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. But that doesn't make sense. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence, unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? 
Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot, yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing, when the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? Hmm... Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice, however we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Hmm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other, sh fired, the the other shot fired had something to do with the case? Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. What? Impossible. Now, now, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to the incident? Look at this photograph. This, this is a photograph of the scene of the crime, 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Your Honor, please, please get a clue. Show the judge the contradiction in the photo. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see, a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol, yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. Oh, order, order. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart, the other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary? That's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. That bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that, that made the bullet hole in the door. Order. I will have order. Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked this second bullet. 
So, all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. Disk, disk, disk. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Gah. How did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? I've been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I, it looks like I was wrong. Nick? The second bullet wasn't there, and all my conjectures are for nothing. No. But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just, when I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick... Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So, you killed your father, but that was not your intention. Yes, I did. Oh no. He's confessing. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today. Right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just my, like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying, but my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? Objection. Your Honor! I... I object! Tsk, tsk, tsk. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object, huh? Oof. Nick? I, I don't know. His case is perfect. Oh no. Grah. It must exist. The second bullet. What? What did you just say? Nothing. The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. Huh? I, uh, the, the, the second bullet, it, uh, it exists. What? But we've just heard proof that it did not exist. Uh, I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, 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 the murderer. The murderer. Then tell us, just who is this murderer? I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet. Why would he? Huh? First of all, how would he have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for the bullet? Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for that stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Uh, um... Bah. The murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Urgh. Had to take it. Had to take it? The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? Y yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, 
for instance, for instance, what? Uh, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer? The bullet hit the murderer. J just saying, for instance, I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't it? It's not like you could just perform surgery right there. Y you know? Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's what really happened? Let me get this straight. So, at the time of the murder, the murderer himself was shot, and he left with the second bullet still inside, thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime? Uh, yes, I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from the elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean the murderer came from outside, yes. The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol and it, at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges and the bullet... The bullet goes through the, the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Hmm. Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney that I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it. Deny it. No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. That's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock, but took it because he was injured? Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma. Oh man, something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem dazed. Uh, no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Should I come out and say it now? Your Honor. There is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? V v v v v Urk, my hands are shaking. V what? Von Karma. Von Karma. You mean the Von Karma, the prosecutor, sitting right there? Bah. You, you don't object? <laughs> I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months after starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident? Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I under- Where did I go under the knife hat, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Urk. Nick! Let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth? I know Von Karma, perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. 
He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. Ugh, nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out of himself? That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but where? Disc, disc, disc. Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? All right, Von Karma, I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. What? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... Von Karma's perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery, leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. You... you don't mean... I do. There's the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Is that even possible? For all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm going to run this over you and see what we find. I... refuse. You refuse? But refusing this means... You acknowledge the bullet is still inside you? Order, order, order. Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use this metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said we had to end this right here, right now. Mm. Mm. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Gama, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. It reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet! Mr. Von Karma? You. It was you. I was afraid this would happen, and so I remained silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. But, but, Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove. I have no obligation to prove anything. It is you who must prove something here, Mr. Wright. Not I. Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. It's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. Ooh, what? You were close. One day away from freedom. You see, I have proof. What? Who would have thought you would have dug your own grave by trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. That's... a bullet? Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. 
The bullet is preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired that bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets, then if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun, the very same pistol, in other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. Mmph. Mmph. Mr. Von Karma? You will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma?
Tisk, tisk, tisk. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge. What? What? What are you doing? Do your job. Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now, end it. Very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty. That is all. The court is adjourned. December 28, 5.38 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Nick! Nick! We did it! Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick! Crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed! <laughs> It was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's all just a good memory. It's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know. Try thank you. I... I see. Thank you, Wright. You're welcome. I think you could have done. I think you could have done better than that. Oof. S sorry, I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. Dear, dear. Whoop! Amazing, pal. You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down to print this month, but who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm, I see. Hmm. <laughs> Whoop. I... I feel foolish. Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Hey, y'all. Lotta. Y'all were great in there. Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats. Uh, thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. You, you were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? Who, me? Ah, I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick. My life is over. Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick. I'm not long for this world. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Beyonce. She She's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick. She's leaving me behind. Larry, Larry. Yo, Edgy, there you are. Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift for me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts, you came al you come along tonight too. My treat, pal. Huh? Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah? What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me. It's got money in it. 
Well, yeah, that's not that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? Huh, what a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38 exactly? Nick, wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38. No. No! Larry, it was you! What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day, 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored. He came into school anyway. Then, he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. <laughs> Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah. Too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really, right? I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Uh. Edgeworth. Hmm? You should have told me. Now, now, Nick. It was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it. Uh, where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, I'd call you a goody two-shoes to the extreme. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. Death! The death sentence for both of you. And if only I'd known I'd have become a prosecutor. The same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Want to switch, right? Hi, y'all. Line up and take. I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time. Let's go. After that, dinner on me. Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Although Edgeworth was still in detention. December 29th, 5.02 a.m. Wright and Co. Law Offices. Whoa, I went a little over overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? Still only 5 o'clock. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this? A letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you, it made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium, in training of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth too. I wanted to help you, but I couldn't. I was useless. So I've decided to go back to, to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. Goodbye. What time is it? Gah, the first trains for the mountains have already left. To the station. I guess I'm too late. Hey, N Nick, Maya. So you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard to be it's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Wait. What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes, only her voice, but still. I was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. 
Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. E evidence? Show Maya some evidence to cheer her up. A bullet? Juan Carmen was convinced he had taken all of the evidence pertaining to DL6, but you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma, and you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. So, bye. Bye. Thanks, Nick. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page. And say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins. With the same old crazy cast of characters. Ha! Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim. Uh, yes, your honor. Uh-oh. Got a bad feeling about this. That was Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Now, an interesting thing about the credits of Ace Attorney games is it lets you talk to your favorite characters one last time. Hey pal, Miss Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a happy new year. Talked about a pleasant surprise. Then he hung his head low and went right back outside. Kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? So yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of let the music play and then do the voices and then at the very end I'll go ahead and state my thoughts. Huh, Nick? Nah, haven't seen him lately. Who me? I've been working at a cheese shop. That Missy's a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you call a cheap date, huh? Oh, she's in Hawaii right now. Yeah. Who? Right? Yeah, I remember him. I hear he's been busy lately. You know, not hearing my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. Phoenix Wright. Hmm. Ah, the defense attorney for whom I wrote the affidavit for, yes. Oh, you should know, I've taken over management of the Gatewater Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. Ahem! <laughs> oh, it's you. Phoenix Wright. Ah, oh, yes, me as understudy, was it not? I wonder how he's doing. Haven't heard of him late. Ah, the days of my youth. The scent of fresh lemon, you see. Phoenix Wright? He an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with a name like Phoenix. I'm pleased to announce the Pink Princess is a hit. I sure owe that Mr. Wright a great deal. Oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public eye till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kid's dreams, you know. Oh, I 
got a letter from Maya the other day. It sounds like he caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit but didn't have the time so I sent her some pink princess trading cards. She says you can't buy them from where she is. What kind of place is she living at anyway? Right? Who's that? You want to talk? Let's talk Pink Princess. Alright. But, you know, I snuck into the studio the other day. And I saw her. The one inside the Pink Princess suit. Ugh, what a dog. It was kind of a shock for a boy my tender age. Yeah, I remember, right? That lawyer guy. Huh? Me? I'm in training to become a paranormal photographer. You know that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real. Now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. That's the end of Phoenix Wright. Like I've said before a million times, there is a case five, but I won't be doing it. Check the description if you want to know why. So, this game is probably one of my favorite games of all time. It's not my absolute favorite. That's probably Super Mario Galaxy. But it's definitely, like, somewhere in my top ten. And also, in my top ten is Phoenix Wright 3, Trials and Tribulations. Which is very good, and I'll be doing that on the channel soon, after I do Phoenix Wright 2. And, of course, I'm going to be taking some breaks between this series and the other Phoenix Wright games that I'll be playing. But I will be playing them, and you can hold me to that. This game was just so fun to play on the channel. It's one of my... It's I'm pretty sure it's my longest series so far. And I'm probably running past 50 minutes now. I checked a bit earlier, uh, and there's a YouTube playlist length calculator, and it said that before this finale right now, that the series was 13 hours and 37 minutes long. And so after this, it's going to be over 14 hours long. And I just want to say thank you to anyone who's stuck around through this entire series. You mean a lot to me. And... People who are, you know, I'm just going to say, people who watch my videos, I'm extremely grateful for you. And if you've been around for a while, or if you have only been around for, a, like, this Let's Play, like, this is your first Let's Play that you've seen of me, thank you. Thank you for at least watching some of my videos, and... The viewer retention rate, like the lo the amount of time that people watch the videos for has been going up. And so if you are one of the people that like watches my videos all the way through or something like that, thank you a lot. Just thank you for anyone who watches my videos. Speaking of uh, people who might be new to my channel, because I was touching that on that a little bit earlier, if you like this... Uh, be excited for my Phoenix Wright 2 Let's Play sometime in the future. Be excited for my ne next Let's Play, which will be... The first episode will be coming out in late August, after I've done... After I've posted all of the Phoenix Wright shorts, and I've posted the trailer for the upcoming Let's Play, of course, and then also in between the trailer and the Phoenix Wright shorts, I'm also going to be posting a Phoenix Wright the full series uh, video, which is basically just the entire Phoenix Wright Let's Play, except I cut out all of the unnecessary bits, like me pressing all of the witnesses and examining every detail. So, yeah. Thank you guys all for watching. And also, I forgot to mention earlier, if you're new here, 
Also check out my Mother One Let's Play, because that's the Let's Play that I'm very proud of. This Let's Play, Phoenix Wright, and my Mother Let's Play are two of my favorite series that I've done, just because I'm glad about the amount of quality that went into each of them. Anyways, it's this video is almost an hour long, so I'm just going to quit my rambling and say thanks. For, thank you guys so much for watching. For the next Let's Play, I'll give you guys a bit of a hint. We'll be following the adventures of another blue guy with spiky hair. Bye-bye.